uh, before we start, do we have the um, Zoom? Can we display it? Uh, for the technical team, uh, can we have Zoom on, on the main screen, please? Can we have the Zoom on the main screen? Ah, okay. Thank you very much. Um, got one minute. <laughs> And can we display the participants of the Zoom meeting, not us, just so that we see who's there? Mm. See what's happening. It's popping up, uh, whoever is talking. Ah, I see. Okay, yep. that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and um, welcome to the day of the open consultations. But before we start those, this is the open exchange with the leadership panel. And um, before we start, just to let you know that this is being recorded. Uh, there's going to be a summary report afterwards. If you want to take the floor, if you have a name plate, just raise it up, please. Um, since this is for the leadership panel and MAG, they have preference. But if you're not a member of the MAG or the leadership panel, you can still raise your hand, but the chairs will take the MAG and the leadership panel first. Um, the rest of you are observers. And if the chair um, allows it, then, of course, you can speak. But it's for the MAG and the leadership panel to discuss. Um, and it, when you take the floor, can you just please say your name for the record slowly and your stakeholder group um, so we do know and that it is also recorded. It's helpful for us. With that, I will give the floor to the chair of the leadership panel, Vincent, to start the meeting. Well, thank you very much, uh, and good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, uh, I welcome uh, to this uh, morning session. I know that the MAG has a great deal of work to do uh, for the rest of this week, and we're grateful for that. I want to thank our hosts for uh, this fantastically technical uh, support that we're getting and the warm welcome that they've given to us over the past couple of days. Uh, and I certainly want to thank the MAG and its leadership for all the hard work which it is about to do uh, and which it will do through the rest of this year as we come to the IGF meeting here in Riyadh in 2024 in December. Uh, I particularly want to acknowledge Carol and Abdul Rahman, our co-host host and co-hosts, uh, for their uh, uh, in incredible work that they'll be doing uh, to organize the meeting that's coming up. I want to acknowledge uh, three other members of the leadership panel who are here uh, with us today, Minister Carolina Edstadler, Benga Sassan, and Maria Fernanda Garza, who are in the table over here to uh, my right in front of me. Um, they've been working along with the rest of us for um, the last couple of days discussing our uh, plans for participating 
in the IGF 2024, and more important, our plans for leading up to that meeting. There is a considerable amount of work to be done. Uh, first of all, uh, let me say that uh, we had prepared, as you know, uh, a document called The Internet We Want, and that's been distributed and shared with the Secretary General. Uh, we've had comments coming back, and we expect those comments to close on the 1st of March. We will absorb those, take them into account, uh, revise the document. This is a, a living uh, document that we think will evolve over time. Uh, I've come to believe that uh, one part of the document might start out with the Internet we have and then talk about the Internet we want and how to get there. But during the course of the meetings uh, yesterday, uh, a couple of things occurred to me. One of them is that we might want to talk about the IGF we have and the IGF that we want and need, because I argue that we need to adapt to the requirements of the Internet itself as it has evolved pretty dramatically since we all got started in 2006. Uh, there is another thing which happened uh, over lunch with uh, my friend, Abdul Rahman. Uh, we talked about a notion called the Sustainable Digital Development Goals to go along in parallel with the Sustainable Development Goals that the UN has set for itself. Uh, and not to go into a lot of detail there, we will share it with you in written form. But as an example of a sustainable digital development goal, we might ask ourselves, how do we preserve digital information over long periods of time? I'm speaking about decades to hundreds of years, because I'm sure you all know, especially as you think about where we are right now, there are records from thousands of years ago, clay tablets, for example, the peculiar thing is that the technology of writing has uh, somehow degraded over time so that the records of documents that are several thousand years old we have, but the documents that are 20 years old that were on five and a quarter inch floppy disks or three and a half inch or fl floppy disks uh, may not be readable anymore, either because the bits fell off or because you can't find a reader for them. And so somehow, the sustainability uh, and, and uh, preservation of digital content is a bigger challenge than I think many people realize until they can't find their photographs from you know, their weddings and other important events. So we have a list of, of sustainable digital development goals, and I would like very much for the MAG and others to add to that list. So that's one thing we can work on. Uh, we think that uh, we really need to engage very early uh, with the, the stakeholders who will be making a decision for WISIS plus 20 in 2025 about our future, about the future of the IGF. And we think early engagement with those stakeholders is going to be very important. Uh, we think also we are going to have to engage with the media uh, and our co-chair, uh, Maria Ressa, uh, advises us that working uh, through various avenues uh, with the media to draw attention to the IGF and its importance to the future of the Internet is, is in our best interest. Particularly, we want to figure out uh, where the deciders are and then meet them where they are to, uh, to talk about the importance of uh, the persistent uh, use of the IGF. Uh, uh, one of our uh, members, Maria Fernanda, emphasized yesterday how important it was to tell stories about people and how the Internet has benefited them. And so it's the people get interested in those kinds of narratives rather than the sort of a dry discussion of history. And so we had an example. We went to uh, to visit one of the hospitals and heard stories about people who had been benefited by the advanced technology at the hospital, some of which is attributable to the internet. And so those stories we would like to get from you and make them available to the media to emphasize how important your work is. Uh, with regard to the leadership panel, we have several plans uh, coming ahead for the rest of this calendar year, not least of which is the search for increased funding for the secretariat. Uh, my target is to achieve a $3 million a year rate of support 
for uh, the secretary and, and to get an advance $3 million so that they have money in hand before the year starts so they can execute on their uh, responsibilities that they can't do anything without having funds in hand. Uh, again, I can't overemphasize the importance of seizing the narrative about the IGF and its work early on so that by the time the WISIS plus 20 comes along, everyone will recognize how important it is to keep this operation going. Uh, we hope to work together with the MAG to provide source material and talking points for all of us acting as ambassadors for the IGF. Uh, we also believe that it's important for us, the leadership panel and for the MAG members to engage in venues where normally the IGF would not uh, appear so that people who don't know anything about our work uh, can learn about that and appreciate how important it is. Uh, so we look forward to collaborating with the members of the MAG. Uh, we uh, are looking forward especially to drawing attention to IGF 2024 here in Riyadh uh, in December uh, and because people uh, have raised some worries about getting here, getting visas and all the other uh, mechanisms that have to be uh, completed in order to participate, uh, we've come to a belief that having a kind of a Q&A document that says, what should I expect? What should I do? How do I get a visa? Uh, should it be a business visa? Should it be a visitor visa? Uh, we should try to answer all those questions. So Abdul and I are going to put together a little Q&A so that I will pretend to be the person who has to come to the country to participate, and he's going to answer all of my questions for me and for you as well and everyone else who wants to come. So we thought we'd get that done early on so that we dispel concerns about coming here uh, and uh, participating. Uh, the last uh, thing that... Um, I want to mention is that we have very uh, a number of events that are coming up that are important to our future. Uh, one of them is the uh, last uh, GDC consultation on the 1st of March. And I've asked for some time <coughs> to present our uh, bona fides uh, to that group. There is also in Mon uh, Brazil a Net Mundial plus 10 planned, and I've asked for time there as well. And of course, there is coming this year the Summit of the Future and the uh, Global Digital Compact, which will emerge from that. And then finally, WISIS Plus 20. There are, uh, I'm sure, another, all other um, uh, events that will be taking place between now and December, especially the national uh, and regional uh, IGF meetings. And we'd like to uh, be visible there as much as we can. So, uh, Madam Chair, uh, I will stop there. Uh, with your permission, I'd like to ask the other LP members who are present if they would like to add anything to my attempt to summarize the last two days of discussion, if, that, uh, if that's all right. And I know that Maria Fernanda will have something to say because she always does. So please, Maria. Well, thank you very much, Vint. And, and first, uh, I, I would like to mention that on the way uh, we position the internet we want. The, the internet we want provides a high level demonstration of the IGF for open, inclusive, and meaningful exchanges on very important policy discussions. And it is based on the IGF's message from the previous 20 years. And, and it builds on the, our discussions and, and the community input. So it can be presented as an open roadmap or framework that the IGF can refer back to and report from to see the progress made to achieve this vision. It is also a tangible indication of the meaningful messages uh, that we have produced over the years at the IGF and a reference point of what the IGF community is working towards. Second, on the strategic importance of this year's IGF's process and annual meeting, this year is a turning point moment to present the IGF's value 
to member states ahead of the review of its mandate. So for this reason, the IGF's agenda this year should reserve space for discussion on strategic issues and processes like the GDC and the WISES Plus 20 and the IGF's role in them. So there we can bring forward main messages about the impact of the IGF over the past 20 years and substantive contributions to policy dialogues, such as the internet we want and a short list of strategic logistic our operational recommendations on how to improve the IGF to ensure it is fit to go beyond the 20 year WISE review and to be the follow up mechanism to the GDC. And finally, on third, a third point would be on the development of the IGF agenda. Uh, a task led successfully over the years by the MAG, we would advise to compose focus streamlined agenda of no more than three thematic tracks. One of the three would be discussing the processes of the IGF against the GDC and the WISES Plus 20. If it proves especially difficult to have just three tags, this might become a fourth, but I strongly urge the MAG not to add more than that. Uh, the agenda should allow for meaningful discussions that correspond to the need of the IGF community, but also reflect what is happening in global policy discussions. So basically, that's a roundup of what I said yesterday. Thank you, Vint. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, uh, Vint. Just to emphasize uh, one of the points that you made and to you know, I'm glad that we had a conversation about some of the, you know, challenges that, you know, that have been raised in terms of visas. This is always a challenge. Uh, and I'm glad that, you know, we're attacking this head on. Uh, we're not waiting for, for this to, to become an issue in October, November, December. Uh, but one other thing we talked about was the challenge uh, that was specifically raised uh, by certain civil society groups. And I'm glad that we talked about that. I will want to strongly suggest that we continue this open spirit of, of having even difficult conversations. This is the whole idea of what the internet is. Uh, we need issues to bubble to the surface before we get to the IGF. Uh, and we need to you know, tackle them, address them. And if there are areas where we don't have the exact answer Answers. I think it's fine to say we don't have exact answers uh, and have people who have lived experience in that area come on board and provide answers. Uh, I trust that we will continue with this open conversation. This is the whole idea of more tea stakeholder. Uh, and I trust that that will be of help as we continue this conversation this year towards Riyadh and future IGS. Thank you. Carolina, do you, would you like to add anything? Good morning, everybody. Um, it's it's great to have this exchange with the Mac, and I have to say, um, I'm here uh, to listen uh, what uh, the multi-stakeholder advisory group has to say. I think uh, Maria perfectly pointed out uh, what it is about, and to streamline our discussions would be the most important thing also for the upcoming IGF in December here in Riyadh. Thank you. One uh, other small observation. Uh, something that Kubenga said uh, really resonates with me. The internet doesn't do anyone any good unless it's really inclusive. We want everyone to have access to it and to take advantage of its capabilities. And that means attending to all elements of the population. It also means making sure that people with disabilities have access to the resources of the internet. And so as we think about inclusion in all of its dimensions, uh, we should have top of mind that our process is here for IGF 2024 and the way in which the internet evolves is as inclusive as possible. Uh, so uh, I think under the inclusion theme, uh, the things that uh, Gabenga has raised and the things that uh, I worry about, for, like you see me wearing a headset because I'm hearing impaired, I'm not listening to a football game or something. Um, but this helps me a great deal, and I want to thank the, uh, the team here that put together the audio uh, to help me out. But it's a good example of the kind of thing that we should keep uh, top of mind. So, uh, Madam Chair, uh, I turn this back over to you uh, for our discussion now. We look forward to how we work together between now and December. Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to those that are joining us online. 
Um, dear Mag and, and leadership panel members, colleagues joining us online, I would like to warmly welcome you to the first open consultation and Mag meeting. I would also like to thank the host country team for your wonderful, and I'm going to stress wonderful, hospitality and for working so hard to make this meeting become a reality here in Riyadh. The annual meeting in Kyoto last year was a remarkable accomplishment in terms of organization, outreach and attendance, as well as key messages. I can tell that this year's host country is very eager and motivated to organize a memor uh, memorable IGF too. The MAG has already been impressively active in the past weeks, very active, um, everybody's engaging. Uh, everybody's excited about IGF 2024, and we welcome that same enthusiasm here today to make IGF 2024 a success in the year ahead. As you know, 2024 is an important year for us and for the internet governance community. In September, the Global Digital Compact will be ad adopted as part of the Summit of the Future with the theme, Multilateral Solutions for a Better Tomorrow. It is the DNA of the IGF. So we are to provide, we provide a global multi-stakeholder platform to discuss solutions for a better internet, namely the internet we want. And of course, we will get there by knowing the internet that we have. Uh, we welcome member states uh, and other stakeholder groups who took part in the first informal consultations calling for a strengthened internet governance forum. Furthermore, consultations and important events will take place in 2024 for the WISIS Plus 20 review, which will determine the extension of the IGF's mandate. The MAG Working Group has successfully prepared a coordinated response to the CSTD questionnaire with the kind support of the leadership panel, also including the IGF intersessional work streams such as the dynamic coalitions. To the extent possible, we will continue to actively provide our input to consultations as the IGF has proven to be an indispensable mechanism in the digital governance landscape. And we will be hearing from the working group on strategy. They will present that the questionnaire and the response um, to it. So you'll have an opportunity to give input um, before it is submitted. Last but not least, the leadership panel and I uh, plan to actively participate in Net Mundial Plus 10, taking place on the 29th and 30th of April in Sao Paulo, Brazil. We are keeping other major events on our agenda, and I encourage all, all participants to join us. We have to be very visible this year and years to come so that we remain relevant to everybody. The leadership panel met the past two days, and it is safe to say that the MAG, um, to the MAG, that they are committed to working closely together uh, making IGF memorable, memorable in 2024 and beyond. LP members took stock of the IGF 2023 and identified strategic priorities to 2024, taking global developments and digital governance processes into account. You heard from Vint with regards to the sustainable digital development goals. Um, also, you heard from Maria that we really want to make a tight um, a tight schedule for for the program. We listened to what the feedback that we got. So we're depending on on you to make sure that we meet the the expectations of our communities. Besides strategizing the IGF resourcing and public impact impact, the leadership panel for the develop the frame framework for internet we want, something that we will be um, taking part in very intimately. So be prepared to, to say which um, item that you will participate in. Um, sorry. 
I'm looking forward to this upcoming open exchange with the leadership panel to continue discussions on the collaborative approaches for a strengthened IGF. Their members, their colleagues, as you know, I want to make our work even more strategic, transformative, agile, and relevant. We want to be stars. And I would like to use this opportunity to stress the importance of the outcomes of this first open consultation and MAG meeting. We will hear from community and agree on potential improvements for the IGF 2024. We will decide the year's overarching theme and endorse the overall program structure. We will finalize the format of the call for session proposals and will be that will be launched in March, as well as start discussions on session its selection criteria. An important milestone is the shaping of the IGF program. We will be agreeing on the working modalities of the intersessional work streams and bring the best out of the cooperation among the IGF community. And last but not least, we will specify our strategic long-term vision for the IGF. And with, with, once we've formed a strategic long-term vision, we'll be able to develop strat, um, sorry, messages that we can take out to the community. So please keep that in mind as well. The message is gonna be key. We wanna tell stories about the successes of the internet and how the IGF helped to formulate those. I have no doubt that we will successfully shape an ambitious IGF 2024 agenda placing more more placing once more the forum as an indispensable component in the digital governance ecosystem without further ado ado i would like to encourage you to stay active throughout the open consultation day and mag meeting i look forward i'm looking forward to the new to the next few days thank you very much Um, thank you all. Uh, I realize how much it's difficult to talk after uh, LB chair and MAG chair uh, covering all the aspects. So uh, first of all, uh, I would like to welcome you all in Riyadh, and I would like to welcome my colleagues uh, online uh, for this important uh, open consultation and MAG meeting. Uh, and as 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 we said uh, in, uh, in in leadership panel, that we approach uh, you today with open heart open mind, uh, and we would like to listen. Uh, later on the day, my colleagues will give a presentation about the preparation uh, that we are taking place, uh, which will include a lot of um, activities and outreach in different uh, location in Geneva and New York, and would like also to, to ask uh, all of you to be participating in, this, in these events. Uh, I also would like to um, thank Chaban, uh, the former host, for uh, IGF, uh, we conduct with them a lot of listen learn sessions, and um, we hope that everything we learn uh, in the past will be reflected in this year. Uh, we will we were still committed to provide uh, best uh, participant journeys, and we'll work hard to address all the issues that uh, might arise. Uh, that include. Uh, yeah, I need the question, the, the Q and A uh, that Mr. Pence will uh, talk about it, but also we will 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 be providing a lot of support uh, uh, 24 hour uh, during this uh, uh, important event by the end of the year. I extend my welcome to all of you. Uh, please uh, enjoy Riyadh if you are in Riyadh. Uh, try to visit as much as as you uh, places as you can. Uh, and I would like to highlight for all the MAG members and, and observers that they want to stay for next week. Next week, we will have the largest uh, um, uh, tick effect in, so in, in probably in the world with more than 160,000 uh, participants. Uh, and and it, it is nearby, so if you, if you can extend your stay to attend this event, it will be great. Thank you all. Uh, thank you uh, for uh, for coming. And we look uh, yani for the discussions, and we will take all the comment seriously and we'll work on it. Thank you very much. So I actually have a question for those of you who are sitting here uh, thinking about the next several days and also thinking about the next several months and then finally the actual IGF meeting here in December. 
one of the this is sort of our last shot our last opportunity to show to the stakeholders of the WISIS plus 20 that the IGF is important to their interests and one of the things that uh, I've heard over the course of our now 18 years of operation is that the uh, parties who look to us would like to see more actionable outcomes from the meetings that we have. So I wonder, as you think your way through how you organize this uh, 2024 IGF, can we try to work towards and encourage the participants to work towards articulating actions that could be taken in order to either improve matters where they need improvement or to take advantage of opportunities where they have not yet been uh, uh, undertaken uh, to deal with uh, problems that we see arising in the internet environment. One of the reasons we're seeing such an increased interest in multilateral interactions on internet governance is precisely because governments are concerned that there are harmful activities that take place in the internet environment in addition to all the very beneficial ones. So finding a way to um, speak in terms of actions uh, and solutions would be really helpful in arguing in the WISIS plus 20 that IGF really needs to persist. And so showing that uh, that we can come not only with a description of the problems we can see or the opportunities we can see, but also solutions to problems would be really helpful. So I think where the floor is now open for uh, further discussion about how we work together between the leadership and the panel and the um, and the mag, and of course how we work together uh, throughout the course of the year. So uh, either hands up or uh, tags up, um, so we can continue the discussion. Could okay, we have Chris um, online? Go ahead, Chris. Good. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Sorry, I can't start my video here. Um, this is Chris Buckridge, a MAG member from the technical community. Um, and I'm very sorry I can't be there in person to join you, but I'm looking forward to uh, many interactions online <laughs> over the coming days. Um, I just wanted to, I think, respond to your comment, Vin, because I do absolutely take your point there about the concerns um, that there are no actionable outcomes um, from, from the IGF. And I, I do think... There, I do have video. Okay. Um, there is obviously room for us to evolve the mechanisms that we have and to look at developing new mechanisms um, alongside that. But I also think there is a bit of a communications issue for us here in that we do have actionable outcomes, particularly in the form of some of the reports uh, that have come out of the intersessional activities, which are an inherent and fundamental part of the Internet Governance Forum. And I mean, I'm thinking here of some very specific examples. Um, the recent report of the Policy Network on AI was a very interesting read. I mean, I think, I think a very good document, but also very practically engaged with some of the concerns raised by the um, Secretary General's advisory body on AI, um, particularly about things like jurisdictional interoperability um, and provided some very practical suggestions and ways forward on that. Um, and I, I think we didn't see the ideal interaction between that AI advisory bodies report and the PNAI, PNAI report. Um, and that's perhaps one example of the communication uh, lapse that we need to really address. So I think if we can sort of focus as well as evolving our processes on really highlighting the successes that we have and the um, examples of practical advice and agreement um, on, on strategies that the IGF in all of its forms, all of its institutions has fostered already, that would be a really useful uh, thing for us to do. But thank you. Chris, uh, if you don't mind my jumping in for a second. First of all, I want to thank Chris for all of his hard work. He's he's uh, produced some wonderfully helpful texts uh, that uh, allowed us to express our views in effective ways. 
Uh, yesterday or the day before, I handed out uh, several copies of the reports that had been produced by previous IGFs in 2022 and 2023. So uh, thank you for reminding us, Chris. I did remember that and I did hand out the reports. But it occurs to me as I listen to you that um, a lot of people don't have time to read long reports. And so it could very well be that it's in our best interest to boil down some of our recommendations into very terse uh, observations about steps that could be taken and should be taken, perhaps in which venues they could be taken, uh, what outcomes uh, the, those steps might be intended to produce. Uh, so uh, uh, your point's well taken, uh, but I would urge that in 2024, we find a way to communicate in, in efficiently uh, with the parties who can actually take the actions that we think are needed. Uh, so uh, I hope uh, that you'll uh, help us um, produce those slim and uh, and easily understood uh, actionable items that were, and, and present them to places that can take those actions. So other comments, please. Uh, don't forget to introduce yourself. Uh, thank you, Chair Leadership Panel. Uh, thank you, Host. Uh, thank you, Chair Mag and Naching Thank you very much. Sumer Gul, I'm a Mag member from Government Stakeholder Group. Um, I will just make preliminary remarks because we have three days for this preparation and development of agenda. Just uh, the preliminary remarks on uh, the points that have been mentioned earlier uh, about <clears throat> the relevance and visibility of IGF. I think. Uh, we have to, it has been rightly pointed out that we have to see in what background we will be having this IGF. There will be a lot of noise on emerging issues, climate, sustainable development, emerging technologies. So when there is a lot of noise, what makes one single voice to be stand out, to stand out? That is the shrill voice. So how to make IGF shrill? I think then we have to choose what is going to be the specific or the something which makes it stand out. Is it going to be only the uh, uh, something uh, which is repeating or the uh, the things that are happening in other forums, or it is something which is complementing uh, and uh, uh, something which is giving something additional uh, and resonates with the uh, stakeholders? So uh, coming from the background for, of Geneva, uh, I would say that the, the point has been rightly made out that there is no uh, engagement or there is lesser engagement with other uh, for all, which are discussing policies on these relevant matters of the time, like SDGs, climate, uh, emerging technologies. So uh, engagement is going to be the key to create, to embolden or uh, to consolidate uh, the relevance and uh, again, increase it. Uh, and then uh, one major issue, I think that we have now past the stage uh, of using IGF as a forum to make people learn how internet works. We are now talking about what, what kind of internet now we want. So uh, it is going to be a major task of IGF to also think in terms of uh, how it is going to complement the already taking place discussion in the context of global digital compact, because there we are discussing a new forum as well uh, in the context of GDF. There we are talking about some different issues which are going to be connected with financing uh, as well, financing of uh, development and financing of uh, SDGs, uh, the uh, technology transfer uh, and uh, the common but differentiated responsibilities, a lot of new principles that we will be discussing and uh, they will all have a direct impact on the ability of developing countries and other countries which are not part of IGA or not in the on the, uh, of the level that uh, not participating at the level like other uh, stakeholders are participating. So uh, it is all very important for the IGF also to learn from that experience uh, and uh, complement uh, the effort that is taking place in the in the context of GDC as well. Thank you. Mind if I respond to this? First of all, these are really good points. Second, uh, with regard to the leadership panel last year and this year, we um, produced a set of talking points so that we would all be coherent when we went out to venues that weren't familiar with the IGF. 
uh, it might be that we should keep doing that and also make that available uh, with the help of the MAG to assemble those talking points so we all are uh, speaking from the same perspective as we go to venues where uh, IGF is not well known. Uh, I'm, you're aware that uh, that we have visibility in the World Economic Forum this year. We're going to be showing up at the other places that I mentioned earlier. Uh, so we agree, I certainly agree, that we want to be more visible than we have historically been in places that 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 know about the internet, they just don't know about the IGF, and we want them to know that. With regard to the uh, GDC forum, which has been discussed, uh, the leadership panel, and I hope the MAG, believes that it is the IGF that should be that function, should perform that function. I believe that we're in a position to do that. Uh, one of the reasons that I think we should um, see uh, ways to adapt the way in which we operate is precisely to become the um, the place where the um, the results of the GDC and the implementation of the GDC are evaluated, analyzed, and discussed. We have evolved uh, a capability to cover an enormous amount of ground in in the IGF meetings, just in terms of topics. And I don't think there is any other organization in existence that uh, could do a better job than the IGF in assessing the success uh, and the challenges that the GDC outcomes um, will present. And I think we should start now, before the GDC has even been uh, presented to us, to make the argument that the IGF is the place where, uh, where that evaluation should be done. Uh, and then, if necessary, we adapt our processes to achieve that objective. So I don't think we need a competing form. I think we need to adapt to be the place where that work is done. Questions or, or suggestions? Yes. Yep. Okay, um, just before we have um, Winnie, then Bruna, uh, that's the order. Um, just to go to um, Chris's point, we we do have quite a few outputs um, from the policy networks, from the DCs and the MAG itself. And I am going to just give a comment or speak to the comment from, I think it's Amrita online, where she is uh, agreeing with Bint and has suggested that we develop our communications um, strategy along with the, the IGF strategy itself. I think that's my only comment. So we have Winnie and then Bruna online. Sorry, hi everyone. And thank you for the opportunity to, I'm trying to toggle up my my video also. Uh, my name is Winnie Kamau. I come from the, the Association of Freelance Journalists, and I'm also a member of the IGF community. And just in, as an observer, and I like the points that have been raised already, and even the last one that you have already mentioned about having developing a communication uh, strategy that all goes together with the with the IGF strategy at once. And I talk this from the point of view from where I am is uh, already have a community that we've already uh, developed uh, over time. And that's the African IGF media community. And uh, what a better place to start from and uh, where we can be able to get information, we usually get information of what is happening, and then we're able to spread it amongst the network, and uh, people are able to pick up stories, and they're able to tell the stories from there. So I guess, um, like you said, I'm trying, okay, sorry, it's unable to start the video, sorry for that. Um, I hope you can see me. Okay, finally. Uh, uh, just looking at that, 
what a better way we can be able to work together and uh, be able to come up with a solution that can be able to help us uh, as communicators, even as we're able to tell our stories uh, in terms of uh, uh, pushing the ideas and uh, the messages that you're coming up with. So I guess that, that, that is what I wanted to talk about. If we can leverage on some of the communities we've already been able to establish and uh, push the messages from there uh, through the African IGF media, and maybe there are other communities that have already established themselves and we can be able to push the messages as well. Thank you. So it's Vince Surf again. I'm uh, noticing that my uh, fellow LP members are nodding their heads saying this is a really good idea. This sounds like what we need is media central uh, for uh, for the IGF and for the leadership panel. Uh, if we can collect stories and make them accessible uh, on the website of the Secretariat and the leadership panel and the MAG, uh, a place where all of those stories can be discovered and found, that would be good. And uh, and any announcements and things like that of, of meetings that we'll be attending, uh, uh, organizations that we'll be engaged with, uh, I I'm th I take that as an as a friendly offer to help amplify the messages that we would like uh, the public to uh, to see about our work. So uh, I'm I'm certainly personally committed to providing material for that sort of we'll call it media central uh, to be drawn upon by. Uh, our colleagues and by all of us can make use of that as well. If we're going to go to a meeting, we want to tell stories that are compelling about the internet and the IGF and its work. So thanks very much for that suggestion. Runa. Thanks everyone. I hope you can hear me and, and good morning to everyone in Riyadh. Just um, a couple of comments. Um, Vince, I take the point about um, convincing folks about the relevance of the internet. But I believe that in a year such as um, 2024, and that's pivotal as 2024 is, we should be convincing people about the relevance of the IGF and the multi-stakeholder model, right? Um, I do agree with you when you point out some, some, let's say, some distress or even some reassessment around the relevance of the multi-stakeholder model and, and why should governments engage with that? But I wouldn't necessarily place it around just harmful um, activities on the internet or just harmful behaviors from users. I do believe it's also a matter of um, everything we've been experiencing around the GDC, that is the UN um, attempting to rekindle its relationships with member states, correct? So that is one thing to, to point out. I do believe that such as Net Museal is also playing to have this sort of a relevant role for reassessing what the multi-stakeholder model is, the IGF um, at the end of the year should be able to do kind of a, a closing of the year session um, in order to take a look back at all of those processes. We will have Wizards Plus 20, we'll have the, the CSTD, um, some episodes around CSTD and also Net Mundial. So I guess it's our role to kind of wrap it all together and, and say, based on everything that happened in 2024, this is why we still need the IGF, the Internet Governance Forum, to continue to run, and we need a mandate renewal. Um, I agree about the points of this being um, a really relevant year for the mandate and so on and so, and so forth, but I do. I would just maybe like to for us to frame the conversation around our space instead of the Internet itself, because um, it would be kind of a, a very huge and, and maybe um, unfortunate or even too hard of a task for us to convince the world of the relevance of the internet or to try to demystify some of this mistrust um, a lot of folks have on these tools and, and platforms and so on. So that's um, one thing I meant to say. And, and last but not least, um, just about the actionable items, um, Chris highlighted um, PNAI, but I would also like to highlight PNIF, um, the Policy Network on Internet Fragmentation, where we have been um, highly successful in engaging not just um, civil society and academia, but also governments in the shaping up of the, the, the latest reports and the recommendations of the PNAI. And um, we do highlight um, a small set of recommendations for three baskets, right? Um, technical fragmentation, user experience, and also internet governance fragmentation. Um, the last one being the most important one because this is really a year where we're gonna be reviewing a lot of those processes and so on. So. If we're talking about actionable items, it's also good for us to um, reassess or even if folks didn't have a chance to take a look, just take a look at the PNIF recommendations as part of the 
incoming or any new incoming set of communication we might do um, on behalf of the IGF. That's all. Thanks for, for the space and sorry for taking too much time. Thank you, Bruna. Always a good input. Okay. So, I, thank you for reminding us that it's important to tell people why the IGF is important just as much as the internet is. So thank you for that reminder. Okay, this is Xiao. I'm the, the new MAC member from China. I'm standing for tech community. I quite appreciate all the work IGF, the platform has provided with us. And I, I understand the value and discussions value of that. I have three short comments. The first is the storytelling of IGF should be improved the visibility. Still as Check one. I oh, another one is coming. coming. One is coming. Thank you. Uh, I have three short comments. I understand the value of the IGF. I think we might have uh, the first one's review of what we have done in 20 years because it's a huge, we have so many tracks. But the storytelling, we, when we, people, we say to people, to officials, it's hard to, to define, it's just this discussion. So we have done a lot, but it's a time to display. We might call on the different tracks to collect data and their experience and summarize a lot and be well displayed the, our story in both IGF in the December or in other multilateral platform with, like with this Plus 20, it's really important to make different people outside IGF to know our story. The review is important for us. So, so that makes us a huge value on what we have done. And the second one is we have the roadmap for the next. I mean, the roadmap, we don't, we might have a strategy discussion, but roadmap is for the strategy for the future, next 20 years of IGF, in line with GDC, I think people are wait to see what is going to happen in GDC, and nobody knows. We are just wait all oh, what's the progress, but we can design something for the seven seven topics of GDC, which they are focused. So we can design if it is past or if it is just an initiative. What we can do to help the GDC to carry out the strategy group can help with this. So we need a roadmap a strategy for ourselves for the next step. And the third is, I think we can have suggestions to policy makers of each country or different groups, different departments of the UN system. I mean, uh, report, report work. We can figure out that we can give suggestions to the policy makers, focus on which topics like AI or cybersecurity and which factors should be included rather than give, give very specific suggestions. So I think AI advisory body has done a lot. Um, I think reports also help. Thank you. Thank you very much. I like very much the idea of having a plan independent of what comes out of the GDC. I mean, we do have some idea of what the topics are, but we don't know what the specifics will be. But I think an argument can be made that the regardless of, of the specifics of the GDC, the Internet Governance Forum has the capacity to uh, to deal and uh, to adapt uh, to and to deal with the um, challenges that the GDC puts on the table. So uh, your idea of having a roadmap ahead of time and then adapting it as we see the details of GDC really appeals to me. So thank you very much for those suggestions. Thank you very much. Um, we now have Samuel. Hello. Sorry, I 
Couldn't see the raise hand. Yeah, back, Jason sorry. first. Jason. And then, uh, so MAG members and uh, leadership panel members first, and then the observers can come later. <clears throat> Thanks. Is this one on? Okay. Um, Justin Fair, uh, MAG member, uh, US government. Um, good morning to everyone. Um, yeah, just on, um, I really like this notion of the IGF we have versus the IGF one, that conversation. I think it's helpful to frame it that way. I think we do need to be a little bit careful this year uh, as we think about the IGF that we don't just get into, uh, as we say in the U.S., a, a navel-gazing exercise, that everything is just looking internally. Uh, and then we're also looking over our shoulder to New York the whole year and what's going on there. Um, there are important conversations, and, and I think some of it's already been discussed, an important role for the IGF. And what can be done at the GDC, what can be done looking towards WISIS Plus 20, some for the future, some of those uh, processes. But I think what folks are really looking for in those discussions is not necessarily another statement of policy or another statement of support for this policy outcome or that policy outcome. Uh, folks seem to be broadly uh, across the international system looking for two things, I think. One is just a solution to problems. How are problems going to get solved? And then two, is there any coherence to all of these conversations that seem to be happening everywhere all the time across the international system? How do you bring it all together? How can any person, policymaker, government, stakeholder group, whoever, be able to put together all those conversations and actually have some coherence uh, through that? I think IGF can help on, on both of those. Um, I, I, I like this idea of an uh, action-oriented uh, conversations that we have at the IGF. That's one um, possible way to approach it. Um, another one is, uh, I think, uh, valuable conversations that can have at the IGF about just talking about existing work that's happening in other fora that is already action-oriented, but bringing it into the IGF. Um, <laughs> I think somebody needs to be muted. So uh, also bringing in conversations to the IGF about uh, work that's happening uh, in other fora that is also working to tackle those problems uh, can be out helpful. And in some ways, um, I, I think there's probably a lot of engineers in this room and in an engineering school to show the work. I think folks are looking to show the work, not just offer solutions, not just to produce the outcome, but to actually show how multi-stakeholder process and different fora are tackling the problems and producing solutions. Some of the more compelling arguments instead of statements of support for multi-stakeholderism is actually showing where the multi-stakeholder process have shown progress over the last 20 years. I think at IGF in Kyoto last year, a lot of conversations around connectivity uh, and the progress there. Of course, more needs to be done, but the progress there. I think there's been a lot of conversations about the resilience of the global internet during the COVID pandemic and everything that happened there. And I think those are more salient points about why the multi-stakeholder model works versus just statements saying that it does work, given the example. Um, but also to that, I just wanna support comments from Chris and she about the comms, the storytelling piece. I think this goes to the coherence problem that folks, I think everyone, uh, also, um, or at least I, I'll speak for myself, gets lost in all the work that's happening. And so some way to come to the IGF and leave with a little bit better focus, clarity, coherence around where some of the conversations are going, how some of the work's being done, and, and how you can plug in to being a part of the solution, um, I think could be helpful. Thanks. Well, I really appreciate the point. Uh, the last one is the sort of the nutshell proof. Sometimes you want just small examples that explain why the IGF is important and valuable. It occurs to me, do you all remember how the IGF happened? Uh, Marcus Kummer is here. It was, it was the guy that, that solved the problem in the World Summit on the Information Society when it couldn't figure out what internet governance meant. And they didn't know what to do about it. So um, I think I'm giving credit where it's due here, Marcus. You came up with the idea of why don't we set up, we've got this world, what was it called? The Working Group on Internet Governance, WIGIG. And the solution to the problem was to create the Internet Governance Forum to keep the conversation going. I'm When I listen to these conversations, I get this desire to write a little essay and I find what's the title of the essay. 
if we didn't have an internet governance forum for the global digital compact, we would have to invent one because the multi-stakeholder perspectives are so important to what come out of that global digital compact. And so I think that, that some, somewhere in here, we want a short little essay that explains why we wouldn't have to invent an IGF. Maybe we need to rethink of ourselves as the digital governance forum, as opposed to the internet governance forum, since digital seems to be a broader uh, rubric uh, than just the internet itself. Uh, but it seems to me that whatever comes out of the GDC is going to need something like what we have now in order to understand its implications and what its consequences are. So we have a nice repeating theme of storytelling. So um, we need to start getting those stories together. I think one of the things that we will also look at is to improve the way that workshops are reported and maybe that will, will help some of the salute, um, the problems that we, we have. And we can grab things from out of those reports to, to improve our storytelling. Uh, actually, if I, could... I love the idea of taking those reports and distilling them, uh, you know, capturing from them important pieces. Um, could we ask the uh, participants in the IGF and particularly uh, the members of the MAG to help us identify those nuggets that we want people to hear about? Because I'd love to have talking points that that uh, that pick up stories about why those uh, those reports have important uh, outcomes and how how they've expressed them. We, it would be wonderful to be able to just pull those stories out at need uh, and have them, you know, the short little little nuggets that tell people why this has been important. But we're not hearing you yet. You have to. Well, oh, now we I have. I think it's a okay. good idea. Uh, for example, I can release some information column for stories in China. And I think uh, a lot of people will feedback because I, I know people are interested. Some people really in and they are they are benefit from this platform. So I can summarize a little bit, and I'm willing to uh, some story and collect something. And it, even with China IGF together, where I'm leading, so a volunteer. I think there are more, more members volunteer. We can call on for that. Thank Sorry. you. I think the theme of this session is going to be tell us your stories. Good, good, small ones. Thank you, Samuel, then uh, Ananda. So with Lito, and then um, so Samuel, and then Ananda. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Lito Ibarra, MAG member. Uh, I have always liked, since the GDC started to, to flow around, I have always liked the idea of uh, having the IGF as the monitoring and, and uh, following up uh, body to the GDC. What I see, if we pursue that that objective, uh, which I like, as I said, uh, I think we need to provide more nails and tooth to the IGF. So it, 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 it makes a, a logical conclusion. We have to provide more actionable points, as we have been talking about, but also we need to develop a mechanism to monitor and to follow up the, the GDC agreements because they, they will be done mainly by, by governments. So the IGF needs to have nails and tooth in order to follow up and tell governments, okay, you're okay in, on, on this uh, objective, you are not uh, you're behind in this one and so on. So we need to transform the idea. Thank you. I don't know whether you're an engineer or not, but what you just said resonates with the engineers. You know, I'm going to build this thing. What is it? Well, it's a global digital compact. Okay, so how does it work? Well, here are the things it's going to do. 
How do you know if it worked? Well, you have to measure that. So we need we need to have mechanisms for understanding how well or how poorly the compact is executed. Thank you so much for that point. Uh, we, uh, the engineers in, in me really resonates with that. We have Dino in the room. Thank you very much for giving me the floor. My name is Dino Delatra. I'm the Director of Chief Information Officer at the UN Pension Fund and MAG member representing the international organization. So um, I have two comments. One is going at uh, your introduction event when you talked about the digital sustainable goal. And uh, one practical example that came to my mind is uh, at the UN, we are working on creating, establishing a UN digital identity solution. Really? And we are finally talking about the threat of uh, post-quantum computing, and I'm sure you would be probably yes. the best person to talk about that. I did see that in previous IGF session, the issue of quantum computing came about. However, I did not feel that there is a track or adequate attention. It appears, for example, on the encryption on 2% of this year thematic issues, uh, it's not really visible. So I think that indeed, if there is the idea to be more specific, I think quantum computing will probably be an area where both technically and also from a point of view of governance, there is a good opportunity to, to demonstrate the value added of a multi-stakeholder entity like the IGF. The second comment I would like to make is really in line with what has been said already, specifically by Justin and also by Ito. Um, at the UN, we have a similar, we, we're mirroring the IGF. We have a, a mini IGF within the UN. And we meet twice a year, all the directors and the CIOs of the UN, and we all come and speak about what we're doing and how we should do better. But what I think we're missing, and I see this also in the IGF, is that we all come in somehow one direction. We come here, for example, this afternoon and during the course of the IGF, we all share idea. Mm -hmm. We all share a proposal. What I think is missing is the bi-directional. Do we have story to say how each one of the multi-stakeholder has used idea proposal of the IGF in oh. their own experience oh, that's interesting. to demonstrate the value added of something that we heard or we learned mm -hmm. by collaborating with the other representative, with the other stakeholder, they made a difference in our own environment. For example, in my very little domain, again, the digital identity domain, I'm trying to use the work that has been done in the IGF to raise the awareness of how important, for example, for accessibility, for human rights, digital identity is. So I think if we start looking at the bi-directional relationship and come here by sharing, we were able to do something more because of something that occurred in the IGF, Rather than be teeth, maybe it's just really the, the bottom up approach of practical example of the value that we benefited from. Thank you. Isn't if, if that isn't a basis for a good storytelling, I don't know what is. That's really terrific. Uh, with regard to post quantum computing, just uh, maybe this will set your mind at rest. Uh, you know that in the U.S. there is this thing called the National Institutes of Standards and Technology. They ingested 36 different algorithms that were intended to be uh, proof against the breaking of the conventional RSA codes, for example, um, by the use of uh, rapid uh, factorization. They have boiled this down to four, and we're already implementing them at Google. So I, I am feeling fairly comfort comforted that we have a handle on the post-quantum problem, but it does have to get implemented because if it isn't implemented, it's not a solution. So anyway, I think that one, uh, we are, I'm comfortable that we have a path forward for that. Okay, so we'll have um, Samuel and then Ananda, then Winnie and Theo. Oh, sorry, I have Alyssa. On the floor, um, I will put Alyssa after Ananda. Yeah. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. 
Okay. Uh, thank you uh, very much uh, for the opportunity. My name is Samuel Jose, member of the IGF Youth as well, as well as the fellow of the Asia Pacific Internet Governance Academy 2023 in Korea. First on road to the summit of the future, according to, the, to my routine observation, there is no stakeholder consultation convened by to discuss the zero draft on the pack of the future uh, convened by the IGF. I joined and advocated my inputs and suggestions towards the pack of the future in stakeholders consultation convened by the member states co-facilitator as well as the UN major group for children and youth but I never observe any consultation convened by the IGF. I do hope that IGF 2024 and this meeting can discuss work, work and way forward and the mechanics on how to ensure that IGF engagements to the summit of the future processes can be stronger. This is important also to solidify and consolidate IGF inputs towards the summit of the future deliverable. Second, in regards of the Global Digital Compact, on road to the draft of the Global Digital Compact, I look forward uh, uh, for the IGF to formulate at least a basic guideline or consensus or like advocacy toolkits to ensure that capacity building and empowerment of the members of the IGF community can be carried out to strengthen IGF internal position and consolidation towards the GDC. Because I believe in this multi-stakeholder process, we need to embrace all uh, community members of the IGF. Thank you very much for giving me the floor uh, for this multi-stakeholders process. Thank you very much and good luck. Okay, thank you. Um, we have uh, my members who will do uh, Alyssa, followed by, um, I think it was Karina, and then Caroline, and then Winnie. Oh, sorry, Bruna. Marcus, oh, okay, <laughs> okay, so so we'll do, um, was Marcus before you, Karina? No? Right, so Karina, um, Marcus, Caroline, and Bruna, and then I'll come back. <laughs> Who else? No, Alyssa is the old hand, right? Uh, I and then it just completed. Oh, sorry, Alyssa. Um, thank you. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Elisa Hiever. Um, I'm uh, from the Dutch government. Um, and well, I've been listening to uh, to all the ideas that everyone has shared. Uh, amongst others, uh, creating a good communication strategy, creating a roadmap, identifying all different kinds of stories, looking at post-quantum computing, um, better monitoring. So we've started to create a, a nice shopping list, so to say. Um, the question, there are two questions about this shopping list. One, who will start working on the shopping list? and feels responsibility that this shopping list will be executed. And two, who's going to pay for all of the items on the shopping list? And as far as I know, the IGF is still, or the Secretariat is still in kind of a need for a bit more money. So um, that might be a slight elephant here in the room, but all these documents and all these strategies that there is need that there's being going to be paid for this and um i think i'm well i would look at the leadership panel um as well on um the financing um i think that was one of the the main tasks also of the leadership panel um i'm proud to say that the dutch government has has annually uh, provided a 100 grand uh, 100,000 euros or dollars to uh, the IGF, but there are there's more need or there's a bigger need for more financing, and um, it's something that I really thought we should also put on the table because we can't all come and say and give you our wish list, but we must also well remain realistic. Thanks. Respond to that first of all. Uh, thank you very much for the that point that you made and also for the contributions that the Dutch government has made to the operation of the secretariat. And I can raise my hand and say that, that we supplied 
something like $300,000 over the past year or two. And I will continue to offer as much as I can out of my uh, budget at Google. But you're absolutely correct. We need to find other parties who are willing to um, undertake funding. And so that's on my watch personally uh, as the, uh, the chair of the funding uh, sub, sub panel uh, in the leadership panel. Uh, so uh, points well taken that we do need to expand the capacity. But I will also say that an, an astonishing amount of work gets done in the internet environment because people simply want to get that work done. The volunteer nature of almost all of the organizations that surround the internet are uh, striking. Uh, people simply want this to work. So we have that benefit, but as you say, we still need resources. So thanks for that point. Yes. Karina? Yes. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, yeah, yes. I just want to um, reinforce what um, Vint was saying as well, is that we also rely on the community to help us. And just now, I think Henriette just shared a link from APC, which with a page that showcases testimonials on um, what the IGF we want. So I think that's also a great effort and it helps. So there's, of course, the official effort uh, by the IGF Secretariat, but also the community because the IGF is a community um, project, so to speak, yeah. Mm -hmm. We have, do you want, uh, please just go to, ahead. Just to add to it's, what uh, Binta and Shengata just said, uh, we do have the experts that we need to communicate this correctly among uh, the MAC members even, because uh, the point that the government just made is absolutely important. We need to communicate better and everything goes back to communication. We, for the fundraising, we need to have a compelling story so the potential donors understand the work of the IGF. Uh, and then that, that's why these stories of the impact that the work that the IGF has been making during the last 20 years and how it has impacted people's lives and making it better are, are, are so, so very important. So we need to rely at this particular time on all of you, all of the experts that can put up together infographies, that can put up together short videos, reels, the way that, that people is communicating today to really bring the message forward. And, and that will help us in every, every way to establish the importance of the IGF with stakeholders, but also will help us to get more, more resources said, tell us your stories. <laughs> Karina and then Marcus. Sorry, Karina reversed the order. Okay. <laughs> uh, Vint mentioned my name, and I thought I better come in. And you uh, gave me too much credit, I think. For, there were many people involved, but nevertheless, uh, it's worth looking back, and that's also a story to tell. We spent a lot of time discussing what is internet governance, and the formulation we came up with, the definition we came up with, was very broad. It was all issues related to the use and abuse of the internet. And that essentially is exactly what the digital corporation does as well. So obviously the people who came up with digital corporation were not too familiar with the work that had gone on before. But if digital corporation forum, just to switch the name would do the trick, why not? Some people made the proposal, I think in Kyoto as well. But I also put on, that was my historical hat. I have two more messages with two different hats. I also have a hat as a senior policy advisor to Diplo Foundation and the Geneva Internet Project. And I briefly mentioned it in Kyoto. We are planning to data mine the IGF. And this project has a bit, little bit further advanced and has also been given a name, Ask IGF. It will be based on human and artificial intelligence. And the idea is 
precisely to allow people to dig in in all the work that has been done in the past and that would also help with the storytelling i will uh, report on that more in detail this afternoon when you have the reporting in sessions from the various organizations and yet another hat i'm the co-facilitator of the dynamic coalitions and dynamic coalitions also produce outcomes uh, you mentioned for instance, the accessibility issue. We have been active on that, the dynamic coalitions, right from the beginning. But one issue that has come up with some of the outcomes of the dynamic coalitions, true to the nature of their independent bottom-up character, they're not linked to the IGF in a direct way. And the point has been made, when can our outcomes be called uh, IGF outcomes? This is a discussion to have, there would need to be a process in place where the outcomes get validated by the broader IGF community. We have never discussed that in detail, but that may also be something worthwhile exploring in the future to enhance precisely the outcomes of the IGF. Thank you. Actually, that's the point that I had not understood, Marcus. I thought that the dynamic coalitions were all part of the IGF and their outputs were considered uh, part of the IGF process. So that's a surprise for me. Uh, there is something else you said that really worries me a lot. Uh, you mentioned uh, the data mining of all of the outputs that uh, have uh, been generated over the course of uh, two decades, nearly two decades. All I could think of was that you were about to create a new chatbot that was going to tell stories. And uh, one of the problems with the chatbots that I'm familiar with is that they do tell stories. The problem is some of the stories are not exactly correct. So <laughs> if, if that's what you're planning to do, uh, make sure that it works well. Thank you, Marcus, for all that hard work. Please, let's, let's continue. Um, we're going to go with, with Bruna and then go back to, um, other person. Uh, do you have Carolina on your list? Oh, sorry. I do. <laughs> Carolina. She's, uh, she should have some priority, I think. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, I very much like the discussion about the storytelling because being a politician, I know it is all about storytelling. You can do the best things if you're not talking about it. People won't know and they won't vote for you. So um, this is important. And I will come back to the to, to what Chris uh, Packridge said at the beginning, that he's concerned that we are not uh, in the position to highlight our successes. And I think this is really important. But the reality is different. We had a lot of successes. Uh, the IGF has a lot of successes. Um, but we have to tell people. And um, I would like to... <clears throat> make a, a, a few examples. So I started in 2020 and I told it already in the IGF leadership panel, a discussion on the Communication Platform Act. That, 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 at that time, you know, it was COVID. I had only the opportunity to do it in a digital way. And all of the platforms were very, let's say, they were skeptical skeptical they didn't want to talk about these things they said okay we have our own community uh, uh, guidelines and there is no need to have a legislator in in this uh, in this uh, format and um well 2020 now we have 2024 we had the communication platform act in austria in 2021 we have the dsa the dma in the european union uh, we have an executive order from the white house also in in the us regarding ai uh, so a lot uh, is is moving and in davos i was on a panel um, among others um, with nick clegg from meta and an entrepreneur and everyone said okay it is completely clear that we need communicators uh, at the social media platforms and this is something where we, I think, where the IGF contributed a lot, where the community comp contributed a lot. And, and we have to talk about these things and, and be self-confident in our existence. And this brings me to my second point, and I mentioned that already also in the leadership panel. I think the IGF should be institutionalized. What do I mean by that? It should not be a mandate for the next five or 10 years. It should be there and it should be clear that it is there. And I'm thankful also for the intervention from uh, Denmark, I guess, and for the money which is given to the IGF. I can only tell you, we are currently considering how we can um, support uh, the secretariat even better. 
maybe in women power. Uh, we will come back to you, um, Asap, and I think also other governments uh, should consider such an such an opportunity uh, to give the support because uh, the funding and the budget issue was already uh, touched. So I would like to conclude by catching up um, with a phrase you mentioned, uh, Wind. You said, "If we didn't have the IGF, we would have the need to invent it now," and this is very similar to what a former. Uh, Chancellor of Austria, Wolfgang Schüssel, said two or three, nearly three years ago, he said, if we didn't have the European Union, it would be the right, uh, uh, the right uh, timing now to invent the European Union. And why did he say that? Say that? Why did you say that? Because we are taking things for given. And they are not given, naturally given. So let's talk about the things we already did and let's be uh, self-confident and institutionalize the IGF. Thank you. I, I can't help intervening. Uh, this is an English language issue. The term institutionalized uh, has several different meanings. And one of them is that you're crazy and you should be put into an institution. <laughs> so uh, I'm sure that was not what you meant. Uh, we, we should become a formal part of the UN structure. And, and I happen to like that idea if only because the internet and all of the applications are becoming so central to everything that we should just simply accept that we have to manage uh, this whole process by more than informal uh, practices. So thank you for those suggestions, Carolina. Please go ahead. Bruna, uh -huh. unmute. Okay, good. Thanks, John. Carol. <laughs> Thanks, Carol. I'm so sorry. It's just because the the controls in the room they're not allowing us to unmute ourselves, so it's it's a little tricky. But um, thanks so much. Um, just a couple more points. Um, everyone, really, I I feel like this conversation is is going a lot of interesting places, but. Perhaps we should be focusing more on what kind of small changes should the IGF we should make this year in order to for it to acknowledge, right? The the pressing issues and and so on. Like we have been speaking um a lot about the GDC, but it's not really just the GDC that's taking place this year again. So and, and that's not the only relevant um space or discussions for the IGF. Might be the one that um might um, offer a lot more questions or even um, make a kind of a more complicated assessment of our model and the relevance of, of multi-stakeholderism. But again, we should be able to look at other processes uh, such as Visus Plus 20 and, and let's get to the and other, other spaces. The second thing I wanted to say is that um, I would really urge to us to not just be focused on government. Um, we're also here talking about, um, we're talking about a campaign, basically. We're talking about a campaign where we're going to do this piece of storytelling that many, many have been um, talking about here on where we're telling them about the relevance of the IGF and why is it working. And it's not just um, kind of collecting stories, but also like coming up with this very kind of direct and objective message about the relevance of our space and so on. So where we, if and if we're looking at a campaign, um, we need to craft um, perhaps two different messages. One thing that would be appealing with governments, and something else that would be appealing for those stakeholders that might have some new or either old or even kind of dormant um, mistrust or like issue trust with the IGF. And 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 in that sense, like we should be also outreaching to fundraisers, or like to fundraising and so on. So anyone that can help us um, further our, our message and and mission as well um, would be very good and, and needs to be part of this this message. So just kind of like giving a suggestion here in terms of the outcomes and possible spaces we're looking at. Um, this is this could be really a campaign and not just in looking into government, but also many other stakeholders, especially funders or anyone that can help us increase and improve and strengthen our, our space. And um just wrap up, um Carol, you're like our the chair of the Mac. So it would be very nice to also hear some of your thoughts on, on a lot of these discussions. I know you're doing your best as, as helping Vince um, share the debate, but it will also be interesting to gather some of your ideas um, on this because I'm sure you have a lot of points and, and comments to make as well. Thanks so much. 
you better not. Those are all good, uh, good points. It occurs to me as I listen to you that we might turn to the countries who have chosen to sponsor the IGF and ask them, uh, why did you do that? Uh, I'm sure some of them after the IGF is over are saying, why did we do that? Um, but frankly, that, that's a huge commitment. I mean, my, my friend Abdul Rahman sitting here thinking, boy, this is a big commitment. Uh, and it is. So we might get some good stories out of that, too. You might want to, in, in fact, to respond to that. Why did you do this? Uh, I think this is uh, tied to um, the need to connect the local community with the global community. Uh, we are we are seeing the, uh, more of economic activity depending on Internet. And we thought this is the right time with the youth, uh, high population of youth in Saudi to connect it with the global community. And we we find an opportunity uh, to utilize the capacity that we have in the country uh, to give a support to this important event uh, that basically helped us a lot in the past and, and understanding and, and debate and, and improving the Internet. So that's the, the, the why, why, why we... Uh, uh, take this to the next level, and we believe on the, on the goals of IGF uh, and and how we can contribute positively uh, locally, plus also on the regional level, because IGF is is being organized in the region once in Egypt. I think this is the second time that connected in the region, and we received very good response from all the regional countries uh, about uh, how much they respond. And today also we have uh, the regional um, ISQA and 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 activities. The UN body in the region would like also to participate more on 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 this IGF. This is this this is the main reason why we eager to have a IGF in Saudi Arabia uh, this year. For those of you who may have just arrived in the last less than twenty four hours. What you'll discover in the, over the next several days is that the level of excitement about these technologies is palpable here in Saudi, um, not only in uh, in this gentleman, but uh, everyone else that I've talked to is super excited about the potential of these technologies. So um, that's that's very gratifying. And that Hi, I am I am I audible? I'm unable to start my video. Oh, look at that! Hi, everyone. To those only listening in, I'm a non-binary person from Iceland and a MAG member. My name is Octavia, and I'm very happy to be a part of this hybrid event. And congratulations to Abdurrahman um, and everyone for, for arranging this, a, a very solid setup. I, um, I want to not conclude, but to partially summarize some of the things that we've heard today. I want to do that also because I come from a country that may be very new in the world, but folks have been there for around 1,200 years. And it started with one man getting into a fight with another man, going to this small island, and then they got into a fight again. And, uh, and then he went to another place and he said, come to Greenland, it's a great place. Uh, the reason why I'm saying this story is that Iceland is not just ice and Greenland is not only green and storytelling mm -hmm. is something that is very deep in the roots of my culture, as I know it is in the multiple cultures represented on the MAG, in the multiple societies and communities represented in the MAG. So why is storytelling important? It's important to all of us because we need to hear more voices, not the same voice over and over again from the same point of view over and over again. So uh, colleague Marcus Kummer, thank you so much for this initiative. I had a point earlier that I uh, wanted to cement, which is storytelling really, really only makes sense as a thing that grows into our future when it in fact comes from data and data collection. So the data mining initiatives, uh, I understand that Windsor finds it to be a potential uh, chatbot experience. I, for one, think it's going to cement all of the beautiful storytelling that I'm sure that all MAG members from all different fields and societies will be able to contribute to it. Uh, to the point of my Dutch colleague, it is a shopping list, isn't it? We have to make sure that we all do what I believe in England or at least in some of the English speaking countries um, is called a potluck. Um, and that means that we all chip in 
and some of us may not have a lot of money, but then we could have time. So distribution and addition of resources of the types that we have, put them all together, um, I think is something that really more than anything in my culture and many others cements that we're doing things collectively together um, and future focused. Now, um, I think those two are, are, are my main points. What I'd like to maybe add on to that is uh, I understand that uh, regardless of, of the understanding of, of institutionalization, the cementing of the IGF is important. I will caution, though, and say that flexibility is needed within this space while we are still uh, 20 years on and maturing it. And, and what I mean by that is we cannot set it in stone just yet. However, the flexibility needs to be in the strengthening of the of the platforms and how we evolve it. Um, we do need, however, to cement the financial support to it as someone who's worked both in corporations, sat as a deputy member of parliament uh, for a while and has worked for non-governmental organization. I can tell you that when you're constantly, um, uh, for the lack of a better word, hustling to get funds, you will not be able to concentrate deeply and fully on the tasks at hand. So anyone and everyone in this room listening later or now, please consider um, chipping in, understanding, listening, or distributing um, the information and knowledge of what it is that we do in these platforms and how that can be strengthened through resources, um, and monetary resources at that. I love how excited we all are about the potential of technology. However, being on the internet, since I was a, a wee person, I have to say the potential comes from the people the people that contribute to the technology, that build the technology, that maintain it, that keep it safe by patching it, bug hunting in it, um, by sharing absolutely terrifying jokes that are just cringe-worthy. Some, some cultures call them dad jokes. Those are the people that truly inspire, uh, provide the potential uh, and the culture that we all desire. Uh, being accessible to all of us. So Abdurrahman, uh, congratulations on the event and everyone that's taken part. Um, I too wanted to maybe ask uh, Carol um, as, as our MAG chair to, to sort of maybe bring your perspective into some of the things that have been discussed, because uh, I do find it to be uh, both interesting and quite a large, uh, long shopping list. So any any time or points from you, Carol, would be really appreciated. And thank you for this time. You're welcome, Octavia. I am. I I will give a wrap up at the end. So you you notice I'm trying to write, read the chat, everything else. So I will I will um, pop in at the end with with a summary. Bent. respond to something. Okay, so Zhao? I'm Samuel for the tech community. I want to strongly agree with the idea of the two to make IGF a formal part of UN system. I think it is a very great, it's a very good idea and it's important. Let us, let us talk about it a little bit later. It means challenging and a lot of work, but it works of that because of the unique value of IGF. Thank you. Aliji is on. Oh no, it's off again. There you go. Okay. Thank you. Um, good morning. Um, Al Haji, member of parliament um, from the Gambia and the African Union. Um, um, I, I think um, there's one important point that I need to um, mention. Essentially, it's about us selling ourselves as IGF. Um, by the way, I'm a MAC member also. Um, uh, we are doing a lot of good things um, over the years, and I think it's time for us to tell our story. Who's going to tell the story first? I think as a politician, we tell our own story. And telling our own story also helps us also to be able to get funding for what we want to do. And I think that's one area that IGF is not doing very well. And I would suggest uh, perhaps to have an IGF media team. And they'll be able to carry out um, uh, some of the things that we do in a very good ways. Um, not big document, but at least a summary that we can actually sell online from the various media platforms, um, um, you know, Facebook, you know, X, you, you name them. 
So I think for me, it's like we need to tell our own story. Because if you want to wait until somebody's going to tell your story, they may not tell your whole story in full. So I think we need to maybe come up with a media team for the IGF. Are they able to do a summary format of what we do, and particularly the good things, to see exactly how can we sell this to the whole world? Because, you know, we have the UN um, uh, doing their part. But we also need to have others also to join in, like the African Union, um, like the World Health Organization. I mean, you name them, like IPU, you name them. So, so I think if we have a media, good media team that will be able to portray the good things that we do, I think it's going to actually help to put the things out there and at the same time to help also in funding. Because, again, a lot of organizations, they will be able to help in funding once they know what you do. Thank you. First of all, I could not agree more that funding is important and having a media team that can help us get the message out there would be very, very helpful. So thank you for that suggestion. Okay, so we're going to go to um, FIO. Is it FIO oh. or FIO? Online. FIO or FIO? Okay, um, the next one is. No, he's on now. Oh, he's on? Okay, good. Go ahead. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for giving this opportunity. Can I go right now? Uh, hello, am I audible? Yes, please go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, thank you for uh, giving the opportunity to me. Sorry, I, I was traveling and uh, traveling for a conference. So, um, yeah, um, my part is that, uh, first of all, let me introduce a bit about myself. I'm P.O.T. Luen. I originally from Myanmar, and I'm a coordinator of the Myanmar UIGF. And so very recently, we initiated the uh, South Asia UIGF as well. I'm currently working as a director and contributing at the IKU PLO and also net mission, uh, representing them at mission in ERS. I would like to take this opportunity for sharing the opinions and challenges from the youth perspective. You, you know, you are always in the front lines of the next generation. We really need, uh, we really appreciate that, Matt, consider that you represented it this time. And also you need my support and Matt, uh, and also uh, my support and mentorship from the, uh, uh, from, from you and also like a strategy, more sure, strategy way of encouraging the more young people to participate in this mm -hmm. community. And uh, we also have to talk about the, um, letting them to continuously uh, contributing on shaping and on this international policy. Of course, how they can, we have to consider that uh, how they can participate meaningfully in the sustainable way. I have been repeating this uh, about the sustainable ways of their youth contributions and meaningful participation uh, since uh, uh, Ethiopia, but let me repeat that again. And also, I think like uh, it's important to that how we can support and collaborate more with the youth initiative from the different region, uh, like uh, from Asia Pacific, like the Nation to Asia, APNG, Asia Pacific, and Next Generation Can, and also UIGF, of course, for coordinate, uh, advocating to the more young people to bring into this community. But very recently, uh, I, uh, we have done for the APNG, Asia Pacific Next Generation Care, which is supposed to uh, brainstorming and talking about the AI uh, this year. And uh, we observed that, uh, especially for the women from the technical care community are very uh, relative, uh, relatively uh, lower than the ratio of the fellow uh, who apply for the fellowship programs. And, I think we need encourage more you know, we, uh, women to participate from the technical community to get involved in the shaping, uh, uh, to get involved in the policy discussion. So far, I think that we need to bridge the gap between the generations and the generation when everything is changing rapidly, especially AI and policy has become more threatening and why giving the more opportunity to the people. I think we need to discuss more about that as well. Um, on one hand, we also need to encourage those people from the vulnerable groups and who are still lacking the voice from uh, uh, lacking the voice in this community, uh, not not uh, for for example, like from the demolesty or something uh, like that. So this this can the young people from the, this country are staying not showing and not uh, you know, we didn't hear any voices from those kinds of the country. 
So I believe that uh, IGF and also Matt have uh, need to consider the strategy plan and also the uh, the the specific guideline how to encourage more young people from these country uh, to get involved in the internet governance of uh, forums and the the why should be in the uh, of course in the internet governance opportunity. So uh, I would like to say this opportunity to share about us uh, the sorry for repeating again and again because I would like to hear uh, I would like to listen uh, I, I want to make member listen and uh, implement the, uh, the the reality plans and the uh, strategy plan uh, to encourage uh, the yeah, if, of course existing a uh, community like the uh, for for encouraging the use make uh use made like the the youth community for existing youth community as well as welcoming the new uh, young people to join this community. Thank you very much. Um, just just one comment about uh, especially having uh, youth participation. Um, one thing that we might try to consider is whether we can make use of the NRIs as a way of uh, drawing more youth input into the uh, our engagements so that uh, they don't all have to come to the annual IGF in order to be heard. So I don't know whether that's actionable, but if it's possible to do it that way, uh, we might be able to get a great deal more input uh, without necessarily uh, increased expense. So uh, anything we can do along those lines might be very helpful. Okay, so we're going online, Ananda, and then Winnie, and then Wout. Thank you. Uh, am I audible? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you so much. And thank you to Theo, echoing to her about the youth engagement and um, uh, we, I am also very thankful that I can today talk about the youth because uh, of the IGF itself. Uh, if there was no uh, IGF process, I could not know about these issues and raise these issues in this uh, uh, important forum today. And uh, we are grateful to see some of the uh, young members in the MAG itself. Sava is one of the examples that uh, youth are being considered as part of this process as well. And what I want to raise today is like, well, we are being very close to uh, Global Digital Compact. Uh, do we have any kind of clear understanding in these years of uh, the process of IGF process, uh, what is being worked out and what are not being worked out in case of IGF process itself? Uh, I belong to uh, uh, Global South and I founded a youth initiative, Youth IGF Nepal two years back and still uh, what I see the coherence between the UN agencies, UN agencies back in Nepal doesn't even recognize what IGF actually is. Well, I talk about different uh, leadership position people here in Nepal, uh, including the UN agency. They don't recognize uh, the process of IGF. They don't know what uh, uh, is what it is about. And another thing is like they are doing so much of things uh, that uh, uh, we need to do the issues of uh, digital literacy and the issues of uh, cyber security. They have uh, these kind of programs aligned, but uh, they don't recognize the national and regional initiatives. Um, being said that we have more than 165 uh, NRIs um, at the end of the 2023. And another thing is like, uh, how, while we are talking about AI governance and emerging technologies, the countries like Nepal still lacks the connectivity. Uh, there's uh, uh, more than 50% of population in Nepal that are not connected to the internet itself. And uh, those people who are connected to the internet itself are the uh, new people. They don't know how to ex exactly use these technologies. Uh, and like uh, there is a lot of need for the capacity building kind of thing. And maybe if uh, uh, the UN agencies and other donor agencies that are present in Nepal if they were aware about the IGF process, we could actually coordinate with them and then like make these things happen so that we uh, build a better inclusive uh, internet for the future. And uh, another thing is uh, uh, for the summit of the future, there is no clear mandate that how do we uh, engage with youth stakeholders? 
uh, there is no clear mandate how uh, this NRIs could be included in the consultation and in the summit of the future itself. So how do you think young people can actually put their agenda into the summit of the future uh, more specific uh, to the issues of the internet governance? Thank you. Uh, thank you for reminding us again that the youth are very important because eventually they have to take over and fix all the problems that we've created. Uh, so uh, I had understood, though, that IGF has had a long history of bringing youth into the picture. Uh, so am I missing something uh, about that? Uh, no, we, we, I think it needs to be improved. So one of the things that... Um, coming out of the IGF last year, the youth feel that they're still not engaged enough. So what I would like to do is to encourage um, persons to take part in the new working group on youth engagement. So please sign up for the, the list and make sure that your voice is heard. So I'll say that again, uh, please sign up for the working group on youth engagement and we will soon be uh, publish the mailing list on that. Um, so for we we, we uh, have about fifteen minutes left in this session. So I'm going to ask persons to please keep their interventions um, very brief, so that persons can be um, recognized and heard. Uh, I just need to clear the online and then we'll come back to the room um okay so somebody dropped out just now so we have wood and then winnie let's see it, winnie. it's okay Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Walter Natris. I'm Sorry. No, it's not on. There you go. There you go. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Walter Natris. I'm the coordinator of the Dynamic Coalition on Internet Standards, Security and Safety. And I would like to make two short points. The first is that, yeah, Big, big topics like AI, quantum computing, internet access, and you have smaller topics that need some sort of harmonization in the world of a little push to get the policy in the right place. What I would like to invite the ILF, the MAG meeting to discuss is the creation of a, something like a policy incubator where people are brought together, discuss this topic, and at the end of the intercessional process at the IGF, present a blueprint to the world that would actually help everybody to create that necessary policy. And that could be on very specific topics, and I will leave it there. The second point is I'd like to second what Marcus said on DC report recognition. I think that it's timely for a lot of <coughs> dynamic coalitions to discuss policy so that at the end of the intercessional period at the IGF, when a report or a policy recommendation is presented, that it can be formal IGF output, not UN output, IGF output. So what sort of a process should we adhere to as dynamic coalitions to make sure that we can get recognized? And that's what I would like to, to share. And thank you for the opportunity. Carol, it's been, uh, first of all, thank you for brevity. And second, thank you so much for reinforcing the idea that we need to incorporate the output of the dynamic coalitions in some more formal way. Uh, I hadn't fully appreciated the uh, uh, gap uh, between outputs of the other organ uh, components of IGF and this one. So I think that's an action item for us that we can do something about. Thank you. Sumer, Dino, and then Winnie. I have just a short comment about the digital SDGs that we are talking about, digital goals. 
Um, uh, and uh, a very good point was made by a colleague from UN Pension Fund also. Uh, and then we have, uh, I would like just like to recall that we have these VISIS action lines. If somebody from ITU is online or in the, in the room, we have VISIS action lines. That was the exercise which was done to align the SDGs with some digital goals. This can be a good guide for us to develop those uh, uh, digital goals as well, which are aligned with SDGs. And, uh, uh, and th this can be a major output or, or outcome of the IGF if we, if we are able to provide a list of these goals and or, or some indicators which support, implement, digital indicators which support implementation of SDGs. And I think this will also be aligned with the policy incubator uh, approach that we are discussing. Uh, uh, yeah, so I think this this visa section line can be a very good guide for us. Thank you. Thank you very much for giving me the floor, Madam Chair. Dino De Lacho, Chief Information Officer, UN Pension Fund, MAC member, represent the international organization. Very briefly, I wanted to admit and confirm what Ananda said. Indeed, the UN community is very limitedly aware of the IGF. And this is something that uh, uh, I'm trying to bridge. I alluded to before that, that we have a mini IGF in the UN system. It's called the Digital Technology Network. It's this task force that reports to the supreme entity called the CEB, Chief um, Executive Board. And uh, I started to share uh, the DTN, exactly the outcome of the IGF work. And as I alluded to before, I will present this afternoon during the updates that each one of us will make there are opportunities to start collaborating. So yes, indeed, there is a limited knowledge, but I, I took upon myself to try to bridge that gap. Thank you. That's another wonderful example of how volunteer labor counts. That it's Winnie. Winnie, you have the floor. Okay, thank you again. Uh, okay, I could even start the video again. Um, okay, I'm back again. Thank you. Thank you for this great opportunity. Again, I would like to reiterate something um, that, uh, that Vince talked about. And I'm curious and I'm eager to see uh, an opinion piece written by Vince or and Kumar and even Abdul Rahman, uh, just explaining Abdul Rahman could write an opinion piece about uh, what um, Saudi Arabia is planning to do and everything and where they where they aim to go, uh, even as a country. Uh, I'm looking at Marcus uh, writing an opinion piece about uh, how the journey has been, where it started and where the conversation started for IGF. I'm looking at Vint writing a story, uh, an opinion piece about himself uh, being the chair, how it has been over the years. He talked about 18 years. That would be an interesting piece to be able to tell our stories from. And I like the fact that um, Octavia, Octavia uh, spoke about storytelling and how best, even as we're thinking on in, of engaging the youth and not only bringing them into the meetings, but in uh, in our social media spaces, how are we still engaging? How are we able to tap on uh, like social media channels on TikTok, talking about IGF, where has it come from and where is it going? On X, on uh, Facebook, just being able to bring out that story, the juicy story, and even the, the roadmap that we talked about of Riyadh, going to Riyadh in 2024. Uh, can we tell that story in an interesting way on TikTok and be able to bring out the juicy uh, snippets of Riyadh and, and uh, from the different spaces, if it's in Africa? I know the African UN media, I mean, the media team for IGF is willing and uh, ready to engage. So we can start from there, from our different chapters when we are starting and we can share this on TikTok. And these are things that can be highlighted uh, maybe during the uh, the 2024, uh, when we are having the uh, global summit of IGF and uh, showcase those TikTok uh, videos and everything and bring them together as part of our storytelling journey. Thank you very much. 
it's it's been uh, i i do have a tiktok account believe it or not uh i think i have six followers or something uh a 13 year old girl insisted that i had to have this account uh my only question about uh, winnie's suggestion is how do you tell the story of igf in 15 seconds yeah so uh, do you have are there longer tiktoks videos than 15 seconds oh i'm glad to hear that so it's, uh, 30 seconds maybe okay this is good to know uh, but I, I, I really do uh, appreciate the point that we should be reaching audiences that uh, we might not normally uh, talk to because we'd like for them to know about our work. Uh, and I particularly take the point that was made earlier about the rest of the UN not knowing about the IGF. Uh, so uh, we have those are two actionable suggestions. So thank you. I love it when we can go away with a real action item. And by the way, Winnie, uh, can we get in touch since you have a lot of ideas? Maybe you can join one of our working groups. Can we um, email you and then you can join one of our groups to help us oh, yeah. brainstorm? Yes, I am willing. <laughs> it's part of the labor of love for <laughs> idea. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we're we're two minutes to end of session and break. Shangata, you have something to say? Yeah. Um, well, I think the chairs should wrap up. Um, you can just summarize or say uh, next actions. But we also would like to have a group picture. I'm not too sure where the best place is uh, with the mag and the LP members that are here. <laughs> Well, just for my part, it's been, I, I took a lot of notes and I really appreciate uh, all of the thoughtful input. Uh, I can commit that the uh, leadership panel uh, will work together with the MAG and with the rest of the IGF uh, to help make this one of the most productive of the IGF meetings ever. Uh, and thanks to the generosity of our hosts, I think that's entirely feasible. I, I think I needed to bring a a large notebook that I have <laughs> here. I'm running out of pages quickly. <laughs> Great. So just to 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 recap, and you could consider this recap as things that have also been on my mind that you've repeated. So we have like minds here today. Um, the storytelling, the storytelling. Um, Maria started the buzz and, and it's continued. So we, we, we're going to tell stories, but we need to rely on you to give us those stories. Um, Henriette is, has suggested that we'll, we'll come up with a Netflix. Maybe you'll have about 20 seasons. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's hope for, for, for at least 20 seasons. Um, I like the, the, comment of Zhao for the 20 year review. I think that would be a, a interesting reel if we can get um, quick flashes from, from maybe the dynamic um, coalitions from the NRIs and put together a nice um, 20 year review. Um, we also talk about the roadmap that's gonna be very important for us to create. We, we have to have, somewhere where we can all look at because you know the mag group is a a revolving group so we want to make sure that we stay on a road that is the right path for growing um the internet growing the the digital um ecosystem so mag members we we really need to to put out that roadmap we've been talking about it talking about it people are visual we we need to be able to to see where the, the IGF is going. Um, <clears throat> I love what Justin said about people are looking for solutions to problems, not just discussions. They wanna be able to say, hey, that is a, a solution that I could actually implement. Um, it's not now you move from paper or discussion to paper to actually somebody doing something. So we need to, to frame our outputs into actionable items, solutions. And I think uh, we discussed um, in the LP meeting that uh, the working group on processes 
uh, we, we need to look at how we're reporting. Maybe it's not um, dynamic enough so that um, persons will say, oh, hey, look, I got this information from, from the IGF um, website on a report from one of their workshops or from one of their um, open forums. So we, we do need to, to communicate uh, more. Um, monitoring, I'm a, I'm a project manager um, by profession as well. And one of the things that you always hear, oh, what's, your, um, what's your indicators? What's your key indicators? And that is something that we have to have. How do we know if we're being successful if we're not measuring it? You know, um, Vint always said he's he's brought up something else again. Uh, the internet today, or the internet that we have now. So how do we know that the internet we want is different than the internet we have now if we don't measure? So we do need to come up with some indicators and some way of monitoring and um, gauging. If we are moving and if we're not moving, then how do we get to move? Because sometimes we think we're moving, but you know, our feet are just marking time, same spot, same spot. So um, we need to see that we're actually doing some forward movement and not any backward movement. Uh, somebody, I think it's, was that Dino? I like that term, bi-directional, okay? Sometimes we were only lis listening and we're not hearing. So we have to hear, we have to listen, we have to respond. We've been talking about communication and I know a lot of you have done probably sessions on communication and we have to, to determine, I think we heard um, the noise, you know, sometimes there's a lot of noise. We have to be able to pick out what's noise, um, listen to, how many people are making that noise, what that noise is, and be able to to um, come up with a response that will reduce that noise. There will always be noise, but maybe not so so loud if we can help. Um, youth engagement, uh, we, we keep hearing it, we've heard it, and please, we encourage you to, to um, sign up for the working group on youth engagement. And so we we'll move from just hearing it to actually doing, and we want to hear the voices there. Um, Alyssa mentioned the shopping list. Henriette said, okay, well, you know, we, we've had shopping lists before. I like um, what, uh, who was that? I think it was Octavia, the the potluck. And um, that's, that's what you get when you have a multi-stakeholder group. Um, you know, you, you tell your friends, hey, we're having a potluck. And um, sometimes people bring for, well, in the Bahamas, macaroni, what some people call macaroni pie is um, sacred. So you just can't have anybody bringing uh, a macaroni pie. It has to be a delicious, it has to look like macaroni pie. Um, please don't put raisins in it, <laughs> you know? So, <clears throat> um, so when we have this shopping list and when we have the potluck, um, you're gonna have to put everything on the shopping list. You're gonna have to accept every dish that comes into the um, into the potluck. But of course, we have to make sure that we refine that shopping list. If we're gonna be making macaroni on that shopping list, we definitely don't want raisins. Okay, so uh, Melissa is saying, where am I taking up her story? <laughs> okay, so I'll move on, Alyssa, leave your story alone. Did somebody bring raisins to the macaroni you know, and that's I, why you're bringing this up? Yeah, so so <laughs> I have a bad habit of reels, you know, I, I before I know it, I've, I've watched like a thousand reels in one day and I, I saw a reel where this woman brought up raisins to put in a macaroni. So it's a big no, big no. <laughs> um, also, very important is that we need to be realistic. We really do. Um, there's a lot that we want to do, but we have to be realistic about what we can do. And um, I had a, a boss who always told me, um, Carol, I asked you for a cup of tea and you're trying to boil the ocean. Um, so we have to be realistic about that as well. Um, 
the media. We we really need to 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 approach our communications in a more modern way. Um, we have to to reach out to persons on different through different channels on different platforms. And that is something that we are definitely going to um, concentrate on. So um, in closing, I'd like to thank everybody for their great and valuable input and for keeping us on our toes. The MAG has a, a, a lot to go on and to go with, and we're looking forward to um, further discussions and getting some actions going on. I'm going to hand over to... Abdul Rahman. Um, uh, thank you again. I mean, uh, uh, it, 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 it is it is storytelling. It is branding of IJF. It is uh, getting the positioning of IJF in the right place. And, and as a host country, we are uh, supporting with all it means uh, to support IJF and uh, continuation of IJF uh, in the future. Uh, and uh, both the technical community, the uh, non-profit community, as well as the government community of Saudi Arabia, all of them are working hand by hand to make this is a memorable and successful uh, event in 2024. Thank you. That brings us to the coffee break. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everybody online. We'll be back at, what time are you back? 11.30. 11.30, we'll be back. Which is uh, for the online people that take it's eight and fifty GMs. Okay.
or online participants. Okay, who has Okay, we want to make sure the online participants feel welcome. So, um, on a part of us, so we're going to, for a quick minute, a very quick minute, ask everybody online to just turn on their video or put a picture of themselves so that we could take some screenshots and um, to help with our little media boost. So, um, we're going to allow you to switch on. Uh, so, everybody just switch on for us and We'll take a quick picture. Okay. Yes, everybody fix up, fix up. Dab your shiny nose. <laughs> Make sure the cat is not in the way. Everybody's looking so beautiful. Thank you. Okay, so they'll let me know when they're finished. They're about three different screens. So sorry, keep smiling, everybody. Keep smiling. Okay, you ready at the back with the with the screenshots? Yeah. Okay, we we're now gonna start. This is the first screen. And we go into second screen. Sorry, okay, relax the smile for one second. <laughs> Too fast. Yeah. But I don't know why I'm not seeing the screen one. Oh, there you go. Ooh, there are four screens. <laughs> Ready? Okay, so we're on screen one, screen two. Is that everybody team at the back? Keep smiling, keep smiling. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Are we done? Okay, thank you very much. You can um you can switch off. Thank you. There's my agenda. I lost my agenda. Where are we? Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure if you can do this one. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're now on to the agenda item. That's just after the coffee, um, coffee break, opening statements and adoption of the agenda. The message queue. Uh, so, can we play the message from the video message from the USG from the Under Secretary General of DESA? My glasses on. Do you know? Ah, there they are. So this is a welcome message from the Under Secretary General of um, DESA, Department of Economic Social Affairs, where Members the IGF of the is. IGF Modest Stakeholder Advisory Group, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to address to you on behalf of the United Nations. Let me start by thanking the 2023 Modest Stakeholder Advisory Group for your central role in shaping the impressive meeting in Kyoto last October. We received many positive comments, and success would not have been possible without the immense support of the MAC. You have laid the important groundwork for this year's preparation on your way to Riyadh. The 2023 IGF brought together more than 9,000 stakeholders from 178 UN member states with an increased participation in the private sector and the members from the Asia Pacific. We hope to see the same or even bigger engagement at the, the 2024 IGF in Riyadh. The dialogue 
and the exchange in Kyoto delivered the forward-looking and action-oriented messages. The forum reiterated the calls for the global community to do more, such as closing the multiple forms of the digital device, implementing the standards of the openness and interoperability, and continuing a strong multi-stakeholder approach to the internet governance. Let's keep this in mind as we program and design the agenda and the priorities for the Riyadh IGF. This year's MAG has an important task ahead with the summit of the future upcoming in September and the review the process of the World Summit on the Information Society in 2025. This year's IGF is a critical one. The agenda of the 19th annual meeting must be ambitious, building on the success of the Global Digital Compact and striving for a better digital world. The MAG needs to ensure that all stakeholders across the countries and communities can participate in and contribute to the decision making to reflect the people's aspirations and skew that they arise online. An effective multi stakeholder governance approach is essential to ensure that the policies and the regulations are both inclusive and adaptable to the rapidly evolving digital landscape. The IGF 2024 themes must be carefully crafted, guided by the inputs from the stakeholders and institutions received through the IGF's public call. Finally, I also welcome the fruitful collaboration between the MAC and the leadership panel. This will allow the IGF to be more strategic and impactful in 2024 and beyond. I have no doubt that the IGF 2024 will help to shape the future of the global digital agenda. I wish you a very productive meeting. Thank you. Then we now move on to uh, the acceptance of the agenda. Any names? No? Uh, yeah, if anybody has any comments on the agenda, um, if not, then the chair will consider the agenda accepted. Well, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> the agenda is accepted. Thank no. you. Adopted, sorry. <laughs> And uh, okay, so we're now here from the host country. Thank you. Um, so thank you again. Uh, thank you, Chair, for this opportunity. Uh, the work for hosting IGF 2024 has been started and for we are being busy uh, last couple of months and you know, designing um, the hosting program, securing the uh, all requirement support from uh, all the uh, sectors and uh, uh, making sure that we build uh, a good, uh, uh, what they call it, uh, engagement plans, which is something that we touch on in the morning, but there is something that we can work on uh, with the leadership panel and, and with the MAG on, uh, on the next coming month. Um, just we have my colleague, um, Mr. Asim al -Wakar. Asim is the executive director for IGF in Saudi Arabia now. He's handling all aspects of uh, preparation of, for, the, for the IGF. Asim will take us in a quick presentation uh, about what, what we are planning to do. So I would like to hand it to you, Asim, please. Thank you, and thank you, Chair. Um, good afternoon, everyone. This is a very... Uh, quick presentation about preparations and about Riyadh. Uh, 
and what to expect as well and Riyadh and, and just a heads up of some of the uh, the things, the logistics that you need to be aware of. So um, we are going to talk a little bit about uh, Riyadh. Um, we're also going to uh, unveil the new logo, which is obviously everyone saw it behind me. Um, and we are going also to talk about the venue that will be uh, hosting the, the, the forum and then a high level roadmap and we will conclude. First of all, um, Saudi Arabia, it's in the center. You can see it, it's in the center of the map. It's, uh, it sits in the middle of the map uh, exactly. And you also can see Riyadh as well as in the center of Saudi Arabia. It's the capital of Saudi Arabia. Uh, the population is almost um, 8 million. Uh, the median age is 29, uh, 50, 50 Saudi, non-Saudi. The weather to be expected is 22, which is good. Um, uh, the time zone is uh, uh, 3, uh, 3 plus. So um, this is just a very high level. And I'm not going to talk much about Saudi Arabia and Riyadh because there is way better uh, presentation and information and a website called Visit Saudi and I recommend everyone to go there even before if, if he wants to visit Saudi for any uh, any event of, or anything. So I recommend that you just write the name visitsaudi.com. This is a very informative uh, website. These are some uh, major events that will be hosted in Saudi. Uh, just uh, a very quick uh, uh, sample, which is uh, COP16 uh, will be in, in this year, uh, Asian Indoor Games uh, next year, World Energy Congress uh, 2026, Asia Cup uh, 2027, and so on, until we reach to Riyadh Expo 20, uh, 2030, and then the World Cup uh, 2034. This is a very info uh, important information, which is uh, the date that will uh, the forum uh, happen, which is 15 to 19. Please remember this date, uh, December 15th till the 19th in King Abdulaziz International Conference Center, which is, of course, in Riyadh. Uh, uh, Riyadh have 13 international airports. Uh, we will focus on the major three, uh, big three. So Dammam have one, Riyadh have one, Jeddah have one, and there are uh, 11 uh, other uh, airports. So this is how to come from, from those airports uh, or provinces to Riyadh. You have uh, so many options and transportation is, is, uh, is as you can see, by air, by, uh, by uh, train, by shuttle. And there will be, inshallah, we will be launching the uh, also uh, the metro, uh, hopefully in April. So uh, it will be operating in April uh, in Riyadh. This is some information and numbers uh, and facts about uh, digitalization in Saudi Arabia. So we ranked the first in ISQA, the second in the digital competitiveness report among the G20 countries, um, the third in globally in the GovTech maturity index, and so on. So the initial logo, as you can see, we have two looks of, uh, for it. And you can see the triangles on the diamond shape. It's a very a uh, very um, uh, old uh, shape that uh, that is used in buildings and, and dresses, and it is called uh, sedu. This is the, the, the triangles and the diamonds called the sedu, and you can see it in everywhere. Um, almost uh, uh, we're using it now in, in uh, some of the logos, etc. So we used it here just to make, give it some uh, cultural uh, background. The color, which is a mix of the innovation and lavender. So the innovation, uh, obviously, it's a, it's a, it's a purple color. And uh, lavender, which is uh, a very famous plant in Saudi Arabia. Uh, uh, it has a very uh, unique uh, smell. And this is why we took this uh, lavender color to, uh, to color the logo for it. So for the venue itself, uh, it is King Abdulaziz International Conference Center, uh, and it has so many uh, amenities. As you can see, we have two uh, main halls, um, more than 
12 meeting rooms, etc. Of course, all of this information will be shared and all uh, recommendations uh, and also uh, requirements to host it uh, will be taken into consideration as the King Abdulaziz International Conference Center is customizable. We can customize it as much as we can. Uh, free spaces, we can, for example, take the other hall and uh, divide it to meeting rooms, exhibition, uh, etc. As you can see, this is a more details uh, about the, the venue. These are some pictures. This is the reception in the lobby. And this is the, we call it the lounge or the majlis. And these are the two main halls. These are pictures of the meeting rooms. Now for the roadmap, um, this is a very high level roadmap. We have four main uh, work streams. Uh, the first one is orchestrating all the work ongoing till we uh, finish from uh, hosting the IGF uh, forum. And the second one is marketing communication. The third one is logistics and participant experience. Last is session and content design where day zero is going to be very rich, very rich of uh, uh, content and related topics. This is a more detailed uh, roadmap. Yes, this is the roadshow. So as we saw uh, the communication and outreach and media is very important. So we're planning as well to go to uh, main conferences and related uh, ven um, uh, events like, uh, for example, uh, the Summit of the Future, uh, ICANN, etc. So we'll be having a reception there. We'll be uh, giving awareness and also um, invite people to join IGF uh, 2024. So this is the last uh, of our presentation. So allow me to start this uh, video. I'm not so sure of the. The sound is not working, so. Mm -hmm. You can do it. Yeah, it's in, it's in the, within the yeah, okay, my school we think. Communication is a primary endeavor for human beings, from the initial cries made by babies in their cribs to how we communicate through the internet. It is a part of almost every aspect of our lives. The internet provides a limitless communication space for people, one filled with opportunities that allow everyone to explore their creativity, inspirations, and curiosity to learn. The internet weaves contrasting threads together narrows distances between people, and ultimate shapes memorable experiences. But what lies ahead for the Internet? The Internet can drive hope and inspire dreams of a more promising tomorrow, one where people turn their creative energy into reality. The multiple opportunities of the Internet are within our grasp. This is an invitation for a collective endeavor to shape a legacy today for future generations tomorrow. With open arms, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia welcomes the world to the Internet Governance Forum 2024 in Riyadh. So that's that's all, and thank you all. We can take a Q and A if you want. Um, so this is this is just a quick snapshot about what we are trying to do. 
In parallel to that, we we are we are uh, communicating with the global community. We will have a couple of receptions, uh, especially in Geneva and in New York, this year to have a dialogue uh, with all uh, uh, community, IGF community, and to have a direct communication between uh, us and, and 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 the community. And we will try our best, as I said in the morning, that we are approaching IGF with an open heart, with an open arms, and we wish everybody uh, to have the opportunity to uh, to attend in particular in, 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 in Riyadh. Uh, Riyadh and Saudi Arabia, we know that uh, IGF will be uh, very close to the Christmas. Uh, this was not, not our initial plan, uh, uh, but it's very hard uh, to schedule a global event with a lot of global events happening around the world. But we encourage you to come in, in December and enjoy the weather, enjoy the city, and enjoy all the options that Saudi Arabia can 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 offer. Uh, and we we'll look you to your help uh, to strengthen IGF uh, through the work of MAG uh, and also through your your personal uh, uh, testimony of 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 the work that we 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 are planning to do. So thank you, thank you very much. And we uh, we if there is any question, your chair, uh, we will be more than welcome to answer. It. Okay, we are now open for questions and answers on this section. Hello, thank you. Uh, congratulations for the great job. And the first time to be here, it's amazing. So I definitely believe that this event will be successful. And so I have two quick comments. The first one is, uh, I hope that both the sector and the uh, host country could, could do more promotion. You mentioned it is really important, not only in media, but maybe at all airports or something like that. Because if people come here, I think they will come here later for business. And it doesn't only help uh, help Saudi Arab for business, for, for commercial use, but for IGF, for promotion. We need new faces. We need all stakeholders, especially private sector, to be engaged, not just, not just for funding. But I think it's a good opportunity because, because you have the ability, you have the heart, you're open to new friends. So, so actually, I think promotion is very important. I hope you could do more. And thank you for all the job. The second is here is for IGF, I think it's very useful to be platform to meet people. So if we have the part participants name list available, I hope we could uh, be available online and people could find out who's coming. It's good to meet people, but I want to meet the right person. Maybe I can do some work. So I'll be here to meet, to meet someone I really want to, maybe for business or for more, for talking, for discussion. So I hope the list could be, be available soon. Thank you. Uh, when, when it is OK. Thank you. Uh, last question. We will have a list of participants up. And also with the um, app that we're using, the schedule app we're going to be using as well, you can see who's going to be in which um, session, et cetera, and you can contact them. Yeah. Um, regarding the promotions, uh, uh, yes, we we think about any be present on all all the major events around the world. Uh, we have, uh, as, as as you heard from uh, the chair of LB, we will use the same messaging for IGF uh, in all our meeting or bilateral meeting with the government officials. Uh, we will invite uh, a lot of people from private sector, especially from mega tech companies. So we hope that this year will be have a good presence from 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 business and from civil society as well as as from government. Uh, and and again with the promotion, we should do that always, and we will continue doing that. Thank you for that comment. So for persons once you've registered on Indico, you will and it's been successful. You'll have access to the list. Bruna? Oh, sorry, Justin. Thank you. Yeah, just a, a one practical question. I might have missed something. So on the dates, is there's a day zero now? I know there was a conversation. So the 15th is the day zero, then day one is the 16th, and then, okay. And then also just noting, um, I think there were some comments in the chat about hotel rooms. I think some are already showing sold out. 
Uh, and so I uh, didn't know if there was um, any information or blocks being set aside on, on that. And then I know that there's kind of a lot of folks who had visa issues and, and may continue to have visa issues. So noting those questions, thank you. 15 is day zero, so this is confirmed. Uh, uh, regarding the hotel rooms, we will have different options. We are with our colleague from Ministry of uh, Tourism. Uh, we will try to provide hey, a lot of options, different price range for different people. Uh, and also we will provide from the major hotels uh, the transportation to the to the venue. And we hope to have a very rich cultural program in the evening. So again, that transportation and that information will be will be provided to all of you in China very shortly. Thank you. Bruna and then Bram. Thanks, Carol, and, and thanks, Abdurrahman, as well, for the presentation. It's really nice to see the program and your plans taking shape, and, and the venue is indeed beautiful. Um, just um, one, two small questions, actually. Um, just for a second, um, Justin's comments about the hotels mostly. Um, speaking as a civil society stakeholder member, um, it, it's really relevant to have the concern on the price point, right? Um, it might be the case that um, a few of your hotels, um, local hotels, are a little bit out of range for, for my stakeholder group. So it, it's also nice and a good touch to show this concern to the to the community. Um, but I had um, two more questions on the program itself. Um, you've highlighted that um, KSA is doing some outreach plans to stakeholder groups. So, and, and from what I understood, there is some level of focus on um, member states, but I would maybe perhaps like to ask um, what else is being done with regards to civil society, academia, and the, and academia and the technical community, um, three other relevant stakeholders for the IGF. And um, second question is that I see in the pro, in the roadmap you've shared as well, the design of a VIP program and secure attendance of VIP. Um, can, would you mind, would you guys mind explaining um, a little bit more what does it mean? Because I understand we do need to show some um, dedicated space for um, our higher level attendees or let's say governmental attendees as well, but it's also important for us to not um, silo um, IGF attendees from, like to, to not prioritize any levels of IGF attendees or even um, silo them from different levels of participation. So yeah, just um, a couple of questions on both the VIP program and also on what else is being done in terms of outreach to other stakeholders. Thank you very much. So thank you, Bruna. Thank you uh, for uh, for your effort first, uh, and, and I highly appreciate you and your contribution in the last year. And, and hopefully we have the same level this year from, from your contribution and, and the rest of the month. So for hotel prices, um, Riyadh is becoming busy and busy. We start seeing prices that we never saw before. However, uh, we are in a serious discussion uh, about, about having codes for, for discounts uh, for IGF. So we will try to uh, promote this uh, with the Ministry of Tourism. There is a lot of support that we are getting from there. And we'll see how much how far we can go. But we have a negotiation uh, a negotiator in our team. And so far, he was a good negotiator, and I hope he will be able to give us a very good uh, yeah, any prices in, in different range. So we have very high level and middle and very low with a good, 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 good visibility. Uh, when I talk about uh, the outreach, uh, it was not meant to member states. It was meant more about uh, civil society and academia and the rest of the groups. Uh, so this is this is the area that we don't have like, a formal way to communicate with them in the past. So uh, our 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 uh, missions in New York and and in Geneva will be will be hosting reception, and and again we will be very open. Uh, we will we will talk and we will listen first. And we will show with the maximum level of clarity that everything we, we can do. Now, for VIB, this is a, a term we use internally because uh, there are a lot of guests coming with the ministerial level. Uh, and there is some state visits. And, and usually on that one, we are following a different protocol than normal protocol. So basically, when we say VIB packages, we make sure that we don't get missed during the execution. So make sure that 
their program and, and the entity that taking care of them, they know about their arrival early early on. And also we receive in that in that package as well. There is a lot of ministers who want uh, visiting and they want bilateral. So that's another team working on that one. So just we want to make sure that this part of operation is taking taking part of. However, uh, we are working with with the secretary on on, on, a, on a list of uh, high level invitees, and if, if there is any any name that need to be added to that one, we we are welcoming that. So this is why we just have operationally put the FIB aside because it's always where where the headache coming if we if the operation at the time, and we want to focus more on a proper uh, reception for for uh, for participant. And, and usually, and this is not a promise, uh, don't count me for this, but usually we have uh, the immigration uh, have the stamp of, of the event that's happening in Riyadh. So we hope this year you all of us will have, uh, all of you will have an IGF stamp on, on your passport when you arrive to Riyadh. So this is something about change management and commitment that we want to get everybody to, to be working on that. So uh, I hope this answers your question for me. Thank you. Um, this is Bram for the record. Uh, just, I, I think also for me, I was just, I just wanted to uh, echo from what Bruno and others have said, uh, just to thank the Secretariat and, and I think the host country for arranging the open consultation to happen in the host country. Um, what that has done, it's, it's given us some hint of um, how the visa process which is something that is a problem year in, year out in these international events is going to look like. I'm not too sure how the lessons that have been drawn from, from this gathering, for example, we we have some uh, participants who have failed to make it uh, due to few glitches here and there. Um, maybe if you could also share uh, what is a, a extensive plan around ensuring that uh, in December we're not going to have issues to do with the visa uh, around around the world. I mean, in my own experience, I, I applied online. Um, there was no feedback. I, I applied for the business. I only realized here that you're supposed to apply for the tourism uh, visa and then you get it instantly. Um, and then I had to pay at the airport as well uh, without further explanations in terms of what happened to the, to the, to the, to the visa I paid online. And so uh, this meeting happening in the digital city, we, we, I mean, I'm, I'm excited and I think uh, this is something that we can take an opportunity and, and learn and improve uh, on the visa issue. Thank you. So thank you very much. Um, uh, we we understand. We 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 learn a lot about this one. So I discussed with Fincer, uh, and 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 we decide to produce a guideline on the visa. So uh, Saudi Arabia has two major change to visa system. A couple of years back, one is is going opening the visa for 50 plus nationality and the holders of certain type of visa, global visas and global countries. And the one is that we are going online massively on that. So I think uh, more clarity on that is needed. This is listening from the process that we have. Yet we had a little bit of pressure on time because uh, people applying, we don't know that. In parallel, we have a, a full team and full access to our FISA system. So the, our team uh, work around the clock. So probably will will be in the guideline. If you have any issue with a certain time is passed without hearing your FISA, then a local team, uh, our team, will be able to assist that. So this is this is this is good to learn it uh, upfront. And we will have this guideline as soon as possible. And the other thing that we cannot confirm back to to you in that guideline, uh, what is uh, the timeline for? Uh, what is the earliest you can apply for visa? And we'll encourage with that date everybody to apply for the visa upfront. So make sure that, uh, yeah, any, we can, if there is any issue, we can solve it uh, with, with the time. So it was good lesson learned, but uh, uh, hopefully, inshallah, will 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 be even better. It might be some certain countries they, that we they might have a little bit difficulty because they are not in the list of the countries that we have, where we need to go to the to the normal route of uh, applying to the ministries, applying to the embassies, and, and even on that we are we are sending an internal message to all embassies around the world, informing them about event, and if there is anything, there is a contact they can contact us directly instead of asking people to provide more information. <laughs> Sma. Thank you, Chair. Um, 
my query has been partially answered already. It was about visibility and participation. I think ministerial participation will be uh, a major uh, thing that will highlight the importance of IGF. Uh, in last IGF, I, if I am correct, there was less than 20 ministers participating in the forum. So it speaks already that how much it has the visibility, uh, especially if invitations are sent to digital or IT ministries, the foreign affairs ministries, they should also be invited in this forum. And this will, uh, uh, it, there can be one challenge because it's coming after summit of the future. So there will be already a high level participation in the summit of the future, and then it can have an impact on uh, the participation level at the IGF. But uh, if we are somehow able in, in our program to create a kind of uh, connection linkage between the, these two events. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure the host can uh, come up with some creative uh, ideas how to attract uh, both ministries, IT ministries as well, and uh, foreign affairs ministries as well, so as to improve ministerial level participation and give more visibility to IGF. Thank you. Definitely, we'll take this in consideration. Thank you very much. more questions on this? Okay, uh, my apologies. I missed an item on the agenda. So we will now be going to the message from the IGF 2023 host. Okay, thank you very much, Chair. I hope you can hear me now. And this is uh, uh, Yoichi Ida from the Japanese Ministry of Internal Affairs and the Communications. So very good morning, good afternoon, and good evening uh, to, to colleagues from MAC and all uh, uh, various uh, uh, internet communities. In the very beginning, uh, I have to extend uh, on behalf of our Japanese government, uh, our highest sincere gratitude to members of MAC members of leadership panel, and probably mostly to the members of Secretariat, Chingetai and Anya and others, for your dedicated contributions and the very productive discussions. As many of you are aware, we believe the IGF Kyoto 2023 was a great success with the participation uh, of more than 600 people on site and with more than 3,000 uh, 3, people online. And we had the main theme of the internet we want, empowering all people, which was discussed and decided uh, in MAC uh, with the support from leadership panel. And we had eight sub-themes including AI and internet fragmentation and uh, online safety and data governance, whatever. And uh, we believe uh, the, all the uh, sessions around 300 uh, uh, during the period uh, of Kyoto IGF had a very productive and uh, forward-looking discussion. One of the objectives uh, as host was to bridge government policy discussions and multi-stakeholder dialogue through the uh, discussions uh, in IGF uh, uh, in Kyoto. And uh, we wanted to strengthen the synergies between IGF and other government policy forums, uh, including uh, G7 and G20. So uh, as uh, the presidency of G7 last year, uh, for example, we had a, a very in-depth discussion on internet governance and also the uh, internet fragmentation. And uh, uh, you will find some uh, 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 consensus uh, language uh, among G7 uh, governments. Uh, uh, if you look at the uh, G7 statement, uh, which we uh, released uh, in April last year, and uh, through the discussion, we promised the government needs to discuss this important topic with multi-stakeholders. And uh, uh, we, for example, hosted a session on 
uh, internet governance, in particular, together with the uh, uh, declaration uh, uh, of the future of internet, and uh, of course, in the multi-stakeholder uh, way. And uh, I believe we had a very good uh, discussion uh, uh, with uh, various uh, communities uh, on the very first day of uh, Kyoto IGF. Another example was uh, AI discussion. Uh, we had a very good discussion in G7, and we also uh, brought uh, our discussion be, uh, among governments into the uh, discussion uh, on AI governance uh, with multi-stakeholders in Kyoto which uh, led uh, again to contribute uh, to the government discussion on rulemaking in Hiroshima process last year. So uh, uh, I uh, wouldn't say we, we did something perfect, but uh, we uh, achieved uh, at least uh, part of our uh, objectives to create some synergies between uh, policy discussions and multi-stakeholder dialogue, and we hope uh, to continue uh, these efforts uh, through the years and uh, uh, beyond. The so next page shows uh, uh, the some of the uh, exhibitions uh, in Kyoto. Uh, we invited uh, uh, many companies and organizations, not only from Japan, but also from abroad, and they made uh, very good uh, exhibitions. Uh, some of them uh, uh, showed some uh, cutting-edge technologies, and some of them showed their uh, uh, continuous efforts to prevent uh, and uh, keep the safety on, uh, online. And uh, I hope uh, uh, if you uh, visited uh, the site, uh, uh, you enjoyed the exhibitions. And next page, uh, uh, another uh, objectives on our site was to uh, activate and uh, re-empower uh, the uh, internet community in Japan at home. Uh, the Japanese uh, internet community uh, was a little bit quiet and we wanted to, to, to activate it uh, uh, once again. And I believe uh, many people from uh, private sector, uh, civil society and academia uh, very actively joined the preparation. And uh, we believe uh, they learned a lot from their uh, work uh, in, during the preparation and also the period of uh, in, uh, uh, Kyoto IGF. And the last page. So what's next? Uh, as uh, USG Mr. Lee uh, uh, mentioned in his speech, uh, we see uh, the uh, global uh, digital compact coming up and we are waiting for zero draft and we uh, will be ready to, to join the uh, drafting work uh, to uh, accomplish uh, the uh, uh, productive and the future looking uh, 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 message uh, from the work and also to contribute to the summit of the future. And then next year, to contribute to the discussion uh, in uh, WSIS Plus 20 uh, review. And all through this process, uh, our uh, objective is to protect and promote, strengthen the multi-stakeholder rhythm and uh, uh, the uh, initiative of Internet Governance Forum. So we are very uh, always very happy to work together uh, with colleagues from uh, uh, all uh, different countries uh, around the world and with all uh, uh, different uh, uh, communities uh, from around the world. And uh, uh, we look very much forward to working together with uh, colleagues from Saudi Arabia. We saw a very wonderful uh, a video uh, a few minutes ago. And uh, coincidentally, uh, we had a very good experience uh, with the colleagues from Saudi Arabia when we had the G20 uh, presidency last time in 2019. Uh, we succeeded G20 presidency to Saudi Arabia, and we know very well uh, the colleagues from Saudi Arabia are uh, always doing a very good job. So we look very much forward to our collaboration, and we look forward to joining uh, uh, in IGF in Riyadh. So thank you very much, and uh, 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 back to you, Chair. Thank you very much, Ms. Ida. And we totally enjoyed Kyoto. Your team did an excellent job and um, you've raised the bar 
and you'll see what happens in 2024. So thank you very much for your hospitality, for the venue, um, the food. <laughs> so thank you. So we're now moving on to um, stock taking 2023 and considerations for IGF 2024. And we'll be hearing from Celine. Thank you very much, everyone. So uh, part of the program today is to do the taking stock from IGF 2023. Um, here a short introduction. So we have received this year 23 um, contributions. Uh, if I recall, it was 49 the year before. So I think it is a, a positive thing that we've received uh, less uh, contributions showing uh, how successful the IGF 2023 was. Um, for your information, we've taken in that summary document the written contributions received via email. We published it also on the website, as well as the written contributions via the call for IGF 2024 thematic input that we launched on our website shortly after the IGF uh, took place. And we also... Um, took uh, into consideration the comments received uh, during the open microphone and taking stock session uh, at the IGF 2023. Um, that session is also available on our YouTube uh, channel just for more information. Um, out of those three, uh, 23 um, contributions, uh, those regions that uh, submitted, uh, submitted the most are from the Western European and other groups, followed by Asia Pacific, GRULAC, uh, so Latin America and the Caribbean, Africa, and finally, uh, IGOs. When it comes to the stakeholders, those who submitted the most are indeed from the civil society, um, followed by the private sector, uh, technical community, and finally, um, from the governments. So perhaps one of my colleagues can share the access to all contributions in the chat, uh, which is also here available on um, the presentation itself. So um, we have divided, as you know, the IGF stock taking into six categories, starting with the preparatory process. So all the preparations leading up to the IGF 2023. Um, and we have received several calls to indeed lower the number of thematic tracks. This is something that has been discussed during the LP meeting, but also this morning, as you can tell, um, to have a more focused agenda. Um, there have been several calls to include the intersessional work and also the, the DCs into the program building. As you can recall, last year we had an intersessional event that we organized uh, at the second open consultations and MAG meeting as an attempt to already include more um, expertise from the various intersessional work streams into the program building. And we're also inciting, of course, um, the intersessional work streams and members from them to take part in the um, uh, main session buildings. Um, there are some some more small comments. I, I let you go through the um, through the slides, but for example, uh, increased transparency in the selection of sessions other than workshops. This has also been discussed or will also be uh, discussed um, in the next uh, couple of days. Um, a better coordination between the IGF secretariats, the host country, and the main session organizers when it comes to the uh, preparations of the high-level sessions to make sure that they are also in line with the uh, uh, main sessions. Um, we also try this year to uh, have an early announcement of key dates uh, as good as we can. So uh, from open consultations and MAG meetings as an example, and also to, pu uh, to publicize the IGF 2024 timeline on our website so that everyone um, has the key dates um, included. Um, when it comes to the IGF call for thematic input, something that will be discussed later this afternoon, there's also been a request to expand the list of issues. And last but not least, there has been a call to increase meaningful participation of marginalized uh, and vulnerable groups. Good. Um, the second part is the intersessional work in NRI. So I already mentioned before that um, um, intersessional work would like to be involved already more in the program building. But um, other than that, we also do have NRIs and youth initiatives output that should be more integrated in the global IGF program. Um, so not 
only in the building, but also in the program itself. There have been several calls to include more youth. And as the, the chair and co-chair already announced this morning, we do have, uh, and as you know, as MAG members, we do have this new working group on uh, youth engagement. And again, a, a call to you to also take um, actively part in it. We have reached out to the various um, youth initiatives that we have already in the IGF to also take part, and they are very much um, um, behind the fact of having such a MAG working group on youth engagement. Good. Um, uh, as I also mentioned, uh, not only including the DCs and intersessional work in the program building, but also um, advertising more the outcomes of intersessional activities in the MAG strategic planning. Um, also, there was uh, an example given to organize a dedicated day to IGF intersessional work uh, during the, the, the week of the IGF. Good. The third part would be, uh, I suppose, very interesting to you too, uh, the program structure and content. Um, there, it was lauded that we aligned the program with the GDC and OSIS Plus 20 review, review process, and we've also been asked to continue to do so. Um, there has also been several calls um, regarding the, the prominent status of um, artificial intelligence in the program, and uh, not to forget that there are other very important topics, of course, um, uh, that are uh, related to internet governance. Um, the accessibility of the internet IGF, um, interactive IGF scheduled uh, should be given and also published earlier. Um, also an important item is to have a firm deadline to allow changes on the session pages so that people can just better plan in advance to what sessions they are going, what speakers will uh, be part of the various sessions, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there has also been a, a call to decrease the number of sessions to avoid duplications but also to start sessions later and end them earlier, just because um, people noticed that the attendance at very early sessions or very late sessions was just lower. Indeed, in Kyoto, we started the sessions at 8.30 and ended them at uh, 7 p.m. Um, also, very important to simplify the program by reducing the number of session types. So, uh, as you may uh, already discussed uh, before, town halls, um, lightning talks, etc. These kind of uh, sessions are called session types. Um, we were also asked to include more people with disabilities, youth, gender diverse, and global south individuals as in-person speakers. It is, as it was noted that um, a lot of these speakers were either taking part mostly online and not in person or um, not in main hall events. Um, also something that was discussed uh, with the LP uh, the couple of days before is uh, to allocate more time to uh, discussions, to open discussions with the IGF community at high level and uh, leadership panel events. They've taken note of this. Regarding the parliamentary track, uh, we've been asked to engage the IGF communities more and more widely um, and also to integrate the parliamentary track and the sessions dedicated um, uh, to, to parliamentarians more into the program. Um, it was also noted that uh, very so quite a lot of speakers uh, had multiple interventions at IGF sessions. That a lot of speakers were recurrent, and um, we've been asked to also um, have more uh, diversity, let's say, in in the various speakers um, uh, of of the various IGF sessions. And last but not least, it was also asked if the uh, IGF 2024 as a platform. Um, could be used to discuss the final report of the high-level advisory board on AI, which will be published a little bit uh, earlier um, uh, this year. Fourth category is the are the technical matters and the communications. So um, there have been calls to um, hold sessions fully virtual. Um, on the other side, the, there have also been a lot of positive um, comments mentioning that it was important to, to keep on-site panelists and moderators, um, as it was noted that uh, during COVID, events that did that were fully virtual had uh, just less interaction with on-site participants. Um, the accessibility of each session should be improved. So that means also that remote participants are treated equally compared to on-site participants. 
meaning that if someone uh, raises a virtual hand, that this person indeed uh, can take the floor, not uh, very late in the Q&A, but already up front. Um, there should be a better promotion of the IGF mobile app and some uh, features to include a chat function. So uh, Chengat already mentioned that the list of participants will be available in this um, IGF mobile app in the future so that people can actually um, also uh, talk to each other. Um, we've also taken note of session organizers to uh, develop a set of instructions. Uh, we've really tried to be in touch as good as possible with session organizers to make edits on the website, uh, on the web page as um, easy as possible. Um, it was also noted that the registration for individual sessions did not seem to be so, so straightforward. We're also working on it. Uh, when it comes to communications, um, it was asked to have more internet personalities present and also to include more international media. Uh, not only as, for example, journalists at the event, but also as digital stakeholders. Um, we've also taken note of uh, enhancing communication activities, especially for session organizers, releasing, for example, uh, communication material earlier in time so that session organizers can use it to advertise um, and promote their session, let it be on social media or elsewhere. And last but not least, um, it was asked to better advertise the 3D uh, venue and, and virtual booths. Now, when it comes to the IGF 2024 uh, 3 stock taking regarding other logistics and the host country role, something that has been already discussed uh, now for the upcoming IGF is um, the, the visa issue, which for some people and unfortunately for some nationals from the global south proved to be challenging. Um, also a call uh, to include various types of disabilities already in the preparatory process of uh, the IGF 2024 and make the venue as accessible as possible. Um, not only the disabilities should be taken into account, but also uh, environment. So there was a call to implement green events by following sustainable event management practices. Um, there's been a call to have uh, to just share privileges and immunities of meeting participants, place the village, so the IGF village, closer to workshop rooms or coffee corners to increase attendance. Um, also an important factor, um, not to organize reception or social gatherings during the meeting hours and especially in parallel of uh, meeting sessions that are ongoing. Now coming to my last slide, participation and stakeholder engagement. So I've um, mentioned already the, the youth. It was uh, noted that the uh, youth presence definitely increased uh, at the IGF 2023. But again, um, we should uh, have them participate meaningfully. So for example, avoid uh, assigning to them a less visible role, for example, as an online moderator instead of an in-person moderator. Um, enhance business participation. So Abdul Rahman already mentioned that uh, business will be an important part already at the IGF 2024 um, by creating also dedicated spaces uh, for interactions with business and the rest of the IGF community. Um, increase the outreach uh, to legislators from the Global North. That was indeed uh, a feedback given during the parliamentary track. Um, also something that has been discussed in the past uh, few days but was noted during the stock taking is the uh, is uh, raising the uh, awareness of existing IGF outputs and support their dissemination not only the, um, within the UN system but also elsewhere. Um, there have been indeed a few calls um, welcoming um, the introduction of a judiciary track to develop the capacity of uh, judges now working in the digital arena. Um, also, perhaps two two more important um, comments. So, the the importance of attracting more government representatives, other than from uh, Western and European um, and and other groups, um, of course, Saudi Arabia and uh, as a country in the Arabic region will play an important role in that. And last but not least, um, it was also asked to organize an IGF side event at the Summit of the Future to increase the participation of the IGF community in such an important event. Um, so for you to know, all the um, stock taking has been published on our IGF website. If you'd like to go through 
um, uh, more detailed uh, submissions, you can do so uh, with that link. Thank you so much. Any questions on this? Other comments? We just popped up, yeah. <laughs> go ahead, Chris. Oh, there we go. Um, oh, I can't, there we go, video. No, just um, I wanted to say thank you to the Secretariat for pulling all of that information together. And I think um, it, it highlights the challenge that we have as MAG um, in these couple of days because there is a huge amount there. And I, and I think it's very valuable to have it all laid out very much sort of as it, as it came in. But there's a lot there that's very contradictory and there's a lot there that's perhaps either not realistic or even has already been implemented in, in some ways. So I think um, we, we certainly all need to take that, um, that information, that input in, in the sort of the way that it is um, that we can manage it. Um, we're not going to be able to impl implement everything there. And I think the other point, and I think Henriette perhaps has mentioned this in the, the comments, is that this is the feedback on that one event. We also have, um, you know, various uh, sources and particularly the expert group meeting of um, suggestions and thoughts on improvements that we haven't actually had the opportunity um, to act upon. So we also need to make sure we're bringing those into the discussion. So I, I'm... Looking forward to digging down and getting to work on all of this, but um, yeah, there's there's a lot there. So thank you. Okay, the the presentation is available on, I'm sorry, online. Zhao. Thank you, the secretary. I think they have done a great job. So the collect idea suggestion is very important and very supportive for this this year's forum. And I just think that I agree with Chris. We have so many things on the plate, but we can choose we which we should focus to improve this year. Two or three things, maybe like for the side events in GDCR, we focus on the uh, material or focus on use of some two or three things that we that we can see the improvement this year. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Go you, ahead, Chair. Mia. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you. It's just a little bit convoluted to push all the right buttons to, to come in online. Um, thank you for giving me the floor. My name is Timia Schütte. I'm the Global District Policy Lead at the International Chamber of Commerce. Um, you might also know me as a former MAG member. It's really great to see a lot of familiar faces and friends in the room and, and online. I'm really sad not to be able to be there with you on this occasion, but I'm very much looking forward to being there in, in, in Riyadh in December. Um, and thanks, uh, of course, to the to the hosts um, for, for making this possible. Um, what I wanted to, to come in on and, and share a few points was, was really that last slide um, that, that Celine presented with regards to um, stakeholder engagement. Um, and, and participation, and especially from the business community, which is uh, one that we, we represent here at ICC. Um, we've heard repeatedly from the MAG and, and from the community in the past years that there seems to be a lack of participation by business in the IGF and that this needs to be strengthened. So to, to try and respond to this and, and give more details, what we've done um, as we came back from Kyoto last year, we, we ran a survey across the ICC membership um, to really understand three things. Uh, what motivates business who does come to the IGF and participates uh, year after year? What makes them be there? Secondly, um, what are some of the barriers that they see when they try to get their colleagues uh, or other businesses to participate? And thirdly, what is it that they expect from their participation at the IGF? throughout the year, of course, but mainly um, focusing on the annual event. 
So we put all this in a report and, and we've shared that report with the secretariat last week and, and, and it will make it its way to the mag, I'm sure, and we can send it to the list as well. Uh, but I wanted to highlight three areas from, from that more comprehensive proposal and report. Um, first on motivators uh, for businesses to participate in the IGF. Those are mainly three things. The first and foremost, engagement with government representatives. Secondly, engagement with the stakeholder community. Um, and third, uh, contribution to ongoing policy discussions in the world. Um, and it's important to underline here that businesses really value taking part in the IGF as a venue where they can exchange with the broader internet governance community. Um, it's, it's unique in the sense the IGF and businesses don't come here to talk to other businesses um, or, or, or to have these peer-to-peer -peer conversation uh, across the business community. It's a good opportunity for that as well, but businesses go to other fora to do that. They really come to the IGF to have this interaction with the community, with non-governmental stakeholders and with government counterparts. So, so that is really their key motivator and what where they see value in coming to the IGF. Now, what are some of the barriers that, that our community has highlighted in this? Um, it's, it's really, I categorize those into four main areas, which uh, are related to visibility, uh, to clarity on the benefits of participation, the agenda, um, and the planning process. So clearly why the opportunity to shape policy conversation is the main driver for the participation uh, of businesses and mainly the policy experts from, from businesses. Decisions on how high level they participate in, on how, how pronounced their participation is, uh, is is based on a number of other factors as well, not just what policy conversations um, they they be they are able to influence. So so uh, that includes opportunities for networking, brand promotion, targeted outreach to their own audiences, and, and without proper visibility, businesses who are not clearly engaged in the policy conversations or parts of the business who are not clearly engaged in the policy conversation. I find it very challenging to communicate um, uh, their value proposition to the right audience. Uh, they might see that that the venue is a reduced uh, impact for participation and therefore they disengage. So we need to make it clear to the businesses what the value of them engaging and coming to the IGF is. Um, the other thing is um, networking opportunities uh, that are there for, for the IGF. Um, that brings a lot of value to the businesses who do come there, but awareness of this networking opportunity might be low. Uh, so I think we need to make it clear directly to the businesses what is it that they're missing out on by not participating. So we also need to make it sure that, that we have a very clear value proposition that is tailored to a business audience. Um, then, uh, and this comes into this idea of, of making it clear what's happening at the IGF, um, is the agenda, uh, and we will discuss this more later in the day, so I, I won't <laughs> share all my points here, but but we've heard from our, the businesses in our uh, network that uh, the complexity of the annual meeting agenda, it's a major barrier for their engagement. Uh, there's a multitude of tracks and sessions and various agenda items that are not necessarily always the most coherent. Um, or interconnected, uh, and it makes this the navigation of the agenda very challenging, even for the most seasoned, long-standing participants who've come to the idea for 10 years or more. Um, and it can certainly overwhelm newcoming participants, um, particularly those businesses who seek more focused discussions. Um, so I, I urge the MAC to consider uh, perhaps simplifying the agenda. Um, and then the last thing uh, in terms of the barriers um, is, uh, really the, the the process of preparation, which really works well. And, and people who are part of the IGF, part of the MAG, understand this well of what happens when and what we need to focus on as we prepare for the annual meeting. But from the outside, um, it, it can be very difficult uh, for, for those who don't have a history of participation. Um, and new audiences, and especially high-level audiences, need a, more information and more, let's call it hand-holding, as they prepare for, for the IGF to make it really clear uh, what is it that is expected of them, what is it that 
what value can they receive from from participating and and where can they they, they gain visibility and the network and, and all the other benefits that they can receive from participating so to sum it up the recommendations to enhance the participation of business in the igf um, provides space for public facing meetings between business and governments business and, and non-governmental actors but also make sure that the agenda has space for networking um, and, and some more informal interactions, let the agenda breathe, so to speak. Um, second, make sure that the outreach uh, to the business community is targeted, uh, it's tailored to their needs and their interests. And especially when it comes to high level participants, make sure that it's a timely outreach and it's clearly targeted of what you want from that person you're inviting to the IGF to bring to the IGF. Um, and then third, um, uh, keep, um, space on the agenda for um, for for conversations, uh, but also make sure that there is space for uh, communication and 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 visibility um, and and for marketing purposes of of the IGF itself and then of the businesses participation in the IGF. So let me conclude there. Um, I'll probably come in later in the afternoon uh, with regards to the agenda and the teams. Um, but I just wanted to share this few highlights. There's a lot more uh, ideas in our report, and I'll, I'll share it um, to the mag list, and or maybe we can put it on, I don't know, as a contribution document to the website, so those who are not in the mag can also uh, maybe take a read. Thanks, everyone. Okay, thank you, Tamia. Okay, um, <clears throat> we're a bit off schedule here, so it's now lunchtime, and we will return... Uh, so thank you all. Um, uh, two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you all. I mean, uh, we, we are uh, restricted in the lunchtime with the restaurant. The restaurant will be on the first floor. Uh, uh, and, and our colleagues up there to to help you, please enjoy your time, your lunchtime. And we'll be back here at 2 o'clock, 2 o'clock local time. So this is around 1 hour and 10 minutes from now. Thank you.
Yeah, we're just waiting for that. <laughs> Uh, can somebody from the secretariat please collect people who are outside and just tell them that we're starting? Uh, can we have the zoom up, please? Thank you. Many thanks, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you had a good lunch. And we're about to start the afternoon session of the open consultations. <coughs> Again, a reminder, if you want to take the floor, you can um, wave your nameplate, or if you're online, just raise your hand and the chair will call you. And when the chair calls you, can you please just give a very quick introduction, your name, stakeholder group, and region so that we just have an idea. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, welcome back, everybody. We're going to get right into it. And we're on the agenda item called Themes for IGF 2024 and Other Strategic Approaches to Program. Uh, just a little housekeeping before we continue. We won't have a afternoon break, but the coffee will be available to you. So feel free to um, grab a coffee whenever you can. And those online as well, feel free to mosey on over to your cappuccino pot and, <laughs> and grab a coffee. So moving right ahead, we're going to have the IGF Secretariat summary of inputs received, and we'll move along each gender item. Thank you. So, Celine, yeah. <laughs>
Yeah. Sorry, we'll start just now. It's just Murphy's Law. It always happens. Uh, I can't share my screen. Thank you so much for your patience. Um, so this presentation has already been introduced to, to the MAG during a virtual call. Today is the Open uh, Consultations Day. Uh, so we're going to uh, do a presentation again. Um, also for you to know, this is an extended version of uh, the IGF call for input and the results. And you can always refer back to that presentation when you're discussing uh, IGF themes, sub-themes, and, uh, and more. So um, as you know, we've had far more stakeholders taking part in uh, this year's IGF 2024 call for thematic inputs, a total of 310 stakeholders. We asked them during a period of eight weeks from beginning of December to end of January to select up to three uh, themes from a list of 11 themes. And um, each theme had an additional list of selected uh, of issues. Um, Stakeholders, again, were able to select up to three issues out of this list. Um, we also included a, comments, a comment section on ways the IGF could contribute to global initiatives relevant to, to uh, the work of the IGF, so internet governance related issues, uh, mostly uh, on the GDC and the Summit of the Future. So again, a short presentation on who submitted. Um, Nearly 60% submitted in their personal capacity, while uh, around 40, 43% uh, submitted on behalf of uh, their organization. Pretty similar to how it has been in the previous years. Um, when it comes to the gender, we've only taken into consideration uh, the gender from people who submitted in their personal capacity, not the ones on behalf of their organization. And unfortunately, you can see that it is pr pretty much unproportionate that 35% of respondents are female, while 64% are male. Um, we've also had few um, respondents who are non-binary. When it comes to the stakeholder groups, you can see that the civil society, very similar to last year uh, too, um, provided 44% of the inputs, um, followed by private sector and technical community and uh, the governments shortly after, and last but not least, the IGO. Now, regarding the regional groups, so the African community, nearly 40% uh, provided uh, input, uh, followed by the Asia-Pacific, uh, the, uh, the Western European and other groups, followed by Latin America and the Caribbeans, IGOs, and last but not least, the Eastern European group. Good. So when it comes to the selected themes, here you can see the, the whole list of 11 uh, themes. Um, the most prominent ones being artificial intelligence, um, closely followed by cybersecurity and trust. Uh, data governance ke uh, keeps on being a very important um, issue, followed by rights and freedoms. Um, I let you go through the list um, to have a quick look at the remaining ranking. Good. Um, now, when it comes to the selected issues, so starting with artificial intelligence, the most popular theme, 30% um, indicated that AI ethics is an important issue to them, uh, followed by AI governance and AI risk. Um, when it comes to cybersecurity, child uh, online safety and cyber attacks and uh, cyber crimes uh, are equal. Uh, followed by cybersecurity practices. Now, the third uh, most selected theme, data governance, has data privacy. And I have to say, I do not remember the end of that uh, data privacy and mm, followed by data free flow and uh, data localization. Uh, rights and freedoms, uh, you can see human rights, civil and political rights, gender rights, and freedom of expression, the uh, top four. Um, 
Also a theme that was pretty popular is the universal access and meaningful connectivity. You're going to see later most of the IGOs have actually selected um, that as an important theme with access and connectivity, digital inclusion and capacity development. When it comes to digital cooperation, you can see that on the third place, there is the IGF organization and role. Of course, multi-stakeholderism and the stakeholder engagement. Uh, regarding emerging technologies and innovation, uh, so last year there was artificial intelligence being part of this um, list of issues. This year it was um, a, a theme. Um, 5G is the most prominent one, um, closely followed by data sharing and research and Internet of Things. Uh, when it comes to the environmental and sustainability and climate change theme, you can see that um, the, the themes are rather broad. So you have sustainable development, climate change, but also our climate digital technologies being the top three. Media and content. Um, this is where we have misinformation listed. Um, nearly one, one third um, of responses, content policy and regulation and citizen journalism. Economic issues and development, you have digital literacy, future of work, e-commerce and e-trade. And last but not least, we do have the technical and operational topics. Um, so domain name systems, internet routing, uh, routing and internet protocols uh, closely followed by network issues. Um, and here again, what the secretary and this is part of this extended version um, did a top 15 of selected issues in general so perhaps that might be useful when actually discussing uh, themes of the IGF 2024. Um, good. Themes by region um, you will see there is at the end of uh, this presentation a comparison an overview of each uh, selected theme um, per region but also per stakeholder and you can tell that artificial intelligence is present in the top three of each single region. Um, Cybersecurity is the second one and data governance is pretty um, uh, popular too. For the Asia Pacific um, it's pretty similar to the African group. Uh, Eastern Europe you do have uh, cybersecurity this time on top one followed by artificial intelligence and digital cooperation. When it comes to the inter um, IGOs, I already mentioned before, the universal access and meaningful connectivity is uh, pretty important. Artificial uh, intelligence is a concern as well as digital cooperation and rights and freedoms. When it comes to GRULAC, you can tell uh, cybersecurity and artificial intelligence again um, in the top three, together this time with universal access and meaningful connectivity. Uh, Western European and other groups, um uh, rights and freedoms cybersecurity and trust uh, are similar uh, at the same level uh, followed by artificial intelligence data governance and digital cooperation 12 percent good this is the overview that i was talking about i let justin take a picture <laughs> <laughs> good uh, now issues by um, regions um, I'm just going to skim over um, because it does contain a lot of information, but here you do have the top eight issues uh, selected from African respondents. Um, same here for the Asia Pacific. You can really tell that, unfortunately, here on the screen, you can't really make the difference, unfortunately, between the, the colors, but cybersecurity is in a light um, neon red, while uh, artificial intelligence is supposed to be the, the darker red. Here, the Eastern European selection of issues. The IGOs, this is interesting. You can really tell there is a different uh, color code also in the in the ranking. Uh, importance is the uh, digital governance, um, digital cooperation, media content in uh, purple, but also meaningful access and connectivity um, on the top three. Uh, regarding Grulank. Again, um, AI and cybersecurity um, is in the top three, followed actually, you can tell, um, all more or less the same uh, number of selections, uh, data governance, and also 
uh, meaningful access and connectivity. Here, this was important for the Western and European and other groups, uh, data governance and also universal access and connectivity, of course, uh, with AI governance right there. So this is, again, an overview of issues by region. And now themes by stakeholders. Uh, you can see what has been the most important for the civil, uh, civil society. Um, again, artificial intelligence and cybersecurity uh, dominates uh, the ranking pretty much amongst all stakeholders. Here, what's also important for the civil society is rights and freedoms and data governance. Regarding government, um, data governance is in the top two. Uh, together with cybersecurity and trust and artificial intelligence. IGOs, you can tell again, universal access and meaningful uh, connectivity, data governance, digital cooperation, and of course, AI on top one. Uh, pretty similar actually to uh, governments. So the private sector, what's important to them is AI and cybersecurity and data governance. And for the technical community, you do have, of course, emerging technologies and innovation uh, being amongst the, the top three, as well as universal access and meaningful connectivity. Good. And here again, always, you can always refer to that slide, is an overview of themes by the stakeholder groups. Good. Um, now coming to the common section. Um, the contribution of IGF annual meetings in general to uh, important um, IG-related processes. They've been asked uh, to actually really promote the multi-stakeholderism uh, into the GDC that the IGF is already having. Um, maximize the multi-stakeholder engagement from the IGF community, especially from developing countries and marginalized and vulnerable groups. Um, there's been a call to make uh, more key dates related to IG um, relevant processes available also on the IGF website. Um, uh, some other, I'll go through the list, but some other ideas was uh, also to, or it was a call to actively participate in that Mundial Plus 10, but also with this Plus 20 review process. And something that I've already shared during the Taking Stock is to use the IGF 2024 platform uh, to discuss the final report of the uh, high-level advisory board on AI. I'll let you go through that slide a little bit more in detail, and that would be it for, for this presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, um, Celine. And she has posted in the chat the link to the um, to the presentation. This session here now goes into um, <clears throat> an open discussion for the overarching theme and title. Uh, remember, well, we're looking for titles that would, or a title that would spur interest that will easily give persons directions for um, outputs, objectives, actions. So we want to make it very um, meaningful. So the floor is open up to, to discussions. Yes, please. Um, thank you, um, so Alaiji Mo, um, government from the Gambia. Um, is it possible to maybe uh, show on the screen like we did last year, like the previous uh, themes, so that at least the new members would have known what was what we had before? Because we pretty much had some new members, both online and in here. So if we have a list of the previous ones, I think that could help. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Kwasai, then to Mia. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Uh, Mrs. Coach, Mrs. Uh, Co-Chairwoman, Mr. Uh, Co-Chairman and Secretariat of the IGF. Yeah. 
First, we'd like to express, to express our sincere appreciation and gratitude to the Digital Government Authority in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for kindly hosting the preparatory process of the Internet Governance Forum. We would also like to express our great pride and happiness with the return of the Internet Governance Forum to uh, in its 19th edition to the Arab world. Looking forward for a successful, impactful forum to be hosted by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in the capital Riyadh. In this open consultations, I would like to point out some set of issues that we view of with, that we deem important to be discussed in the uh, upcoming Internet Governance Forum. Uh, as we approaching uh, almost 20 years since the inception of the forum. Uh, Internet access is still an important topic for the Arab world and for many developing countries. Issues related to access are not limited only to the numbers of users, but it is also related now to the quality of service, bandwidth, reasonable cost for all, size of investment in Internet infrastructure, and securing this infrastructure. Furthermore, finding, finding alternative means and quick solutions for Internet access and natural disaster areas and areas of instability uh, also of an importance. In this regard, we need to point out that the importance of the Internet lies with being a one unfragmented network, uh, open in its uses and available for all. This is important to all users and stakeholders, especially in the economic and social context. Therefore, it is of importance to reach a clear understanding to the definition of one and a fragmented internet that is acceptable to all, especially in the technical aspect and the usage aspect. With the growth of the of internet users, the principle of what applies offline applies uh, online has emerged, which is an important concept related to the civil rights of individuals, the work of a private sector, and the responsibilities of governments. It also leads us to the concept of digital sovereignty, as it is a national sovereignty in the context of protecting citizen rights, preserving private sector interests, and invoking national laws and regulation. This will extend to collect revenues and fees related to users' data, profile and cross-border transaction from the internet global company, uh, companies and uh, other parties. With our life becoming more digital, misleading and false information has become a major concern for everyone. Its impact is not limited only to economic harm, but it extends to destabilizing societies, harm civic peace, and threaten the lives of individuals. But during the COVID pandemic, it reached to the level where it harmed public health and caused the loss of life. Therefore, it is important to adopt appropriate and acceptable mechanisms and frameworks that verify such information, its sources, and, it, it, and reduces its dissemination. This mechanism and frameworks must take into consideration that the world is a mixture of cultures and ideas, and that what is acceptable in one part of the world may not be acceptable in another part. Consequently, these mechanisms and frameworks must be neutral and not influenced by the ideology or thoughts of any group. Digital economy plays an important role in diversifying sources of income raising national GDP and monetizing creativity and, uh, and innovation. But many countries and communities are facing significant challenges that need to be addressed, especially in developing an appropriate ecosystem that provides financial mechanism, offer effective incentives to incubate small and medium enterprises and opening markets for cross-border activities. Cybersecurity is becoming increasingly an, uh, important with their growth in internet use. Internet users are ex increasingly exposed to cyber risk. Economic loss from cyber risk are in the increase too. With time, we have experienced how cyber risks evolved into new patterns that we did not experience before. There is an urgent need for international and regional mechanism to confront cyber risks and enhance cooperation in this field among all stakeholders.
the need for an international convention similar to the Budapest, to the Budapest Convention in cyber, of, on cyber crime is becoming more of an urgent matter that requires the cooperation of everyone. As we approach the WSIS plus 20 review, we would like to emphasize on the importance of the Internet Governance Forum to continue its work as a global forum along with the regional and national versions. It is important to renew and extend its mandate based on the Tunis agenda as an inclusive policy dialogue platform for Internet governance policies, while updating and, moder and modernizing its convening mechanism to keep pace with challenges and developments in the Internet. We look forward to this with optimism and hope and with, and with the support of all. In the end, we would like to express again our thanks and appreciation to the Digital Government Authority in the Kingdom of Saudi, uh, of Saudi Arabia for hosting the IGF operatory process and our gratitude for their hospitality, wishing them all the success in hosting the IGF and its 19th marriage in, in Riyadh. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Tamia? Thank you, uh, Chair, for giving me the floor again. Um, Tima Ashita here from the International Chamber of Commerce, uh, the business community. Um, I don't have very concrete suggestions in terms of team and, and sub-team. I think the MAG has been excellent in past years and, and coming up with that uh, supported by the host country. And I have all confidence that it will happen the same way this year. Um, but I do have a couple of general comments that I'd like to share. Um, and let me start by, by thanking the IGF Secretariat for this really thorough analysis uh, of, of the community input um, that they've just presented. And let me commend whoever it is in the, in the Secretariat who has these exceptional PowerPoint skills. The, they really are impressive uh, presentations, so kudos um, to all of you. Um, what I wanted to, um, to follow up on from my previous comment earlier this morning um, is, is, is a strong suggestion and a, and a plea to the MAG that while we know that all of these issues are extremely important and worth discussing, uh, we've hear repeatedly from the community that an overly broad agenda is difficult to follow, difficult to understand, and difficult to engage with. So I, I ask you uh, to consider keeping the, the themes, the tracks, uh, as manageable as possible. Ideally, the business community would like to see no more than three thematic tracks um, under which uh, workshops and other sessions are organized. Um, that is not only easier to follow while at the event, but a lot easier to communicate um, in advance and a lot easier to then get people engaged with um, throughout the year so that they come prepared for the event. Secondly, um, and, and again, commends uh, to the Secretariat in breaking down um, this inputs from various stakeholder groups. Um, it's, it was really enlightening to see the differences between the different regions and then also the differences between the various stakeholder groups um, in their preferences. Um, and now that we have this breakdown, I, I urge the MAG to consider not only um, overall the numbers, that uh, to all together were received per one theme or one issue. But if you see that there is lack of participation by governments, by IGOs, by business, lack of participation by a certain region uh, historically in the IGF, take a look at what, uh, what are the issues that interest those groups and consider um, arranging a program that is balanced, uh, not necessarily taking all into account, as I said, the overall number of votes that an issue had, uh, but look at the breakdown and try and build a balanced program that, that speaks to all stakeholders and, and all the regions. Um, so now this uh, in, in reaction to what we see in the presentation, things that were not on the presentation, um, but we know that uh, are important to consider. One is that the IGF doesn't exist in a vacuum. We have talked uh, before and, and a number of MAG members have highlighted earlier and also the leadership panel that um, uh, people come to the IGF to discuss what is happening elsewhere, to get enlightened uh, of different other processes and to bring their input into those other areas. So we need to make sure that the, the agenda of the IGF also responds to issues that are being discussed in other forums uh, or that it dialogues 
with issues that are being discussed in other forums. That includes, of course, the UN, the, the GDC, and, and uh, um, other processes in the UN, but not only the digital governance processes, but substantive processes like uh, cyber issues, like uh, AI issues, data issues, um, and also what is on the on the mind of governments in, in the G20, in the G7, um, in the African Union, whatever intergovernmental forum we want to pick as an example. Um, and our host country is well positioned in a number of those fora, and, and we've heard how well connected they are um, uh, in, into, into those processes. I think it would be great to hear a little bit what are the top level issues in those intergovernmental conversations that can dialogue with the IGF. And then lastly, um, not to belabor the point too much, uh, we know that this is a strategic year for the IGF. We are one year ahead before um, the international community decides on the future of the IGF and the next mandate. The agenda needs to allow space for conversations uh, uh, about the role of the IGF in the increasingly uh, complex internet governance landscape. And this digital cooperation was not one of the top three themes, but I think it's uh, in, in any way we shape the agenda of the IGF this year, we need to allow for space to discuss what will happen at the WSIS plus 20, what has happened by then in the GDC and how uh, and where we see ourselves as the IGF in, in that ecosystem. So to recap, short focused agenda, not more than three tracks, uh, space for, um, strategic conversations on the role of the IGF and responsiveness um, to the community input uh, and other agendas. Thank you. Thank you. We'll have Lito, then Bruno. Thank you. Uh, this is Lito Ibarra, MAG member. I, I very much agree with Himea. Um, I was going to say uh, first that I agree three or four topics could be good enough uh, in order to align better the, the, the proposals and, and, and the, the events within the IGF. Second, um, I do agree and I think uh, very strongly that, that we need to include um, some thematic around deciding or discussing about the future of the IGF in view of the of the summit of the future, GDC, and so on, and uh, taking into account what we said this morning about uh, reconfiguring uh, the IGF to be the, the body with, where the monitoring and, and, and evaluation of uh, objectives in the GDC could take place. So um, unless this uh, future will be decided by uh, an, el an elite group, I think we should include these uh, thematics or overall uh, topics or as a uh, general session or somewhere else that we can uh, openly discuss what do we think the role of the IGF in the future uh, should be uh, alongside the GDC and uh, other uh, events that are occurring in the in the near future. So that's, uh, uh, I would say, uh, uh, a key topic for this year that we should include. And uh, finishing my, my intervention with uh, a proposal, uh, I, I would like to see something along the lines of uh, rebuilding the trust in internet, uh, like an overall topic, rebuilding the, the 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 trust in internet. I believe trust encompass uh, the topics on cybersecurity, the, the the concerns about the AI ethics, for instance, and all of these uh, subjects that we have seen. Uh, so many of them are in, are included in, in in recovering, rebuilding the trust the, uh, of humanity in. In internet as a tool. So uh, I will propose that as an overall topic. Thank you. I'm not sure if it's me, is it? Ah, perfect. Thanks. Um, somehow your microphone was cut off. Um, Carol. Can you 
Can I proceed? Can I just, <laughs> sorry to. Ah, okay, perfect, thanks. Carol, your microphone is not coming into the, to the online room, that's why. Um, no, just about um, some initial reactions, um, actually. I like Little's suggestion on um, strengthening your further commitment to the internet, but perhaps I think that 2024 is the year where the IGF um, reinstates even further its commitment with the multi-stakeholder model of participation, at least the, the our own uh, multi-stakeholder model of participation, right? So it will be very interesting um, to hear um, either from the host country or uh, my colleague, um, MAG members, whether we can um, discuss some things around the, these lines. Um, secondly, um, it was posted already in the chat um, by WIM, but also important to, to reinforce that um, fragmentation is not necessarily a cybersecurity issue. So it would be if we are considering um, internet fragmentation as um, one of the topics for this year's IGF it would be relevant to have it as a standalone um, discussion instead of um, something that falls under the umbrella of cybersecurity. Obviously, there are some um, like conven like really common points, but it's really not necessarily a matter in that sense. But um, we just wanted to put this on the record as well. And lastly, I think we have been hearing a lot on the number of tracks and, and Timia and Lito also shared about perhaps three or four um, I'm not sure what the tree is good enough because I, I think we risk um, not stating um, well enough our commitment with topics such as gender or human rights or diversity or um, sustainability and a lot of the debates we've been having so far, but um, perhaps we can agree on a smaller number around five or six, but um, definitely would like to reinforce um, Timia's call for us um, Signalizing topics that are relevant to different parts of the community and also having a more economic um, number of tracks just so everyone is aware um, and, and, and it's actually manageable for any IGF attendees and so on. So that's that's a little bit of what I wanted to comment. Thanks, Carol. Okay, thank you. I just like to make a comment and then we're going to have um, Chris. When we're thinking about these themes there, you know, we have these 11 topics, but as Tamia, Bruno, others are, are saying, we need to make it um, palatable for persons that will attend or want to attend. Um, sometimes we tend to be comfortable with a topic and we come up with these um, headings that people, are, they're lost. So we want to make sure we do keep it simple we, <clears throat> without losing context. Uh, I've seen in the chat that we, we always talk about some issues that are um, cross-cutting. We need to consider that. But having said the word issue, we don't all, only want to look at issues. We also want to talk about successes. So let's look at um, what's been accomplished and that's the internet that we are now, and then what we want to accomplish to move us further along. Chris? There we go, I'm muted. <laughs> Thank you, Carol. Um, I'm gonna keep it quite brief because actually Bruna spoke to a lot of the points that I was gonna say, um, but I'll, I'll reiterate a few of them with my own spin, I guess. One thing I think, and, and this is, I'm curious how this intersects with what you were just saying, Carol, about making the this palatable to um, the the potential audience. I I think it's really important that we have the word multi-stakeholder in the overarching theme. I think this year, perhaps more than any year previously, um, the the need to focus on the fact that the IGF is a working multi-stakeholder approach to internet governance needs to be emphasised needs to be really strongly reiterated and and um, put in that overarching theme. Now, looking at the um, past themes, I'm actually surprised that we haven't used the word multi-stakeholder in a theme since 2014. Um, so in that sense, there's a, a nice sort of 10-year um, uh, anniversary kind of thing as well. But yeah, I mean, we know that going into the WISIS review next year, that 
commitment to multi-stakeholder approach in internet governance is an open discussion. Um, we know that there are discussions this year, whether it's NetMundial plus 10 talking about multi-stakeholder approach, or it's the discussion around the Global Digital Compact and how it its development has been multi-stakeholder or whether its follow-up will be multi-stakeholder. So I think making sure that we have that reference there is really important um, to do. Um, on themes, yeah, I, I don't have a strong feeling, but I do I do think uh, Bruna's point that maybe three is a little limiting um, makes sense, but I would sort of say five is a good upper limit there um, where we can really make sure that we cover different different topics. We can have main sessions without overloading the program. Um, and I, I think that that sort of would seem like a good good structure. Thanks. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, I would echo the point that uh, there is need for keeping it nimble, focused in terms of uh, number of thematic issues it is going to address the annual meeting of IGF. Uh, but uh, my, my, I will, I would like to just remind again, recall the mandate thing uh, that restricts IGF also to discuss issues that do not fall in the mandate of any other body. So this is also something which will resonate with uh, other stakeholders and it will bring the interest of uh, other stakeholders in uh, the work of IGF. If it is going to be repetitive, it is going to be uh, something, again, in the cycle of uh, duplication. Uh, I think then uh, the stakeholders are likely to lose their interest in the work of IGF. So how to create a value? Uh, out of the work that IGF is doing. Uh, one thing can be uh, that we are already discussing about how to align it with the objectives or the principles which are to be covered by Summit of the Future, the Pact for the Future and the GDC. One interesting thing that you will find as far as uh, the draft of the Pact of the Future is concerned uh, and also the, uh, the discussions or consultations that have already taken place in Geneva and New York about the GDC, it speaks of some new effective and inclusive multilateralism and its linkages with the multi-stakeholder approach. Uh, I don't think any other uh, body or uh, group of group within the UN system which has the experience like IGF of experiencing and experimenting the multi-stakeholderism. One way to create a value out of the work of IGF is to present a report or something on uh, what is the role of IGF as a multi-stakeholder body within the UN system uh, in uh, clarifying the issues of internet governance and other digital issues which are linked to the internet? One thing can be this. Another is the gap that we have, uh, because again, uh, recalling the, uh, the, the, the role of the IGF also to fill the gap where there is no existing body doing the work. One work is on the terminologies or uh, digital uh, technology related and normative ter terminologies on which there is still no clarity about a lot of terminologies which are being used in uh, OED OEWG, which are being used in AI discussions as well in different regions. There is no consensus on terminology. Some kind of work on those terminologies can also be an area where I can play a distinctive role it can remain within these thematic areas that have been already identified, but a, a kind of different and distinctive role that IGF can play, not the same thing that have, we have been repeating over the years, some distinct role uh, that I have uh, uh, now indicated. Thank you. Uh, Justin. Um, thank you. And, and, uh, first of all, I just like to think I was taking pictures. Uh, I, th I found the, uh, the PowerPoint presentations really <laughs> useful and informative beyond just the IGF, just, uh, kind of get a pulse for where different stakeholder community uh, groups and regions, uh, are prioritizing. Just, uh, very interesting. I, I think when we look at the sub themes, particularly, which I think is kind of what we're talking about here, my question is, what is the point of sub themes? And I ask that because, you know, I think as a matter of of focusing and organizing the work of the MAG to select workshops, there's some value there, right? Like that's 
that's how we're using them. But, um, and, and sorry, just, I, I totally agree with this comment about the need to focus our agenda. I think it kind of sprawls and uh, we lose the thread and it's very hard for to take away kind of uh, uh, messages from an IGF when there's so many different themes. But to the sub theme question, we talk, well, should there be three? Should there be five? Should there be six? Something like that. I think the challenge is, is this really like restrictive on the overall agenda for the IGF? This is restrictive on the MAG to how we select the workshops, but then host country organizes different meetings. The UN will organize high level tracks. The parliamentarian track organizes its own conversation. The town halls, the open fora, they're, they're not really um, bound by this. And so it really does create an agenda that is all over the place. We've tried to focus the work, but it just doesn't seem to actually uh, focus the work. Uh, it still is just whatever kind of comes in through different angles. So I think some themes are helpful, but one question is, are they actually driving the overall agenda, not just the workshop selection? Um, and I'll stop there, thanks. Wout, then Amrita. Yes, uh, thank you, Carol. Um, Wout and Atris, observer. Um, I'm not going to say anything about topics because that is what the MAG is going to uh, decide on. I think what is already evident is the following. I've been to my first MAG, MAG meeting in 2014, and the discussion was always there should be less themes, uh, sub-themes, and we somehow wind up with more every time. I think there are two things I want to say on this. The first thing is that the less themes you have, the more people will drop out of the IGF because they will not be represented on that topic, so they will probably not come. And will you get more people if you have specific topics? And I don't think that is the case. Do I think it needs to be more specific? Yes, I do. But is it about having less themes or is it about being more focused? Because if we have like last year, 22 or 26 workshops and open fora, et cetera, on AI, the ones that I've been in were empty in rooms with 400 people could host. And I'm saying this for the third time, but I want to explain that despite it being a very good session content wise, there was nobody listening, not online and not in the room. So how can we change that? And that is by looking, in my opinion, the MAG looked at the proposals and then decides this is going to be the specific topic. And if you want to be in there, University A or Academia B or Government C, then you will have to work together to come up with a three hour session, but that's the only session you're going to have. And I think it's important to ask two questions up front. What is it that you want to solve? Because then you will get the messages that the IGF needs, in my opinion. So it's not about, in, in my view, only having three themes. You could have 20, as long as you know where you're going as IGF. And you can only do that by asking very specific questions in the proposal form. And then you have the focus that we are looking for. So thank you for your your attention. So basically it's like what Justin is saying, don't have any sub themes, just have questions. Please give a proposal and please list what you're trying to address or to solve and what it is. And then the mag decides which ones to select. And which ones to force to merge? Yes and then let people cooperate on perhaps a longer session that you would usually give them because you only have one session on the topic. Mm -hmm. Hi, Carol, could I speak now? I've been unmuted. Yes, I'm Rita. 
Thank you, Amrita, for the record, and thank you for allowing me to speak. Uh, as in, there are three things, and I'd come. I had something else planned to say, but if we keep the uh, if we do not have an overarching theme or uh, you know a strategic vision on what the IGF 2024 is, uh, it will be slightly difficult because not every workshop proposal uh, is of the same understanding of IGF. People come from different parts of the world, different stakeholder uh, communities, and they have different requirements from the internet or issues. Uh, related to internet governance and digital governance. So if you do not give something which is focused, as in this is what you want to achieve through the IGF, it would be slightly tricky. Um, that is one uh, point uh, out here. The other is, if this is a strategic year for IGF, as Carol, you mentioned, it is also uh, important to show what the IGF has done over the last decade uh, and more. Um, so, you know, how it has helped to, try, uh, you know, uh, for example, uh, come up with, uh, you know, placing the IGF strategically is important. For example, you know, the, uh, for example, um, the various uh, messages which has come out, how it is impacting countries or how the NRIs are working on it is important to showcase too. Um, it could be a, a specific track wherein you are doing it. Obviously, it's not going to be um, what the IGF has done, but you know, the impact the IGF has had in subtle ways needs to be showcased. And it should not be something which, uh, you know, for example, uh, a main session is doing or the NRI is doing perhaps a collaborative session of the different um, IGF uh, community would be good uh, so that it is strategically placed. Uh, now, many times, if you look at it, if there is an overarching theme and, um, you know, the main sessions, um, the NRIs may have one session, the MAG is having another, the, uh, the host is having a similar session, it would be good if it can be strategized and brought into one so that it is sharp. Now, another thing is, as Chris mentioned uh, and others did, um, you may have four, five, six uh, sub themes, but if it is focused and you are not repetitive, I don't think people will have an issue. They will understand where they want to go based upon their requirements. So uh, I think it's not just uh, having three things because certain things may be missed. Um, and because IGF is something like everyone comes there with different perspectives. Uh, so, uh, and it has been catering to most people. So I think uh, those considerations also need to be made. Thank you. OK, um, we're going to be ready to. So we're just going to have some ideas from the host country for you to model. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, uh, very, very interesting ideas that we, we have. Uh, our technical community um, sent me just now a couple of options. Uh, and I think that the idea behind it is more about um, looking to the big picture of IGF and how the IGF can contribute to the digital world. So the option, uh, the first option was our common digital future. So this is uh, option one, because we think that it's not a GDC, not an IGF, it's, that it's, it's a common future for digital. So this is this is a theme that was proposed. Uh, and again, if the focus will be on AI, the era of AI, it's, it's then a second option that our technical community propose. Uh, the third option is leaving toward unity. Uh, just make sure that everything is coming to uh, one problem, one platform, uh, the internet that we want concept on that side. Uh, option number four, um, mm -hmm. unleashing the potentials. And if that's focused on more of capability building and, and, and utilization of the internet, especially in the digital economy area. Uh, and the last one uh, is navigating digital frontiers. Uh, and this is a couple of options that the technical community in Saudi Arabia would like uh, the MAG to, to consider uh, during this discussion. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, we haven't forgotten the online um, hands. I just want to, to pop in at the, this point with um, 
And please keep note of, of the Secretariat trying to keep track of everything that's being said. So <clears throat> what I want to draw attention to is uh, the points that were brought up so far, like um, what are the significant challenges that people are facing? Um, last year, I spoke about a concept that, that's starting to grow a lot. And the, this concept is something called the triple bottom line. And what it speaks to is people, prosperity, and planet. Basically, that, that's what we people day to day, that's what they're interested. How I'm living, how well am I living? What's affecting me? And then um, they think about, well, how am I going to support myself? How is the country supporting itself? Where, what, what's it in for the future for my children in terms of prosperity, living well? There's no sense of living well if we don't have a planet to live on. I just bring that up to say that we, we really need to take it down to the people level. Um, we tend to... to um, go high with big topics, but we really need to be people focused. Um, and I think that is what a lot of you have been saying. That is what's going to attract um, people. Uh, they understand themselves. They understand how they live day to day. And that's what they want to know. They know I have a problem that my, I have a child that logs on and the next thing I know they're talking about things that are way out of their league. So how do I stop that? Simple, okay? Um, also, we earlier on, we had the shopping list. And Alyssa, I hope I, hope I don't mess up your shopping list. <laughs> um, so when you when you make a shopping list, you, a lot of times you go to the, to the grocery store and we forget the shopping list or we end up with two trolleys. But we, we need a focused shopping list. So first of all, we need to think of what are we making? What's for dinner tonight? What, what do I need? So we find out, we decide what we want for dinner. So next thing we need to know is what recipe, because there are different ways, um, different ways in which you can make the same meal. And um, just for a little comic relief, poor Shangatai doesn't know what macaroni and cheese is or macaroni pie. So I'll have to make him one one day. Um, but so we, you, we then need to consider the recipe. So that's the lower theme. So we know what, what we want for dinner. That's our overarching thing. But how do we make that dinner? That's my recipe. And then we make the list for the ingredients. Then we go to the shop and we try to stick to that list. And that's always a challenge when you get in the store sticking to that to that shopping list. And I think that's the same thing we're gonna have a challenge of. We have, we decided, this is my overall theme. This is how we're gonna get there. These are the things we're gonna get, need to get there. And that bottom line is what grows and grows and grows. So um, just mull on that, hope, hope I, um, you understood. So we're now on to Poncelet, then Chris. Thank you very much. Hold, hold on a sec for me, please, upon that. I think Chris Han was up, it dropped, and then he brought it back up. So he came up second on our list. So we'll just do Chris and then Ponsalet, unless Chris gives up gives up his spot. Uh, it, it's fine. I'll, well, hang on. I'll, I'll jump in because I'm going to be quite brief. So sorry, Ponsalet, I didn't mean to um, cut in there. Um, just to say, I think it's not even so much a balance, but we need to be both focused and inclusive. We can't let a quest for tighter focus mean that we're excluding groups or issues or, or discussions from the IGF, because that would be, I think, a very bad thing for the IGF. The IGF exists as a space in which there are a lot of different discussions going on in a lot of different modes and formats, some of them on the same issue but from different perspectives and that's not a bad thing so i think we need to be very careful if we start sort of going in with a, a sort of machete in the name of avoiding duplication um and cutting out certain kinds of discussions uh that that can be really valuable alongside other discussions of the same same topic 
Um, I, I do, I, I appreciate and, and like some of the, the host country proposals there um, in terms of a theme, but I do, I, I really want to come back and sorry, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to, this is going to be my theme for the week. I, I think when, what you're describing, Carol, there is, is sort of what's the bottom line. And I think the bottom line here is we're talking about an approach to a very wide range of problems and issues and challenges um, and opportunities, I should say, um, which is that the the IGF is a multi-stakeholder approach. Now, I, I, you know, we can say that every year in a th in a theme, and that would be a little repetitive and not necessarily what we want to do. But in this year, there are other reasons as well for it to be particularly pertinent, and for us to make that argument as effectively as possible. Um, so I, I think as a as a bottom line, as a unifying idea that allows us to still be inclusive of the diversity of challenges and opportunities that internet governance proposes or provides, including a multi referencing that multi-stakeholder approach is really key here. Thanks. Thank you, Chris. Um, Pansler? Yes, thank you very much um, for speaking here. I just um, um, want to us to look at it on um, when we look at the host country proposals on leading towards unity. We have to take um, a big consideration into the work of the NRIs. I think when we look at the NRIs, we are really seeing what is coming from the bottom to the top. And I think in framing moving um, forward, we have to look at what the NRIs are saying. And it's good to map out the various issues coming out from the NRIs. And you discover that you, you have a broader consensus and that automatically leads to um, leads towards um, one of um, number two on the host country proposal. So the voices of the NRIs are very important um, to me because if we are to really emphasize of what the our, um, the IGF really means at a multi-stakeholder level, um, grassroots importance um, means a lot. And those voices that comes from the um, national to the regional are very important. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bruna. Bruna. Can you hear me? No. Yeah. Uh, now I can. Okay, I can. now we can hear you. We can hear you. Thanks, Carol. It's just a muting in the room again. Um, very briefly as well, just to add a plus one to Chris's point. Um, when I saw the first suggestion about the common digital future, um, the first thing that jumped into my mind is that perhaps it can be rehashed into our multi-stakeholder digital future and be used as the 2024 slogan. I really think and agree with him that we need to bring up this very concise and strong message about multi-stakeholderism as a tool and as kind of the platform for achieving all we want. And then perhaps like in a lot of our discussions um, for this year's um, forum, we can also um, do some sort of deep dives into what multi-stakeholder means and also kind of reinstate to member states or anyone would have, that has any concerns about the model that it's not an attempt of taking governments or anyone else's decisions um, agency, but really the way in which we have been discussing things that allows for the cross-pollination and bringing in different expertise into the table. So I really think that um, if the host country can consider such thing um, as bringing in multi-stakeholder into the slogan for the year, that would be actually amazing and, and really relevant for us as, as it's a concise and, and kind of even like flirts a little bit with the GDC process and, and it's also relevant in that sense. Um, last but not least, I, I really feel also very strong about the point on inclusion and um, others like Tinia has also, have also brought it in the list, right? We do have a lot of other topics like um, human rights, inclusivity, multi-stakeholderism that are slightly more um, stronger in the in the people kind of side. So it will be very important for us um, when selecting the topics to have um, 
something, as you also said, Carol, that's people-centric and, and not people-centric in a high-level way, but people-centric in addressing the problems and the concerns from, from the internet users in general, right? Um, this is not just a technical forum. This is also a forum that historically has addressed a lot of um, human rights concerns, um, participation, representation, and things like that. So that will be very, very, very important. And last but not least, um, and the reason why I'm saying the inclusion point is that as everyone has been pointing out um, in the since this morning, um, this is a pivotal year for the IGF. So if we fail to include people in 2024 and 2025, the mandate fails as well. And we need to be very aware of that when we think about um, how are we bridging not just the youth, but many other groups into our discussions and have kind of like this extra um, concerns and, and extra like kind of um, stars in our minds um, these, these days and post it's about um, who are the actual relevant voices we're going to bring in into the debate. And, and my last point is that um, the IGF can really be used as the closing off the year space and recapping a lot of the processes. So I know we're not yet at the point of thinking about um, main sessions, but um, one thing that jumps into my mind is to host one main session at least with one voice from each of the 2024 processes. So um, someone from the leadership panel, CSTD, WISIS, Net Mundial, and the IGF as well to discuss what happened in 2024 and, and what were the new threats or what were the new conclusions um, the MS community has came across and governments have also came across um, throughout the year and so on. So sorry for taking too much time, but these were a couple of suggestions. Thank you, Bruna. We'll have Otis, then Dino. Hi, um, Otis, Mag member. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to um, to make a comment on the uh, host country proposals, <clears throat> especially on the third one, on uh, unleashing the potentials. I do like the third one, but I would add one more aspect of uh, limiting the risks. Because if you look at the thematic inputs, yes, they're about capacity building, um, digital economy and meaningful access, but they're also about uh, limiting risks in terms of ethics, governance, uh, cybersecurity and others. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to make that comment. Um, I would add unleashing the potentials and uh, limiting the risks. Go ahead, Dino. Thank you. So Dino Mag member, international organization. I just want to make a comment vis-a-vis -vis the conversation we are having, because my feeling is that we are bouncing from the method to the content. So from my point of view, the multi-stakeholders approach it's a given in anything the IGF does and will be doing simply because we are the IGF. But at the other side, when we're talking about the content, about the teams of vertical versus horizontal, then I was under the impression that this morning there was somehow a strong agreement vis-a-vis -vis the fact that for the sake of relevance, we wanted to make sure that whatever was going to be done at uh, this year IGF was going to be based on presenting and allowing solution to problems. So I think we need to somehow make a decision a priority. And that of course doesn't mean the problem that do not have a solution are less important. Maybe a compromise can be made vis-a-vis -vis giving space to session and teams that uh, will be based on proposal with solution and another part about problem that will not have proposal for solution, but only for debate and discussion. But I think that somehow this reminds me a conversation where the UN over the year, when it came from budget, we had different approach. One, a certain period where the trend was, we need to have result-based budgeting. So everything had to be based first and foremost on results, and then you work reverse engineering and identify the budget. 
Another period was activity-based budget. So the activities were leading the preparation of the budget. Then now finally, ultimately we got zero growth budget. So it's totally completely different domain. But so what I'm basically trying to say here, I think somehow it would be important to distinguish approach methodology from content and issue, and then really see whether we are all in agreement in prioritizing teams that are based on solution uh, and, and a session that they're going to showcase how problem is going to be addressed. Thank you. I'm just going to throw in a comment um, from the, the chat. Uh, <clears throat> we've had two persons talk about solutions to the problems. So sometimes, so how do you come up with an overarching title that covers all the problems. So that, that would be uh, a challenge. And I see Justin smiling. So you, maybe he has an answer, but not yet, Justin, not yet. <laughs> um, so it's then, it's Sal. Sal. Thank you. I would like to agree with uh, host countries' proposal. The first proposal, I will comment in the future. Because this year for IGF is a is not a common year. We are at the crossroad, GDC and WCS plus twenty review and our mandate in next maybe next twenty years or something. So let us say something strategic. I think we should look at the future because it's a very special year. I want to suggest the first one topic and also leave some when for the IGF forum, we leave some space for the strategic dialogue with the UN bodies or the policymakers for some strategic questions for the digital future. And also for the digital future, we can talk about the methodology like the multi-stakeholder with how we can proceed. You know, we are after the GEC in, in some future. So there are a lot of things, new things happening. We need more discussion. So it's not a common common year, just go proceed with that theme, but we need something to discuss the future, the whole picture. Thank you. Okay, just a reminder that this is an open consultation. So um, we want to hear from as many persons as possible. So raise your hand. Um, we're trying to keep track of the chat. That's a bit difficult. So don't be mic shy. So please raise your hand. So next we have um, Andrew. Sorry, okay, your video is uh, gone. There you go, we can see you. Oh, excellent. Uh, <laughs> sorry excellent. about that. Um, uh, yeah, just noting some of the, uh, sort of the, the the discussion about this being a pivotal year, about the importance of unleashing uh, the, the potential uh, and also the sort of multi-stakeholder nature uh, of the uh, IGF. Um, I think it would be fantastic if we could agree at, at the end of the IGF this, this year uh, that one of the key outputs would be um, a, a statement summarising perhaps some of the key points of agreement to send to uh, the, uh, the various SDOs, such as the ITF, which are very less diverse, uh, and certainly not multi-stakeholder in, in nature. And I think they would really benefit from getting at least some output from the IGF community as a sort of statement of intent that they that might inform their decision-making should they choose to, uh, to take those, uh, the, 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 those conclusions on board. But I think it would be worth trying at least to uh, give some direction for, into the, that, that much less diverse and un multi stakeholder uh, community. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yao, you have the mic, the floor. He went online. Is he still there? Are you still there? No. Okay, Justin. Um, thank you. Yeah, just um, on the themes, before we get to the themes, I just wanted to comment on something Bruno raised, which I thought was really interesting, and I don't want to lose it when we come to later discussions. This idea of a recap, 
as part of the IGF. I think it goes to this conversation this morning about coherence and helping kind of see the the signal through the noise. Um, something that helps take all these conversations that are happening this year. We're in the third to last week of the year at this IGF. I think having a recap event could be, actually be something that is really useful. And, and if it's good here, maybe it can be something that continues on. Um, on the, the proposed themes, um, I, I smiled when you asked because I have no idea how you tie process and outcomes and, you know, strategic and, you know, solutions. Like, uh, it's a lot to do in, you know, a few words. Um, I was just going to say I, I, I like this idea that was, I think, first raised by Chris and Bruna about um, our – common digital future, our multi-stakeholder digital future, I think that's really kind of captures what the IEGF is trying to do. I didn't want to lose, it's not up on the board anymore, but I think one of the proposals was this word unleashing. I really liked that word unleashing. I thought it was both forward leaning, it's also interesting and kind of grabs your attention. So I was going to suggest something like unleashing our multi-stakeholder digital future, which I think could kind of capture um, what what we've talked about and what we were trying to do through the IEGF. Thank you. Thank you, Alhaji. Hey, thank you. Um, this is Alhaji, uh, government. Um, uh, I, would, I would also go with the um, um, host suggestion, our common um, digital feature. Because when you look at this topic, it's, it's very loaded um, uh, because it can have um, uh, digital uh, multi stakeholderism in it. You look at it also, you can have AI in it. And you can look at it also, it has cybersecurity and even d data governance itself. So I think for me, our common digital feature actually could be a very good idea because actually it encompasses a lot of things that we're dealing with. Because if you look at the overall suggestions, um, the, essentially they're all dealing with AI. Um, they're all dealing with data governance and they're also dealing with digital corporations. And again, um, I think our this is for, for the future. And I think we need to start now. That's why I believe our common digital feature actually can be a very good topic and then we can have sub teams uh, you know along the lines of uh, ai of data governance uh, meaningful connectivity etc thank you um shafiq is that right okay thank you uh so the main challenge uh, we face now uh, is to address the diverse priorities of the regions uh, that suggested by stakeholders. And as shown by uh, Celine's uh, slide uh, later. So this will result uh, with hundreds of topics and sub themes. So my, I suggest that we concentrate on the common challenges and priorities that uh, we saw uh, on the slides. Uh, to be more specific, I write down some words like inclusion, resilience, connectivity, collaboration, security, trust. So these are comprehensive topics that can effectively address the diverse priorities across the region. Thank you. Go ahead, Talan. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, Talan Sultanas, a MAG member. Uh, greetings from Kyrgyzstan to everybody. Uh, I wanted to follow up on what Carol mentioned, that uh, the theme perhaps should be uh, thought-provoking and uh, that encourages discussions. So if we can put in the uh, title some questions that the moderators in the sessions can always refer to or have the speakers look into, uh, and the uh, other point I wanted to say is it seems that this year will be, uh, and as several um, speakers mentioned earlier, a key year for IGF. Perhaps a, it's a key year for the internet, and perhaps even it's a key year for uh, for the world with you know everything that's happening. Uh, and let me just focus on the internet. So it's AI. Is it a threat or it's or is it an opportunity? Uh, we have issues related to you know sovereign internets being built. Uh, what will do to the uh, uh, to the global internet? Uh, and so perhaps uh, we could say something like, uh, and it is uh, 41st year of the internet. 
uh, I looked at the internet's birthday in 1983. So what we've done in the past 40 years, in the past 20 years since VCs, so 40 years on, and today we are at the crossroads. So what will make it or break it? And I think that could provoke a lot of discussions uh, and, and it would make it very interesting for participants, I believe. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I'm just going to um, say what Octavia has said in the in the chat, if she doesn't mind. She says that, I'm sorry for using wrong pronoun. Octavia says, I think it's good to remember that people and organizations come to the IGF for many reasons. Not only to be preached to as a convert, to be challenged and inspired. So we really need to look for a title that challenges and inspires, that brings results. Okay, we have peace. Of the floor. We can't hear you. Your mic is still muted. Okay, what? Oh, there she goes. Okay. Thank you, Chair. No, Can you come closer to your mic? We, we could hardly hear you, please. I'm sorry about my uh, my background noise. I'm in a shared workplace, but thanks for the flow. I will be quick so that I don't disrupt the meeting. My name is Peace. I'm a MAG member, third year MAG member, civil society based in Uganda. And I want to show my support for a theme that will speak about um, stakeholderism. Because one, I believe that uh, multi stakeholderism is something that that not to still emphasize on what has been said already about how important this year is, uh, is the fact that it, it really includes everyone. And that's something that we, we, we are looking forward to, not to exclude, not to leave any, any stakeholder group behind. And I think we need to consider using the word um, stakeholderism and looking at the digital features. So it means that I am really in support of the first Uh, suggestion from the host country. Thank you, Chair. So thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm speaking from my capacity as a MAG member. So for record, the Ontario MAG member uh, government. Uh, when I think about our common future digital, I find that, that this is, might be a good for even sub theme rather than even the, 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 the overarching theme. Because if we talk about AI, the question is how AI is empowering our common digital future. If we talk about GDC, how the GDC is empowering our future digital. If we talk about multi-stakeholder, uh, how this is yeah, and empowering our digital future. So that might be uh, enable the storytelling that we talk about in the morning. So we can get it some some something around that will be much easier uh, for me. And this is again my personal my personal view on this uh, uh, on this topic. Thank you. Piece, is that a old hand or a new hand? Okay, good. All right, thank you very much for your valuable inputs. Um, the Secretariat has been trying to keep up with you valiantly. So we will um, send out this rough list to the MAG uh, tonight for you to review. 
and we continue the discussion tomorrow. Um, just after the break tomorrow. Okay, so we're we're on to the next agenda item, which is the updates from related internet governance initiatives and processes, followed by an open discussion on the possible IGF 2024 activities and collaborations. Thank you. So Celine, do you have the list? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, thank you very much. So the first person in the queue is um, Israel Rosales, Director of Partnerships and Internet Development, ISOC. And also, thank just you. a reminder, can you please keep it short and succinct? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chenjete, uh, for the floor for the opportunity of participating in this meeting. Uh, several factors are needed for a successful IEF meeting. Among them, the commitment from a host country and community participation are fundamental. We thank the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for offering to host this year's IEF meeting, and we respectfully invite more member states to collaborate with the IEF Secretariat to foster the conditions to host future editions of the IEF meetings. We also thank the IEF Secretariat for the efforts that are being undertaken to ensure that the IEF community can fully participate, participate in this year's meeting. While each IGF meeting is relevant, the 2024 meeting will occur at a crucial time for the internet community. Therefore, we thank the MAC members for their continued efforts in shaping the IEF program, including its intersessional activities. The selected themes and format sessions of this year's program will be invaluable in showing how the IEF has embodied the results of the multi-stakeholder consensus contained in the Tunis Agenda by adapting to the needs of its, of its stakeholders. The Internet Society reaffirms its commitment to continue collaborating as part of the IEF community to enhance the value of the forum as the main influential space for the Internet community. We also reaffirm our commitment to sharing the experiences of our programs for youth empowerment and for policymakers, which have successfully brought together different stakeholders and age groups to facilitate the generation of consensus. We respectfully suggest that MAC members consider privileging sessions formats with greater, greater and more effective interaction among stakeholders to ensure that discussions held at the IEF meetings are increasingly transferred to the sphere of action of each participant, both locally and regionally. This will be particularly true for sessions where remote participation is featured to allow on-site and remote participants to fully participate in each session's dynamics to the best degree possible. We thank you again for the opportunity to share our views and we wish you a successful meeting. Thank you very much, Israel. Um, the next speaker is uh, Renata Diwan from the Tech and Voice office. Renata, please.
We can't hear you at the moment. Let's just. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Please go okay. ahead. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for uh, un unmuting me. Um, good morning, good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, I'm joining you from the Secretary General's Envoy on Technology in New York. I wanted to share a short update on the Global Digital Compact and perhaps just with the idea of exploring how the IGF's work can contribute to that process, which has been underway for over a year now, and indeed how uh, your findings and an eventual Global Digital Compact might be uh, reflected in your meeting in December. So uh, very briefly, you'll recall the origins of the Global Digital Compact uh, in the Secretary General's Common Agenda Report, uh, really with a view to exploring what is the scope to strengthen digital cooperation um, globally, and with a particular focus on closing the digital divides, recognizing the progress that has been made up to date, but acknowledging that with 2.6 billion people still unconnected and with a world in which we must also tackle the, the harms as well as the benefits of digital technologies, there is more and more pressing uh, engagement and interest in, in many uh, sectors of the world, particularly amongst governments, to try to look at what is the scope to enhance that cooperation. I would also say that that cooperation has been turbocharged with the, uh, the development of ChatGPT to market and with the developments and discussions around AI governance. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, great. So maybe just to flag that where we are right now, well, we have a uh, the launched the informal consultations for the Global Digital Compact. Um, last year was spent exploring key themes, key issues, what we called deep dives over the course of uh, 2023. And these were open to all member states as well as to all stakeholders. And I think one thing that the co-facilitators of this Global Digital Compact, the permanent representatives of Sweden, and Zambia have tried to do throughout is really emphasize and provide for opportunities for multi stakeholder participation. Uh, at the end of those deep dives in September of last year, the co-facilitators circulated a letter really summarizing or outlining what they heard, what were the issues and particular themes that they heard in addition to the topics covered uh, over the course of the consultations. I'm happy to discuss those with you if there is any questions or, or uh, in time for discussion. Uh, where we are now, uh, in February of this uh, year, we've launched uh, the first of two informal consultations. One took place on the 12th and 13th of February, open to member states as well as to non-state stakeholders. And thank you to those IGF participants who, who joined those discussions. We have uh, the second and final informal consultations taking place this week on Thursday, the 29th of February with member states and on Friday, the 1st of March with all interested stakeholders. If you'd be interested in making a statement or just listening in or participating, all details are available on the UN OSET website, the Office of the Secretary General's Envoy and Technology. You can find details of how to register and you can also find recordings of, of the meetings if you want to uh, follow that in any way. The member state briefing will be broadcast live on UN Web TV. So that will be an opportunity to comment on a document that the co-facilitators have circulated, which is uh, a two-page outline of what the digital compact might look like. And it's really just they seeking, uh, they are seeking input on do they have the right structure elements uh, that they can go ahead and begin the drafting of that document. So I encourage uh, colleagues to listen in, to follow in and uh, participate if that is in your interest. Uh, you may also be interested in the written uh, input opportunity. There's an opportunity to submit written input by the 8th of March. And again, details are on uh, our website as to how to do that. The co-facilitators intend to circulate uh, a first draft, what they're calling a zero draft, by the end of March. And at that point, we go into the intergovernmental phase of these discussions and negotiations. Uh, there will be a first reading by member states, uh, a present formal presentation of the draft on the 5th of April. 
If a global digital compact is successfully negotiated, it will be annexed to the Summit of the Future Declaration and uh, addressed at the uh, Summit of the Future Ministerial Meeting in September of this year. Now, let me just flag that internet governance is one of the themes discussed in uh, the global digital compact process. I think there's strong voices in support of open, uh, accessible, free, safe, secure uh, internet. There are also strong calls for a whole internet for maintaining the multi-stakeholder nature of the internet governance. And I think strong calls for looking at how to address uh, inclusion, how to strengthen uh, processes for participation, and how to address uh, some of the key challenges that we've experienced during these COVID years around uh, harms and in particular child safety, uh, violence against women online have been key themes, as well as the opportunities to enhance digital learning and skills. So there is keen interest in the topic. The IGF's role and the crucial nature of its role has come up many times in the discussions. And I would anticipate that you could expect to see language to that end in the zero draft. Obviously, um, going forward, your meeting in December of this year will be an opportunity to reflect on that compact, assuming it's, it's successfully negotiated. And you'll have an opportunity to see how the IGF can contribute to advancing the commitments set out in that document. I'll just stop here, um, but very happy to take any questions, hear your thoughts and comments. And thanks again for your keen interest in the Global Digital Compact. Thank you very much, Renata. Does anybody in the room have questions? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you uh, for uh, uh, Cisco Sayal Shati representing the private sector in uh, the region here. Uh, thank you for providing us this update about the Summit of the Future and the Global Digital Compact. Uh, just a question, if the zero draft or let's say any subsequent version of drafts related to the Digital Compact uh, will be reviewed by member states, would we have other stakeholders the uh, ability to comment on it or provide input once it is there? That's my view. Is it okay if we take a couple of questions and then you can answer them just uh, to save on time? If there's any other questions, going once, twice. Okay, Renata, please, just the one. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much for that question. And indeed, it's a question that has been raised by many. Um, it is the case that the formal negotiations in the room will be intergovernmental, so the document will be negotiated by member states, but the co-facilitators are very keen to maintain the active uh, voices, participation and engagement of non-state stakeholders throughout this process. I think it's fair to say that the uh, zero draft will be accessible to, um, to all participants. Uh, whether informally or formally, uh, but the co-facilitators are exploring uh, options to, to circulate the draft. Um, and then I think the opportunities to offer perspectives and thoughts will be twofold. One is to continue to engage uh, with the co-facilitators. The co-facilitators have indicated that they will make themselves open to, um, for example, request for meetings, request to participate in events. So should uh, one or more groups be interested in, in, in offering views and thoughts, I think you would find the co-facilitators willing to try to meet with you and hear your perspectives. There'll also be opportunities, I think, via member states in ways that are fairly common here in the United Nations where uh, uh, non-state stakeholders contribute to states, uh, perspectives, views, engage with delegations and offer their thoughts and perspectives. 
Uh, and then finally, the co-facilitators are looking at opportunities to have regular updates and briefings of non-state stakeholders, uh, just so that there is transparency and communication on what's happening in the intergovernmental negotiations and key outcomes and issues. And details of that will be provided by the end of March when they circulate the draft. So I hope there will be opportunities to engage through a variety of fora. Thank you. Um, Abdul Rahim, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Adham Tari, MAG member uh, from government. Again, I'm, I'm speaking from my capacity as a MAG member. Um, I'm just wondering uh, if you can think or, or give us some, some light on terms of the implementation of GDC, you're thinking about implementation. We had a lot of discussions that uh, from IGF community that they are interested to become um, the implementation body or the implementation uh, uh, monitor uh, uh, but the, and we talk about IGF, we talk about the whole ecosystem, including all the interstitial work, including all the effort around the world, which is which is a ready system that that can can be. There. What is your thought on that? Um, and if there is anything that we shall, as IGF community, expect within IGDC, uh, with GDC in terms of uh, implementation. Thank you for that question. And indeed, I think somebody also put it into the chat line and uh, about imp question about implementation and monitoring. So uh, indeed, the question of implementation has come up um, uh, during the course of the discussions on the Global Digital Compact. There's been a variety of views expressed. Some have felt that the Global Digital Compact should be essentially a set of principles um, for that member state should agree and shouldn't really go beyond um, a set of principles. Other views that have been expressed uh, clearly call for a document and a compact that should uh, include practical commitments, actions, um, and for some even resourcing to really make tangible and to make it go beyond a set of declarations, but to chart the way for priority areas of collaboration by the international community around digital technologies. Um, as part of that call, there's an emphasis on, then there needs to be accountable follow-up and monitoring uh, and engagement. So I think the co-facilitators are still soliciting views on, on, on that question indeed, but I think they've highlighted a couple of um, overall directions that they've heard. The first is that there is a need to monitor and review and follow up on any agreements in the compact. Two, they've also heard that there's a strong desire to build on existing mechanisms and not to create new mechanisms. Uh, so therein lies an important role for IGF. Uh, three, they are underscoring the importance of multi-stakeholder implementation and very keen that even if the document is intergovernmentally negotiated, its implementation, just as its, its inspiration and its content reflects the, the multi-stakeholder voices, the diversity of, of, and the variety of sectors involved in digital cooperation. And fourth, I think there's an emphasis on looking at partnerships and in particular, uh, pri public-private partnerships, uh, South-South partnerships, triangular partnerships to sort of seek how can you might mobilize some of these, these essential partnerships uh, to address goals such as universal connectivity or uh, significant investments in capacity building. And so I think you will have to, uh, emphasis on that. And in that respect, then, the role of the IGF, uh, I don't think it's for uh, anyone other than yourselves to decide on the role of the IGF, but they would certainly, I think, seek to make a call for the IGF to reinforce efforts or any commitments made in the space of internet governance. So, for example, if there was a commitment to preserve the whole free uh, non-fragmented nature of the internet, then an immediate question would that would follow is what is the role of the IGF in that process and how can the IGF contribute to that effort? Um, so that's an example uh, that of, of the sorts of areas of commitments. And then timing wise, I think in September, um, the document will be, if it's agreed, endorsed. And there may be some events around the summit in September, but as you know and are well aware, there are many themes on, on, uh, up for discussion at the summit uh, on the future. 
Um, but I think we're having, we have a great opportunity to take forward practical implementation discussions through the WISIS plus 20 review that takes place or that has already started, but that will reach its culmination uh, in 2025. So I think that puts particular emphasis on seeing this as a stage as we go forward. You're meeting in December and into the WISIS plus 20 uh, formal process uh, and finalization in, in 2025. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Renata. Um, if there's no other questions, we'll go to the next speaker. Okay, no questions. Thank you, Renata. Uh, the next speaker is uh, Marcus Kuma, Director of Knowledge Diplo Foundation. Uh, not quite. I'm Senior Policy Advisor to the Diplo Foundation. <laughs> <laughs> Mistakes do happen. <laughs> Allow me to correct it. Anyway, I briefly mentioned this morning the Diplo project uh, to data mine the IGF. Uh, I briefly introduced it in Kyoto. Now we do have a project document and the title of the uh, initiative is Ask the IGF, uh, IGF Knowledge for the Digital Future. It will be based on hybrid human and artificial intelligence and draws in the vast IGF knowledge ecology. The aim is to inform and shape ongoing discussions on digital governance. And this is obviously highly relevant in the light of ongoing GDC and WISIS plus 20 processes. The Ask IGF will have various deliverables. Inter alia, it will provide an IGF knowledge database. It will provide knowledge graphs, and the website, Ask IGF website, will have questions and uh, chat will provide for questions and chat sessions. And the application programming interface will provide connections to other similar platforms and relevant platforms. It is a work in progress. The timetable sees uh, that until September, the Ask IGF model should be developed, and then between September and November, uh, we uh, tested and adjusted the, the platform, and the platform will be launched as a pilot version at the IGF 2024. Right now, we're in the phase of outreach. Anyone who is interested can join as a partner of the project team, and we are also looking for sponsors as Obviously, uh, it will be a fairly expensive uh, project. If anyone is interested, you can ask me how to join. It's also up the, on the website. Kusai Alshati, who is in this room, is a co-lead of the project. And with that, I have concluded. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Marcus. Um, Next, we have Yu Ping Chan, Head of Digital Partnerships and Engagement, UNDP. And congratulations. Thank you so much, Chen Katai. I will be brief and make four key points. One, the United Nations Development Program is the UN's development agency on the ground in over 170 countries. As countries accelerate their digital transformation efforts, it is urgent to support them in effectively governing digital technologies so that the benefits can be shared by all. UNDP supports countries to put in place strategies, policies, and institutions that promote an inclusive, people-centered, and rights-based approach to digital development this is the heart of our approach to digital. Two, we believe that the consensus reached last year by the G20 on the concept and approach of digital public infrastructure, DPI, was extremely important. UNDP is now working with a community of other organizations, stakeholders, and member states to promote safe, inclusive, and responsible DPI. And here, like the rest of our work on digital, we believe in and reaffirm the importance of a multi-stakeholder approach. Three, and we have said this in the recent GDC consultations, UNDP urgently calls for accelerating and scaling up digital capacity building, especially in the global south. This is the most frequent request UNDP receives from our partner countries in relation to digitalization. We already support over 120 countries in areas like inclusive digital strategies, DPI, AI and capacity building programs, and we are ready to scale up that work. Finally, I also want to draw colleagues' attention to the statement that UNDP made last week at the GDC consultations on behalf of the UN's interagency mechanism on ICTs, the UNGIS. 
I think this would be of interest to colleagues and friends here, given your discussions about the IGF, GDC, and ongoing processes. Last week, Angus stressed that we should consider the linkages between the WISIS process and the Summit of the Future and the GDC, including how WISIS could be leveraged to translate the principles and outcomes agreed to in the GDC into concrete and actionable impact. We specifically mentioned the role played by the IGF and also said that for next year's WISIS Plus 20 review, UN agencies were ready to support the updating of WISIS and its action lines, processes, structures, and work streams. I thank you for this time and wish you all the best in your deliberations. Thank you, Yuping, and thank you as well for keeping in time. Wonderful. Um, the next person on the list is Octavian Safronsky, Coordinator, Digital Development and Governance Department, uh, Council of Europe. If... Um. Hello, everyone. Greetings from uh, Strasbourg, the human rights capital of Europe. I will provide you with the Council of Europe views on the um, upcoming um, IGF debate. Uh, first of all, I would like to inform you about the works of the Council of Europe Committee on Artificial Intelligence, which is currently in the process of finalizing the negotiations of a framework convention on artificial intelligence, human rights, democracy and the rule of law. This treaty, which in addition to European states and the European Union, is also being elaborated by countries like Argentina, Australia, Canada, Costa Rica, Israel, Japan, Mexico, Peru, Uruguay, and the United States of America, is open to non-Council of Europe states and will be the first global legally binding instrument on artificial intelligence. In addition to the Framework Convention, the um, Committee on Artificial Intelligence is also developing a methodology for the risk and impact assessment of AI system called Huderia. The Council of Europe is very keen on using the IGF as a platform for presenting both instruments likely uh, for the first time to its large global audience and to raise awareness about its activities in the field of artificial intelligence, human rights, democracy, and the rule of law. Also, uh, in the field of data protection, it is extremely important for us that the main concepts and definitions regarding privacy and data protection are commonly understood among internet governance community. The next IGF could be a great opportunity to discuss some of these definitions that are defined in Council of Europe instruments and used by several countries already. And whether they are commonly understood the same way in an internet governance setting. To define who is a data subject on the internet, who is the data controller and processor, um, can have significant impact also on public policy. And finally, on media freedom. Hate speech, hate crime, and disinformation online flourish during the barrage of crisis the world faces. This calls for comprehensive legal and non-legal measures and multi-stakeholder cooperation involving those most at risk of becoming targets. The Council of Europe recent study on preventing and combating hate speech and in times of crisis spells out opportunities to address and prepare for future crises together with the IGF community. While um, artificial intelligence systems offer great perspectives, they also represent important risks for equality, including gender equality. This was analyzed together with the legal responses that could be offered to combat these risks in the recent study on the impact of artificial intelligence systems, their potential for promoting equality, including gender equality, and the risks they may cause in relation to non-discrimination. The Council of Europe is developing new recommendations for states in this area. The IGF is a key platform to collect inputs for this process. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much, Octavian. Um, next, we have uh, Maria Leza from UNESCO. Okay. Um... 
Oh, thank you very much. Uh, well, thank you, Shengetai, uh, IGF Secretariat. Uh, thank you, Carol, our MAG chair, and, uh, you know, and uh, Abdullahan, our host, uh, for this opportunity. I want to briefly uh, give you an update on four items that are, you know, um, the latest uh, developments here at UNESCO in regards to uh, digital uh, um, ecosystems. First um, is that uh, you may recall that last year we had, uh, uh, no, sorry, in 2022, we uh, started the process of uh, of uh, consultations on a uh, guidelines for the regulation of internet platforms uh, where through an internet for trust, uh, we received about 10,000 comments from 132 countries throughout the, an entire year of consultation. And last year, at the end of the year, uh, through a, a a press conference, we launched uh, these guidelines. We're now starting the implementation process. Uh, UNESCO has been uh, designated as a G20 knowledge partner on information integrity on the basis of these guidelines. And we have also a group of, uh, of uh, think tanks that will be supporting uh, 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 the advancement of, uh, of uh, these issues uh, of the guidelines, the implementation around the world. Um, we also started the review of uh, the internet uh, universality indicators, uh, the Rome X framework, our principles, uh, the four principles we have for internet development, which are human rights based, uh, open to all, accessible by all, most stakeholder led. And we wish to uh, invite everybody to contribute to this process. Um, we are expanding the work on civil servants capacity development. We recently have uh, not only uh, um, continues to expand the MOOCs that we have for judiciary, uh, but also uh, started the process with the legislation, uh, legislative with parliaments uh, in, in partnership with the IPU. Uh, so that we can also provide uh, uh, capacity development on artificial intelligence for these regulators. And finally, just to say that uh, um, uh, on the 42nd uh, General Conference of UNESCO, uh, our, our member states mandated us to do a forward-looking review of uh, the WISIS process and uh, to propose a new vision for that, uh, you know, and uh, we start this process of consultation on the 6th of March. We invite everyone to join and uh, we intend to carry out a conference um, in February 2025 uh, to further this process. Let me stop here and thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, next we have, have um, Octavia Galuzzi. Uh, or Audran McCarthy, UNICRI. Hi, hello everyone. Thanks to the chair, IGF organizers, and all stakeholders present today. My name is um, Otavia and I work as associate expert at UNICRI. Um, the UNICRI is the United Nations Interregional Crime and Justice Research Institute. And it, it is a specialized UN research and training institute focusing on crime prevention, criminal justice, security, and the rule of law. One of UNICRI's strategic priorities is promoting responsible use of new and emerging technologies to address crime and exploitation. Um, today, I would, uh, I would outline two related internet governance initiatives by UNICRI, which I believe are interconnected with the results of the IGF 2024 call for thematic inputs, such as AI and cybersecurity, and I would like to invite IGF stakeholders to participate in any of these existing and future activities. Firstly, through its Center for Artificial Intelligence and Robotics, UNICRI strives to enhance understanding of the risk-benefit duality of artificial intelligence. The Center has developed the Toolkit for Responsible AI Innovation Law Enforcement in collaboration with Interpol Innovation Center. Additionally, UNICRI Center has led the AI for Safer Children initiative aimed to take up child sexual exploitation and abuse online through the exploration of new technological solutions, specifically AI. Secondly, UNICRI works towards promoting cybersecurity and trust by conducting research and projects aimed to prevent and counter cyber attacks, reduce cyber conflicts, and foster cybersecurity capacity building. In collaboration with UNOCT, UNICRI will publish a research report on terrorism on the dark web and the role of cybercrime as a service. And it is developing a research project on the cyber-enabled threats posed by viral and extremist movements. Finally, following the publication of the report SDG 16 through a digital lens, UNICRI first is conducting research aimed at empowering victims of cybercrime and ensuring access to justice in the digital age with a specific focus on the African continent. 
I would like to conclude saying that we look forward to collaborating with any IGF stakeholders on these important issues to ensure our work is inclusive, effective, and it embraces the SDG related to peace, justice, and strong institutions to leave no one behind. Thanks for your time and attention today. Uh, thank you very much. Um, next, we have Dino. Uh, I have few, very few slides. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much for uh, showing on the screen. Can you make it bigger? Thank you. So uh, I'm going to briefly uh, present some of the initiative taking place within the international organization. And uh, I'm going to speak in, in a dual role as, a, of course, Chief Information Officer of the UN Pension Fund, but also especially as a representative of the digital technology network that I alluded to this morning, basically this uh, mini uh, IGF that we have within the United Nations. Um, so the first slide, uh, please, next slide. So three initiatives. The first one is about the digital technology network and demonstrate how the terms of reference of the digital technology network maps very, very much with the teams and the priorities identified by the IGF. Next slide. Next. The second one is about this initiative to create a UN digital identity for all the UN staff around the world. And this is now being piloted by a subgroup of UN entities, the UN Secretariat, UNDP, the United Nations International Computing Center, UNICEF, the UN Pension Fund, and the World Food Program. And the third initiative is about the contribution that the UN Pension Fund this year for the first year is going to uh, provide to the, the WISIS plus 20 reform at the high level panel event that uh, is uh, planned to take place in Geneva at the end of May. Next slide. So here I structure my presentation in three columns. On the first column on the left, I uh, extracted the main themes for this year that were identified by the IGF and on which this morning we saw the result of the survey. On the central column, I identify an extract of the terms of reference of the CBDTN. And the third, the third column is the opportunity. Basically, we are looking for speakers. We are looking to share best practices and lessons learned also with the IGF members on best practices, on presentation, on all those topics. Uh, with some different wordings, you can see that uh, we have pretty much a good alignment between teams. Next slide. The second initiative is, again, mapping the IGF teams on cybersecurity and trust, emerging technology, innovation, rights and freedom, and so forth and so on. We launch, uh, with the approval of the Chief Executive Board of the United Nations, the UN Digital ID, that is the new logo that has been approved. And here, there are opportunities to liaise with us, and again, share best practices, share lessons learned on data privacy, cybersecurity, emerging technology, ethical consideration, and operational support of a um, uh, digital identity-based solution. Next slide, the last one. And here is, again, vis-a-vis -vis the mandate of the IGF as a, uh, as a result of the WC's um, initiative, we are going to provide an input to the special track on ICTs and older person. And here we are going to create a session and invite uh, those who are interested to present and discuss and showcase the use of uh, ICT and a digital initiative in uh, this specific subdomain. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tina. Our next speaker is Giacomo Percy Paoli from the United Nations Institute for Disarmament Research.
Hello, good afternoon. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity to, to speak today. Um, I will use uh, these two minutes that have been allocated to uh, really bring to your attention our upcoming um, Cyber Stability Conference. This is one of Unidir's annual flagship events. Uh, this year, it will take place in New York and online this Thursday and Friday, so 29th of February and 1st of March. Um, the theme of this year is cyber threats. So we will be using our conference to really dig a little bit deeper into different aspects that relate to um, threats to the digital domain. Technology is one of the aspects, and in particular, we will be reflecting on how AI is uh, potentially uh, uh, changing uh, many aspects related to, to cybersecurity. We will then have a, a deeper dive that focuses on two specific type of attacks, so ransomware and supply chain security attacks. And the last part of the conference will be instead dedicated to uh, exploring how the uh, landscape of cyber threat actors is evolving. Uh, who are they? How, how different are they? What kind of different purposes and motives do they bring uh, to the table? This whole conference is meant to support the uh, multilateral uh, diplomatic community that next week uh, will be meeting in New York for the seventh session of the open-ended working group on information and communication technologies. And we've chosen the topic of threats and more specifically the three sub-themes that I just presented because over 20, in 2023 alone, over a hundred statements were made by governments and uh, uh, civil society representatives highlighting the importance of really trying to get a better understanding of what these threats are. So if you haven't registered already, uh, you can do so and I will put it in the chat on our website, unidear.org forward slash CS24. If you're in New York, please come in person. If you're not in New York, you can join online. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next is uh, Pritam Malo from the International Telecommunication Union. Pritam. Thank you, Changitai. Sorry, I was trying to unmute myself. Uh, so uh, let me start by reiterating ITU's full support for the business process. You know, ITU remains a strong supporter of IGF and will continue to actively participate in the 2024 edition in Riyadh. Uh, over two decades, business has grown into a large uh, multi-stakeholder global community, uh, not only at the international level, but also as a grassroots movement, and it continues to expand with every passing year. And the review process, obviously, is an opportunity for us to take stock you know, how, on how to best leverage uh, the WISIS uh, uh, process going forward and how it should adapt further uh, to take into consideration new and emerging digital challenges and opportunities. Uh, and also, it's very important to consider how the different processes complement each other. This is GDC, Summit of the Future. So here, ITU, UNESCO, UNDP, the CSTD, uh, UNDESA, we are collaborating in a uh, joint preparatory process uh, for the VISIS Plus 20 review to leverage our complementarities and our duplication. And the VISIS principles and action lines continue to serve as a main reference point for global uh, digital discussions. For example, in the recent Havana Declaration adopted at the G77 Summit in September, uh, it encouraged close correspondence between the business process and other outcomes of other intergovernmental processes, including the GDC and the Summit of the Future. So uh, ITU will co-host the Business Plus 20 uh, Forum high-level event together with the Swiss Confederation. This will be co-organized by ITU, UNESCO, UNDP, and UNCTAD. And please mark your calendars 27 to 31st of May. Uh, in Geneva, uh, and this high-level event will provide a platform for multi-stakeholder discussions, taking stock of achievements, key trends, challenges, opportunities since the Geneva Plan of Action. Uh, the ITU's AI for Good Summit will also take place at the same time, uh, in the same week, 30 to 31st of May, with an AI Governance Day on 29th. And having the Visus Forum and the AI for Good in the same week was intentional because it brings the development and the AI communities together, you know, allowing for a holistic conversation on emerging technologies, uh, uh, you know, uh, for the use of development. Uh, it also shows the relevance, flexibility, and adaptability of the business principles to uh, new topics such as AI. Uh, thank you again for the opportunity to intervene. Um, uh, good luck with the uh, planning. Thanks. 
Thank you, Peter. Our uh, next speaker is um, Paul Kitinji from the GIZ. We can go straight to Ariana from OECD. Yes, thank you. Good afternoon to all. I would like to start by thanking the host country and the IGF Secretariat for this opportunity to participate in this first uh, open consultation of 2024. Uh, today, I will provide a brief update on the activities and projects that the OECD and more specifically the Digital Policy Committee is currently working on and that could be of interest of the IGF community. The first item I would like to bring your attention to is the update of the OECD definition of an AI system included in the OECD recommendation on artificial intelligence. In November 2023, OECD members agree on the update of this definition with the aim to ensure that it continues to be technically accurate and reflect more important technological developments, including with respect to our uh, generative AI as well as to ensure broad alignment on the definitions of AI system in several ongoing international processes in jurisdictions and organizations that are seeking to improve governance of AI. I will be sharing more detailed information of this update on the chat. Um, secondly, I would like to inform you that the OECD is organizing a closed door dialogue on artificial intelligence with the African Union with the support of the UK. This dialogue will take place next week and it aims to facilitate knowledge sharing, promoting discussions on AI governance, fostering collaboration and addressing shared challenges. Also in April, the recently established uh, Global Forum on Technology will host an event called Building Our Biofuture, Policy Issues and Opportunities for Next Generation Biotechnologies. This will be a day long event that will take, uh, will take a deep deep uh, into the promise of next generation biotechnologies, the associated policy challenges and the opportunities to address this. We're also very pleased to announce the forthcoming launch of the first volume of our flagship uh, publication, the Digital Economy Outlook 2024 DEO. Uh, this publication examines trends and analyzes emerging opportunities and challenges in the digital economy. The 2024 edition will include four chapters on topics such as the growth outlook of the ICT sector, artificial intelligence, virtual reality, and digital technology diffusion and data. It will also include two spotlight articles on, on the next generation networks and connectivity and mental health and digital, and digital environments. The first chapter of the DO 2024 will be, will be published on the 3rd May and we'll be happy to share it with the IGF community as soon as it's available. Last but not least, we're also currently working in the establishment of an expert community on data free flow we trust. This informal multi-stakeholder expert group has the objective of advancing practical evidence-based projects from a multidisciplinary perspective to inform the work of the OECD on digital policy. As you can see, most of these items are undergoing activities, so we will make sure to give you more information as soon as we have more outcomes of these projects and events. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to participate, and I remain available for any comments or questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ariana. Um, Paul, are you there from GIZ? No? Okay. Um, then we're going to go to Makta Sek, ECA. Nope. Okay. Then the last, but definitely not least, Timia Suto, ICC basis. Thank you very much, Tangatai. Thank you, uh, Chair, for giving me the floor to speak uh, again and for the last time in this meeting uh, to share a few updates on the work of the International Chamber of Commerce um, and our business action to support the Information Society Initiative. As you know, ICC is the institutional representative of more than 45 million companies in over 100 countries. Through a unique mix of advocacy, solutions, and standard setting, we promote international trade, responsible business conduct, and a global approach to regulation. Our member includes many of the world's leading companies, SMEs, business associations, and local chambers of commerce. ICC's Global Digital Economy Commission works to advance the global development of the digital economy and enable the continued growth of technologies and business models that underpin the digital economy through private sector policy leadership, regulatory advocacy, and promotion of best practices. 
Currently, the Commission's main focus areas are connectivity, cybersecurity, and data governance issues. So let me share a few highlights of our recent work, and I invite you all to get in touch if you'd like to collaborate on any of this or if you'd just like to find out more about our activities. On connectivity, last year we launched a campaign, which we also brought to the IGF in Kyoto, that aims to showcase the investment, innovation, and capacity building projects by the private companies to deliver digital infrastructure, services, and skills, and enable digitalization for people, planet, and prosperity. This campaign is complemented by a repository of case studies that are available for consultation and use on our website. On cybersecurity, we work to contribute to international collaboration efforts to fight cybercrime and strengthen the resilience of the global cyber ecosystem. We released a number of reports in the past years that speak to these issues and have been actively engaging to bring private sector insight to intergovernmental discussions, both on cybercrime and cybersecurity, and also highlighting the importance of meaningful multi-stakeholder engagement in these processes. On data governance, we work to co-create policy frameworks that enable trust in, the, in data as a driver of economic growth and social development. And I'd like to bring to your attention a report that we launched at IGF Kyoto that talks about these issues. Um, and last but not least, uh, if I have 20 more seconds, I just want to highlight that, as you know, um, the BASIS initiative is our main advocacy vehicle to mobilize business input to contribute to global conversations on internet governance matters. And through this, we engage in processes like the GDC, the Pact for the Future, and the 20 year review of the WISIS process. Um, and we also um, emphasize business engagement and input into the IGF. And those of you who follow these processes have seen me and my colleagues engaging in, in all of this um, and also uh, strongly advocating for the IGF um, and, and the continuation of its mandate in all of these processes. So that's all I can fit in, in a bit more than two minutes uh, at your disposal for, for chatting uh, to anybody who's interested in this later on. Thank you very much, Timea. And then lastly, we will have Rosalind Kenny Birch, UK government. Mm -hmm. That would be great, yes. Mm -hmm. Um, so just to say, um, Roz Kenny Birch representing um, the United Kingdom government um, and just a really big thank you to colleagues for the opportunity to speak with you today and thank you to Saudi Arabia for hosting us here in Riyadh this week. Um, my intervention will touch on uh, three main points, um, which I think are broadly aligned with a lot of the comments that have come out of today's productive conversation. Um, one is on the importance of inclusivity. The IGF serves to bring together a wide range of people from various stakeholder groups as equals to discuss digital public policy issues. This is the criteria upon which the success of each IGF is measured. In 2024, as we look towards WISIS plus 20, it is more important than ever that as a community, civil society, businesses, and governments, we ensure we are working together to make the 2024 IGF fully inclusive. It is only by gathering a diverse array of views across regions, experiences, and backgrounds that we can develop a vision for the future of the internet that will be fit to address the challenges, but also harness the opportunities that new digital technologies and societal changes provide us with. Secondly, we've talked a lot today about a focused agenda, and this will be my second main point. The MAG has a tremendous responsibility to develop a program and format for the IGF that will deliver on the principle of inclusivity, and this means cultivating a focused agenda, but also thinking creatively about how the IGF can serve as an incubator for discussion about the long-term UN processes that will have consequences across the digital agenda the upcoming WISIS Plus 20 review process, and the linked sustainable development goals. The IGF serves as a place to bring people together to discuss and contribute inputs into these processes. And the MAG should think creatively about how the important space the IGF provides for discussion can be meaningfully leveraged. The MAG could 
the MAG should consider the convening role the IGF played and is playing as part of the global digital compact process, for example, and the lessons learned from this in terms of impact. In other words, the IGF needs to provide a space to look at lessons from the GDC negotiations ahead of the WISIS process negotiations next year. The MAG should also consider that internet governance is at the heart of the IGF's mandate and function. It is excellent to see topics on emerging trends and technologies like AI be included, but we should not lose sight of issues at the core of internet governance, such as fragmentation. Such topics should remain a core focus of the IGF agenda. Finally, I wanted to emphasize the important role that the IGF's NRIs play. The IGF's over 150 national and regional initiatives are a core tenant of the IGF. We have discussed for years the importance of these initiatives and how they can be better linked up to the annual global IGF. This year, we should act to ensure these NRIs are a central component of the IGF agenda, building beyond the NRI's main session. NRI's role in highlighting the importance of renewing the mandate of the IGF through the WISIS plus 20 process is particularly pertinent. Encouraging NRI regional meetings and showcases or networking spaces throughout the week of the IGF could be one potential option. Equally, the publication of an NRI's calendar on the IGF website located on the homepage could raise awareness of national and regional IGFs taking place in various regions and encourage, encourage further participation by global IGF community members in regional spaces. Since the first IGF in 2006, the forum has evolved and strengthened. The introduction of a youth track, the growth of the NRIs, and the development of the leadership panel are all positive steps. We must recognize just how far the IGF has come and celebrate this. Now, with 2025 on the horizon, the IGF is entering a new phase. This moment is an excellent opportunity to build on the IGF's solid foundation and put forward a compelling vision for the role it can play in the future. Thank you so much, and I look forward to engaging with colleagues throughout this week. Thank you, Rosalind. Um, now, it's open to questions. If anybody's got any questions to any of the uh, previous speakers who are still online or in the room, please feel free to ask. And I'll just check online. And I'll give it a six. OK, thank you. <laughs> I'll make your afternoon, uh, Changada. Yes. So my question here, we heard a lot about a um, lot of initiatives, projects, programs from different UN agencies and uh, entities. Is there any mechanism to align these initiatives, to align these efforts together? Uh, is there any I mean, we are all aligned in um, our aim for better internet governance and talking about um, public policy issues um, on the internet and or even digital, I should say, not just on the internet, but digital issues. So um, all of us do cooperate and the value of the session is for them to um, to tell or to update the um, participants of this meeting on what they're doing. And as, as you heard, some of them are also calling for people to collaborate with. So, um, so once they've done that, you individually can, and also the idea of secretariat can as well. So that is the value of this. And... Um, I would say yes. I mean, we are aligned. It's a natural alignment, so to speak. I don't know if anybody else has anything to add on that. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. uh, so thank you. Thank you, Hirkzai. Thank you for all the speakers. Um, incredible people, incredible projects. Um, what strikes my mind is, is that uh, we, we listen to, uh, for example, the ITU with a strong support for renewal of, of, of IGF. 
uh, we listened to the GDC uh, uh, office and, and uh, the, the Tech Envoy office, and we, we have direct answers for a lot of collaboration opportunity. And I'm, 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 that struck me again about communication. Uh, I think that we, we are not even, uh, not within only our community, but with other stakeholders, probably we need to help to increase um, this communication. And, and in fact, we brought this to the leadership uh, panel. Uh, and now with the, with the uh, group A, I think there is a lot of work need to be done on that side in terms of outreach uh, and, 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 and getting an answer for this question instead of, uh, debated within our community without without a real involvement of the stakeholder that we heard from them directly about what they are thinking about about some issues for our community. So I think that probably uh, encourage you if there is there is uh, uh, any um, more communication needed. Uh, now we have the leadership group A. Uh, I think they are very excited. The number of, of leadership members on that group is increased. Uh, but we, we want to make sure that. So this is just a comment that uh, comes out of these incredible discussions of this incredible projects. If there aren't any other questions online. Ah, yes, Giacomo. Yes, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. So we're very happy to hear all this um, initiative that has been list, uh, listed by the participants that took the floor before. I think that the most interesting path was what was mentioned by Pritam Malur from ITU. He said clearly that um, uh, he see that there is room for developing uh, possible synergies and interaction between the various initiatives. This is something that uh, we have asked for many years. Now that uh, seems that all the planets are aligned, um, my question is to the leadership panel, to the MAG, uh, won't we as IGF make proposal of this kind of synergies saying what can be done mostly within the IGF, what can be done mostly more efficiently within WSIS and within other fora that are uh, all working for the same scope? Uh, can we expect that there would be some initiative on this direction? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Giacomo. And another six count, and then I'll hand it back to the chair. Yes, Walt. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Shintai. Um Just a food for thought. We have been discussing the Global Digital Compact and, and overviewing it as IGF. But how are we going to organize ourselves and where are we going to find the funding to do so? Because we can bring in all these, like Giacomo says, align ourselves with the ITU, with others. But there are people who have, need to do the work. And the four of you in the Secretariat are not going to do it, I'm afraid. So who is going to do it? And how do we organize that? And where does the funding come from? And I think that is a very important question because we want the IGF to be more relevant. We heard that also this morning. So to do that, we need, as IGF community, the funding to do so. So I think that that's a call to organizations to step up the game here, if this is what we want to do. Uh, thanks, Ross. Okay, back to the chair. And thank you very much to those organizations that took the time. Uh, thank you. So there's a person amongst us who decided that they were going to have a destination celebration for their birthday. So everybody, let's wish Anja a happy birthday. Let's flood the chat with a happy birthday to Anja. Sing. <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Somebody yeah. said they were going to sing. I, I know a mic member said they were going to sing. I'm not Where's the sure. band? Where's the band? Where's the IGF <laughs> band? Come on. <laughs> so thank you for inviting us to this party, Adja. <laughs> Great. Okay.
Okay, so I have the the task of trying to to wrap up and to see whether or not we met the objectives for today. I first of all, I'm going to give everybody a big, big hand clap. Um, somebody owes me a book because I've run out of pages for for today. So if we looked at look at our agenda, we had some expected outputs. So I'll use that as my guideline. Um, the first one was to understand the IGF 2024 strategic objectives, including potential improvements to the IGF 24, 2024 procedures and um, the programs. So we, we, we had a look at um, a lot at what we need to do to, to improve. Um, but looking at it, you know, these are some of the things that we said last year, words like focus. So we thought that we focused last year, but it seems like we have to, to revisit that. Another term um, word that came up a lot, which we spoke about last year was communication. Um, so what are we gonna do? This has to be an action year. Uh, something I think is, I, is a bit new. Um, last year we spoke about measurements and monitoring in terms of the GDC. But we also need to consider when we talk about the IGF strategy into the future, how are we going to measure ourselves? How are we going to monitor ourselves? Uh, the next um, objective was to understand what could be the themes for the IGF um, 2024. So we had um, five um, suggestions from, from the host, but I think what people or what resonated most with, with persons were the words like future and unleashing. Um, I had a conversation or I was listening to a conversation the other day and the person asked, are you a noun or a verb? Is the IGF just a noun or a verb? A noun is just a, just a person, place or thing. Whereas a verb is, it's taking action. So the IGF needs to decide are we just gonna be a noun to everybody? Or are we gonna be a verb? So with that in mind, we have um, words like unleashing, that's action. Leaping, that's action. So we wanna be actionable. We also heard that we wanna be people-centric. Um, be what we produce or what we bring to the table is understandable. And what is understandable, people feel more included. So we, we talk about um, being inclusive. Uh, we heard a lot about trying to incorporate multi-stakeholder. But what, what does that mean to the, the common man? I like a lot of times when we speak, we said, you know, when a, a stakeholder speaks, they say, my community. So let's think community. Let's think about who we represent and bring them forth to the table when we when we think about these um, themes. We also got introduced to the concept of sustainable dig digital development goals. So I want everybody to sleep on that. So over the next couple of days, we can, can um, think about what we want as our digital um, goals, sustainable goals. Uh, the last objective was to foster cooperations and partnerships. Um, I think what we what we got out of listening to to all our partners is that we are aligned by topics, uh, by issues, but what we're not seeing is the coordination, a closer coordination and collaboration. So we we need to find ways in which we can collaborate uh, more closely, more effectively. And I'm going to go right back to the word I just um, used. We we have a share. We have shared communities, so we don't want to try to grab one community into our own silo. We want to get rid of the silos, and so therefore, when the community moves from one group to the next group, there's a unified message that they're hearing, and then they get to understand, and then they could, once again, they can act. Um, Talent had said in the in the chat, he said, 40 years on, the internet is at its crossroads. 
what will make it or break it. Um, I think I was a bit more dramatic and with not really um, <laughs> in the meetings at the LP. So it, I think I was over dramatic, but I had said things like, what if there was no internet? What if the, what if the internet died? How the internet died? What is killing the internet? That's a bit dramatic, but <laughs> that's what, you know, we, we really need to sit and think. If you have children, grandchildren, godchildren, nieces, nephew, think about them. What are they going to be using in the future? <laughs> and that's another word that resonated from one of the, um, the topics that the host country, the future. What are we going to leave for the future? Thank you, and everybody have a, a good evening. I'm going to hand it over to the um, co-host for activities for this evening. Yeah. So, in fact, in, in, fa in fact, this evening we keep it as a free for you guys to enjoy the city and uh, plan whatever you want to do. Uh, uh, Tomorrow, uh, there is a gala dinner. Uh, I urge everybody who's not registered to register. Uh, it will be in Algeria, in Dreya, a very fantastic place. Uh, we will have a good evening tomorrow. So please uh, enjoy the city. Uh, there is a shopping mall nearby if, if you're interested, or you can go anywhere. Uh, the city is safe, and uh, yeah, and you can you can practice what can the city offer. Talk to the people. They will love to, to listen to you, please, and enjoy the experience in Riyadh uh, this evening and tomorrow. Thank you very much. And we meet here at 9 a.m. tomorrow, 9 a.m.